So, you know, it feels really, really rough. And it, it feels helpless and hopeless about, like, the fucking fact that I'm, I'm moving over to this place. I got the keys. I got the, 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 uh, the paperwork to do the, the, the address change to the new place for any mail. I could move in today or tomorrow or any, any day, really. They're trying to get, like, set up for helping me move. I don't have a new case manager, so the old case manager I had at the clinic happened to be, you know, there, and um, they, she's basically like, yeah, no, they don't really have internet, no one really has internet at the building, they can't really afford it, and then I started thinking about it, I mean, this is this is all, you know, before, this is while I was going to walk to the post office to get my package, I was going to the bank also walking to, uh, um, which is decent, it's a pretty decent walk, uh, but to close my bank account, because it has $2 in it, and they'll take $10 from it, and it was only there for Voc Rehab to be able to deposit checks on, you know, that's, that's, that's what that was, so I had to close that, apparently if they're like, if it's under $5, we don't give a shit, and I'm like, cool, I guess I'll keep this $2, might be enough for a pack of gum or something, you know, and that's what happened, it was like, oh, I'm going to start trying to call them on the way back home, you know, call them the DES office building, and then it's like, oh, yeah, no, your shit doesn't work, you know, the, your, your credentials, your birth date, your phone number, your, at, your uh, zip code, you know, it's like, oh, no, well, what do you know, but the case number, immediately, we know what your case number is, it's fine. <laughs> I go through it every fucking time. You know, I have to fucking do that. I'm on the phone for about an hour, then it cuts off on hold. After I go through the options and select the one where I need to renew. And then I have to do it again. And then I have to wait two hours this time. On hold after I get through everything. Just to be able... To have someone go, oh, uh, that's not the right number for the interview. Oh, wait, are you renewing? Yeah, I'm renewing, but oh, she wasn't really that nice. I'm paraphrasing how how, how nice that ended up going. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then um, then it's like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. I got, uh, I got that renewed. No, we need a, everything's done, really. Just need a voice signature. I can't do that, apparently, so I'm going to transfer you to someone else. I proceed to wait another hour, hour and a half. It cuts off at around 3 p.m. The, 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 the uh, hold, they just ended my call for some reason. There wasn't any scratchiness, any anything. It just, it's gone, you know. I proceed to call them back, and I'm like, it's 3 p.m. That's usually when they don't ever freaking answer calls. I proceed to wait for another two hours till 5 p.m. when they close. No fucking person answered the call. Anyways, I'm just kind of fucking intense right now. Because it's like, oh, that was very frustrating. And, you know, I had to go on my phone and just fuck around on my phone, which meant watching, a, watching, just scrolling, doom scrolling through, through Reddit, you know, doom scrolling through Reddit, going through a bunch of bullshit social media, but my god, if that's your entire day, holy shit, seems like it's nothing, wow, it is really fucking boring, you know, it's actually really stressful too, because I'm getting fucking triggered while I'm doing the whole, because I have to stay, I have to stay fucking focused, I have to stay focused on the damn fucking hold for, for that long, I'm ADHD as fuck. You know, while I'm scrolling through, you know, fucking goddamn social media getting triggered by random other shit every so often, and my mind's going places and crazy, crazy places, you know what I mean, and feeling like fucking, I, I'll never get these things, or these people have all these, you know, stuff that I don't have, or I probably won't get to the chance to, and they all have had, like, at least semi-decently normal lives, and they didn't get ravaged by their trauma, 
and other issues. You have their mental disorders and their family and their fucking life situation, how it all culminated. And then I still have to deal with the fact that it's like, you seem so smart. You shouldn't even be here. I'm like, that's not how this works. I still have mental disorders even if I'm, I'm, I'm smart. Fuck you. And I'm, you don't even know how much work and effort it is to just mask and maintain the mask that I'm functioning and functional. And I'm doing this shit. Sounds like I did so much, right? And I did. I did. I did. I did a lot. I did a fuck ton today. But at the same time, at the same fucking time, it's like, it doesn't feel like it'd be any different than a normal person. And for me, it was a stressful fucking day. It was an entirely stressful day. It was terrible. It was sucky as fuck. And you know what? Um, then it was like, okay, so it's, it's, it's like, oh, right, they're ho- it feels a little hopeless and helpless. Because it's like, oh, yeah, no, I don't don't really have a way to advocate for myself to the point where it's like I get the things that I actually need from my clinic. I've already been doing that. You can't call that many... You, you're harassing the clinic at that point. You cannot do that. Don't do that. And I don't. That's a word to anyone out there that happened to listen to this. Don't fucking harass your mental health care clinic. Don't do that. You make everybody angry. That being said, I apparently miffed a few people already. The, the old case manager I have is it's pretty much just like barely cares and then she's just kind of like angry at me now granted I have rejection sensitivity dysphoria bullshit which it sounds like what is that it's an ADHD syndrome apparently I feel rejection a lot harder and so any little tiny amount could be massively overblown and they could just be annoyed for any reason but then you add on top the trauma and then the fucking like very real needing to be scared for my life while I was homeless, and then, like, all the other shit that's gone on in my life. You know, I'm like, it's, it's, you know, she doesn't think anything of it. But I'm, like, constantly thinking about the internet, because it's like, the fucking internet? There's no, nobody has internet in this place. She doesn't know if there's internet that, that even goes to the place. Frontier isn't accepting anyone new in the area, because they went bankrupt. They went bankrupt. Yeah, that's right. They went fucking bankrupt. So no one new can get there. But the old ones, she didn't say. She just said, like, yeah, they're not accepting anyone new. And she's like, was there a town council meeting? Yeah, I just didn't go. It didn't pertain to me. Cool. Didn't pertain to any of your clients? Not a single one would have maybe gotten a job, maybe figured out trying to get the internet. Maybe that would have been useful for them. Sure, fuck you. You know... And then, like, on top of that, she didn't really care that much about the shit that was going on. Like, she pretty much abandoned me when it was my voc rehab, you know, like, if I didn't have my neighbor, I would never have been able to get to this SMI, I mean, not SMI, SSI, Social Security Income Appointment, a physical evaluation. I, I contacted voc rehab, they were like, oh yeah, no, we'll send you a check. It arrives like a week and a half after that appointment. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this? Seriously? Fuck you. Seriously? I try I try and email her and she's like, ah, well, you know, sorry. You know, <laughs> what's she gonna do? You know? <laughs> That's not even getting into the fact that it's like for my, my glasses that I need. It took like three weeks to a month to get the check to be able to go get new glasses. So that way one side isn't so scratched up I don't even see out of it for anything except close viewing angles. And the left side's off so that way I get a fucking headache all the time. Oh, by the way, it's been like since March or April. Still no word on hearing aids. Still no word. No words going on on, on the hearing aid front. 
that's when I when I I, I got I applied, got into voc or I was already in voc rehab. They eventually they brought an audiologist over here, and they drove the audiologist drove to this house, gave me the test. Back in March or April. It is now October eleventh, twenty twenty two. It has gone nowhere. They are under contract, and I'm not the only one that's having the issue. And by that I mean, there is no contract. They're trying to renew a contract. I don't know what the hell's going to happen with that. Truthfully, it would have meant that I probably would have tried too quickly to go into a job. Because I had a rough, and I mean rough, fucking holy shit rough year. I had a rough year being here from December all the way to this October being in this in this place, trying to get all this other shit done with my clinic, with my medication, with fucking voc rehab, with SSI, and then on top of that, they they don't really understand. It. It's like it's a huge actual fucking job to even do that stuff. It's a damn fucking job. Oh, by the way, I have to suddenly normalize from being homeless for a good damn long while. You know. Cook things, clean things, take care of myself, you know, try and get my shit together mentally wise. One therapist barely fucking talks back at all and just kind of like blase. The second therapist kicks me out because she doesn't want to do a, an email to my case manager. When we're in the same fucking, the same fucking place, it's just like, oh, I need you to step up and call. I'm like... I've been calling everyone, you, you know, that very day I had to call you like four times to even get a ride to the fucking place. Oh, nope, I can't. So what, what is, what does that end up meaning? My mother has to take me there. She freaks out that I'm not taking enough medication, fucking almost threatens to kick me out. And it's like, oh yeah, no, that's not that big of a deal. You know, these are some housing solutions and you know, whatever. Kick you out because like, oh, I need you to step up. And call the, the front office to schedule a meeting with your case manager. What the fuck? Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah, no, but she's still there. She's still a therapist. I, I switched to a, a phone, new phone therapist. She's not very good. She's not great. She's not terrible. She's not really the right therapist for me. I need a trauma therapist. I can't get a trauma therapist. You know what I mean, and she and the therapy that she does is is it's not exactly like I do this processing. I went through therapy for so long. I got pretty good at processing my emotions and you know doing things. And people do help me on that. And by people, I mean like myself and you know my therapist and all that stuff. And, you know, remind me to hey ask myself questions. How did you feel about today? What happened today? You know what's going on. This is what I'm doing. I'm trying to go through my just today. This is just today. You know, it started yesterday. Yesterday, it's like we're getting a meeting. You're signing the documents. You you know, tomorrow you can have the keys and you can go and and live there. And I'm like, oh my god, this was suddenly very sudden. You know what I mean? It was like, oh hey, so I called you on Friday. You said something about paperwork. You can move in tomorrow. What the fuck? <laughs> Whoa, hey, wasn't planning on that, didn't have my hopes up on that shit, you know? But anyways, 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 I'm going to calm down, I'm going to bring it back to the fact that, like, okay, so these people that are there might have SSI, and by might, I mean it's very likely they have SSI. If they're not in SSI, then they have most likely a part-time job with probably SSI, something like this. If they're... And they also have cars. Cars that take insurance, maintenance, gas. Then they take a third of your money, which you don't really get a lot of if you have SSI. And then you don't actually get snaps or food stamps. You do. You get like $15, you know, like 12 to like $20, something like there, something around there, you know, and for, for your, if you could apply for food stamps and you're on SSI. And you get the full amount. If you got the full amount of SSI, you know, you only get that amount. But if you get half of it, because you didn't pay in for the four years, then you get the full amount of food stamps, supposedly, is what I've been told. But then I don't know. You know what I mean? And I'm like, if you don't know what that is, that's like $650. If you include the food stamps. 
it's really like 450 maybe 425 dollars you know which is around 200 to 225 dollars for food stamps if you get the full amount of food stamps they take a third of your money from that half ssi yeah no i asked still taking the third i'm like i'm not even making enough for anything and by making enough, I'm already fucking, like, super poor wages, impoverished as fuck wages, which isn't wages, it's SSI, in which it's like, they'll think of it like a handout, the assholes of the world. I'm like, I can't fucking work, that's not a handout. You know what I mean? A handout is someone that can work, and then decides to do that instead. That's a handout. Anyways, I'm, I'm tired of that one. Because it's like, you can work. You said you can work. I'm like, I can barely function on a day-to-day -day basis. I could maybe work a part-time job, 10 to maybe 12, 20 hours, perhaps. It's minimum wage. I'm disabled if I'm on SSI. If I'm SMI, which I am. I'm labeled SMI. I got diagnosed. I am SMI, severely mentally ill. It's very likely they might try and pay me under the minimum wage because they can maybe get away with saying that's a disability. Because, you know, I'm also, I'm also hard of hearing. That's just mental. You know what I mean? But they don't, in Arizona, classify SMI as a disability, even though in other states they do classify that as a disability if you get diagnosed. And it's a criteria for getting on SSI or SSDI in other states. So it's like, the moment I hear that, I'm like, that's bullshit if you think that's not a disability. That was just a way for fucking Arizona to say, I don't have to pay you. <sighs> Which is like, I don't have to give you SSI. I don't have to do anything. I'm like, fucking, okay, so starve, die, you're totally worthless, just fuck off. That's the kind of mentality that my fucking family used to have. They're garbage shit. Mentality like that is just shit. They're garbage people. People that think like that, they're not thinking the fact that anything can contribute to the whole. Every work is valid. All work is valid. Only certain types of work are valid. Only certain types of fucking things are the whole. You know what I mean? They're fucking pe they're pieces of shit, really. Anyways, but it's like, okay, so they don't have enough money to even have internet, which is like $120 for like, if you're lucky, 100 probably more like 50 to 75 gigabytes a month. And you might get like 25 MBS down mbps megabits per second down and one to maybe two megabits per second up to put that in perspective you might have like to pay 112 for 100 gigabytes but you get like cell phone data which is not internet i have definitely figured that out especially after using that for months before we got starlink it is not internet at all it is so slow, it is not anything that you think you can actually use for any kind of remote work or anything. At all. I don't care what someone might think out there. They're shit, garbage, shit wads that don't know nothing. I like antagonizing them because it's like they wouldn't care anyways. They'd keep fucking shouting and screaming about they're right and I'm wrong. That's kind of the problem I'm having. I've got the smallest fucking goddamn refrigerator. I'm talking small. I'm, it's a mini fridge, which it's like mini fridge is is bigger. I, we used to have a mini fridge. We used to have a mini fridge, and that mini fridge was bigger than this fridge. And I'm like, oh, cool, 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 cool. Nice. We only get a heater, no AC, which it actually does get hot here. Lived through that summer. It's very small. I don't mind the small, but then the small is actually smaller than like a studio apartment. 
by a decent amount. But it's not so, so small, you can't, like, live in it, you know what I mean? But then again, people used to live in, like, a tent, me included. So it's like, you know, you kind of figure shit out. Yeah, my younger sister wouldn't know anything about that. She's always been handed shit. She's always been the baby. She's like, I'm the black sheep. No one likes me. What are you kidding me? No one likes me, Andrea, you fucking attention whore. You don't know shit at all. You were the fucking family favorite as fuck. You just think mom was like that because it's like, oh, well, you know, she seemed to, she seemed to, and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the narcissist to try and train you into believing that she liked me so that way you separate, fucking fight, and all that other shit. Standard tactics. I don't know why it is that you don't see that. <laughs> then again, it's like, she wouldn't know. She's dumb, is what she calls herself. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're very good at manipulating people. You know damn well how to manipulate people. You pretend your ass off at manipulating people. You do that. You do that very well. You learned how to do it uh, when we were children, and you would fucking say I did something and I didn't, and mom would punish me. You knew that you could just go, 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 on that boot of the parents, which is a, it's a terminology for, uh, no, 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 yes, right there, and cap, right there. I knew you'd eventually get to it. You see, I'm, I'm one of those guys, I'm an anarchist. Um, that's what I am. Which, you know, if you if you do that, you suck the boot of the, of the fucking parents' goddamn authority. Of course they're going to fucking like you a little more. You always agree with them. You always chime in at the end. It seems like you're agreeing with them, and you are. And then it's like, oh, right, and then it seems like, ah, uh, I said something that wasn't true. Or sometimes I did. Sometimes I honestly did. I'm not even going to lie about that. Like, sometimes I was genuinely trying to leave out like everyone else, is one of the negatives of a particular argument I had. You know, but, you know, truthfully, I got better at being able to come up with solutions for things later on, you know, and that's kind of the problem I ended up having with you. Because it's like, you, you it's, it's like I come over to you telling, telling you how mom is fucking acting erratically, she's treating me terribly, and dad doesn't like her, and it's like, don't come over here, you're always complaining about mom, it's back when you're a tukey or some shit like that, I don't remember, it was like some fucking, you were living by yourself, you were a masseuse and like some other shit, you know, at the time, still with Alex, Alex, the guy that didn't even really like you by that point, if we're being honest, but still was continuing to try, and if anything, he seemed to like me sometimes, which I, maybe I just got a wrong impression, but then it's like, oh, you know, he's going to carry on while you're going through all this shit, I can't, I can't, I can't break up with her, she's just lost her job, she has all these things, oh yeah, no, and then like all these other, you know, fucking bullshitty things that seem to be going on, and he's like, oh, I, I you know, I, apparently he cheated on you, and I'm like, yeah, because like, he tried to, he was flirting with guys online. He didn't really like you. Like, the dude was poly at best. You know, at worst, he was like, I need to, you know, look more or less bi, more, more bi, less, less gay. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, no, sometimes you like me, but, you know, see, this is a problem I had with my younger sister. That was a constant with her. Her friends would end up liking me. People that she talked to with her friends would end up liking me. I wouldn't like anyone. I was never around. I had all these other issues. I was dealing with my parents. I was dealing with my own ADHD, my own trauma, my own fucking bullshit constantly going on. Nobody gave a shit. You know what I mean? I just put on a mask. It's like, oh, yeah, I know. I'm just smart. I'll just fucking crank out the test. You know, I could do the homework if I wanted to. I can't even fucking focus. The moment I get home, I'm like so fucking on edge, stressed, everything from fucking childhood and, you know, fucking early teenage. I'm like, ah, I can't do any of this. I can't do any of this. I'm going to pretend to be on the computer and just masturbate a lot. I'm just, I'm just going to, you know, from time to time, I'm going to masturbate. I'm going to play video games. I'm just going to pretend that I'm fucking like, you know, normal. It's like, nah, I'm not. I'm not. I couldn't do shit. I could not get myself to study. I could not get myself to do anything. There's so much pain and trauma there. 
They never fucking owned up to it. Of course, I apologize, but then they never really give a shit. And it's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm afraid mom's going to kill herself. Don't ever come back or talk to me. That's what my younger sister says. I go to my older sister. Hey, you know, I, I, I just kind of want to fucking, like, have a, a week where I'm not just getting shit on by everyone. Hey, what, what what happens? Oh, I have a wonderful week. I seem like a new person. My, you know, my fucking older sister seems, uh, you know, not terrible. I'm not terrible. I, I make some stupid, awkward comments with Maserati. I still feel like crap because of that. She's like, oh, yeah, the guys are right. You would have thought he would have had something more expensive. I thought they were very expensive. She goes, they're like 300000 I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't know that one was. <laughs> I know, like, some of them were like 50 k and usually most people tend to go with that. She lives in some upper class, like, super well-to-do, you know, apartment, you know, like in the middle of L.A. with her lawyer boyfriend. While she's getting a new fashion designer job. And I'm like, neat. Nice. Okay, that's great. So I'm going to tell her about, like, my mom drinking excessively, gambling most of my dad and hers money away, you know, and her treating both of us like shit. Oh, you know, it's her own money. She's doing it in capacity. She don't know what she's going through, all this. Other. I'm like, I'm the one that's the most often talking to her. I have to talk to her every fucking day, all throughout the day, and then most throughout the night, because my dad is pretty much gone throughout most of the day, and, oh, by the way, doesn't want to talk to her after she's done, done gambling everything. I'm the one raising the fucking bitch. And by raising her, I mean, like, I'm the one taking the brute fucking everything. You have no idea what she was really like. The moment she knew she could get away with shit. The moment she knew, no one was going to believe her. And by her, I mean me. Him, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just believe her because I was stuck on mom. Anyways, <laughs> you know what I mean? But like nobody, nobody was gonna believe, you know me. And it's like, oh, she's doing it in compassion. Like you don't even know mom. You don't even, you don't even know how she acts anymore. You don't. You know what I mean? And then it's like, oh yeah, no, what, what do you know? She tries to kill herself twice. I go to both of them, you know, fucking asking for help, dealing with this person. I, I can't ask dad because he's at work and then he doesn't want to deal with shit at all. By the way, it's like, oh yeah, no, I'm going to take medicine I know and I'm going to tell you later. And oh, by the way, dad knew because she told him too. That's not going to kill you. Even if you take like fucking 20 pills, bottles of full fucking, it, it, that's, that's ridiculous. We do know that. That's the problem. We actually do. You can look it up. It's very hard to OD on the shit that she was trying to OD on. It was a cry for attention. My ass. That's the problem. It was a cry for manipulation. I was losing weight. Seems like everybody seemed was more or less on my side at the time. I was doing a little better with therapy and everything else. I was getting my life in order. What do you know? Nobody's really liking mom or putting up with their shit right now. All this time cultivating me to be a scapegoat. You know, screaming, yelling, all this shit, all the time. But it's like nobody ever understands that they definitely were the ones to start. Do they even remember when, like, I held a fucking kitchen knife up to my chest when I was in first grade? In the hallway? Do you remember that? I remember that. Trying to fucking kill myself. No, no, come back. You're not going to do it. Didn't even, they didn't even get up. Fucking both sisters. Nope. They don't give a shit. You don't even want to know about the fucking shit, but then again, I've talked about it. It's like, hey, you know what? You don't deserve love. I'd be afraid if you had a girlfriend. I'm afraid to love you. Everything is always, why are you always doing this to me? Why are you always doing this to us? Don't you care about how I feel? I'm like, what about my feelings? What, what about the fucking shit that you're saying to me? What about how it is you acted to me? How about the fact that you never taught me how to fucking do any of this shit well? You were always screaming at me the moment we fucking did anything. It's no wonder we're not well adjusted. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I did work on myself. I'm adjusted now. But they don't know that. I've been adjusted for a long ass time. Really long ass time. Turned out, I finally figured out there's an abusive pattern. There's an abusive narcissistic person here. And then other fucking family members are acting similarly. I can't even go to them. 
They, it's like right there. Not even, I'm not acting similarly. I'm like, you've been acting manipulative and terrible for a very long time. For a very long time. My fucking two sisters and my dad. My dad's like, I'm negligent. I'm not going to really get involved in your life. You know what I mean? Or anyone's. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to fucking overwork. I'm going to eat a bunch of candy to try and deal with everything. You know what I mean? Oh, but by the way, I'm going to side with your mom. You're the one that's bad. I'm not. I'm going to tell you you're not going to do it. You know what I mean? That's just one incident. But it's like, oh, it's just one incident when he was a kid? One? Any incident is a ridiculous amount of incidents. But by the way, that's not one. I have several attempted suicides you didn't even know about. I never told anyone. I never did. I didn't, you know what? It's all, you know, I'm going to take a handful of fucking ibuprofen and a handful of my ass, you know, and fucking NyQuil and hope I don't wake up. Wake up. Fucking slow as shit to get to fucking goddamn school. This is like fucking middle school or some shit. I do it again, like about a month later. Take even more this time. Wake up still. You know what I did? I ended up walking after that. It took later. I got all the way to football. You know the only reason why I play football? So dad would fucking take an interest in me. I even told that to him. I told that to everyone in my family. <laughs> I did. Back then, they didn't give a shit. But, hey, wait a second. Football ends. You seem to be doing so well. Your, your grades are up. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing so well. I'm really masking very well. I am so doing well. I'm going to walk all the way over to Fiesta Mall. And try and jump off the fucking parking lot structure. Oh, why were you, you know, awake walking around at fucking 3 a.m., 2 a.m., some shit like that? <sighs> Gee, I don't know. Tell my mom about it. You know, I walked over to Fiesta Mall one day. She didn't fucking think anything of it. Oh, don't do that. There's a curfew. Oh, there's a curfew? I didn't even get stopped. There's several police that fucking walk, you know... Drove car, drove cars right next to me. Never even pulled me over. I was like six foot two though in like ninth grade, so <laughs> that does help. <laughs> you know, wearing my regular clothes, but it's like not too, too like, you know, middle schooler. You know, it's kind of something that helps you. Met a person is bu trying to bum smokes off with his girlfriend of me. I was freaking out because I'm like, this close, I'm this close. I just passed a little turn over to T.C. Higginton's. <coughs> a little turn over to T.C. Higginton's. Take a right on there. He asked me, I'm fucking freaking. I, I for, for whatever reason, took my, I don't think I took my hearing aids. No, no, I didn't take my hearing aids. So I lean in, I cut my ear. You know, my ears are ringing. I fucking, I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to do this. I'm about to fucking do this. Fucking wakes me up out of my fucking, like, massive depression and, and hyper fixation on everything as I'm just walking. And then it's like, oh, I, I, no, no, sorry, I don't have smokes. Yeah, sorry. I proceed to go all the way to the parking structure. I go up the stairs. Cops, right there. <laughs> just sitting on the fucking, the second story. And I'm like, it probably wouldn't have been able to kill me, but it's like, you know what? You know, truthfully, I was like trying to try and aim down, try and hit my head and my crack my neck or some shit. I don't know. I was, I was genuinely going to do it. I saw them over there. I went, fucking shit, massive adrenaline spike. Alright, I'm going to play this cool. I'm going to go walk over down to the fucking, like, other stairs that are literally right across. Oh, I'm so glad. Would it look weird if I tried to go backwards? Oh, I still hesitated after I saw them and started walking. I fucking lay there on the sidewalk. Going, I would have fucking killed myself. I would have tried to fucking do that. I would have fucking, if it wasn't for those motherfuckers, I would have tried to do that. I would have tried to do that. I really would have tried to do that. <laughs> I'm sad I didn't do it. I'm sad they're there. I'm angry that they're there. I am fucking angry they are there. Oh, well, you know, football, you seem to have been able to, like, get involved with any of it. No, 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 no. 
I wasn't some. I'm, no, 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 no. It beat me down. I wasn't in any way. I was just masking. I was masking my ass off, pushing, pushing, pretending that I'm okay. I'm doing good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No one knows. Even though I had like massive problems, and I don't want to be here, and this is terrifying me, and everything about this is bad. And I'm just pretending because it's like I don't. I'm afraid of doing physical, more physical work and exercise because I need to do like my homework. The homework I I just just whatevered through it. I'm so depressed. I'm so unable to like even talk to someone. Everybody's like, "Oh, you're so cool. You seem aloof. Whatever. I don't give a shit. I don't care what the hell they fucking think of me. I was so fucking damaged by that point. I had I already gone through." All the teasing and bullying of, like, shitting myself all throughout elementary school. And then having, like, an enema, a forced enema that felt like rape when my parents held me down and did that. Left the door fucking, you know, unlocked. My sister, my younger sister and a friend comes over and opens it and sees me there as I'm crying. You know, that's a thing. They did. They did do that. Older sister doesn't know shit about it. I don't know if my, my younger sister ever told her. Manipulation tactic right there. You know, why have him fucking feel like he should have empathy or sympathy for? You know, his it's his shit. You know, if you go through abuse as a child, you're very likely to have fecal matter issues, as in, like, shit yourself, play around with it, you know, stuff like that. That's actually a common trope for abused, you know, victims and families. Yeah, I had to look that one up because it was like, oh, I learned someone said that. And I'm like, that's not true. Turns out it was true. <laughs> Saw it like three, four, five times in a row, and I was like, what the fuck is this? I looked it up and I'm like, oh my god, that's an actual thing. That's an actual thing. It's an actual thing. So it's like, oh yeah, no, but that's not even getting into apparently my molestation I had. And then it later came out as I was meditating going through therapy I had cannabis with me too to help calm me down and help me focus and meditate I looked into you know these bad negative emotion memories that were like super I'm not going to think about that not going to think about that not going to think about that no 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 what ends up happening oh what do you know I remember a time when we were in Oregon I got fucking made to perform fellatio on an adult man's dick and his fucking kid while I got fucking rammed in the ass and more from there too there's there's when I was in the the Chandler house there was a guy that stuck his hands man hands down my pants while I was trying to pretend to sleep and I was terrified I'm not gonna open up my eyes I'm not gonna scream they might cause problems I don't know I don't know I don't know there's apparently some other version where it's like some someone that looks quite sin- significantly similar to my mother. But it could have been like at that point, not a delusion, no. A this will make me feel better if it was my mother instead of whoever it was kind of thing cuz like that's a thing your mind does. But then it's like raping me, just on top of me raping me. Real memories, though. Not some fanciful, too dreamlike to have occurred. I would have totally ignored. There's just like, they're just enough that's like, this is kind of something that happened to you. For sure. No matter what. Like, the, the hand one, oh, is way up there. That one's like, super too real. The fucking, like, you know, the, the apparently organ babysitter one. You know, where my mom goes, it's like, yeah, you got touched, we apparently called the cops, and then, like, you know, said that, because you were saying stuff would hurt, and then, like, you said nothing, and you, like, blanked out, her, apparently, and then I later asked her about it again, and she's like, yeah, no, that did occur, and then I later asked her about it this year, and it was like, no, that never happened. I remember talking about it. And by talking about it, I mean writing about it on MySpace. It was on my MySpace. Yeah, I wrote it on my MySpace page. 
because I was like, I, this is freaked out. Like, what the fuck? I didn't even remember any of this. I was just like, yeah, for some reason, I, I like just woke up in the Serene house at some point that we had. You know, when we came back from Oregon, totally unaware who I was, totally unaware where I was, totally unaware when it was. I didn't know shit at all. And I don't remember, and then it slowly kind of came back to me, and I was like, what the fuck happened here? What the fuck was this? What happened? I guess I'm now this, yeah, no, that's, that's my, that's, that's where, and then, what the, f where does, where, what was I doing? And I didn't tell anyone, because I was like, yeah, my memories are back. I guess, I don't know, <laughs> self-protection method right there is what apparently that was called by my therapist later. <laughs> And it's like, alright, yeah, no, and then all the fucking never-ending, at the top of our lungs, screaming at each other problems. From the moment we get to this Chandler house. And it's not like we were that much better over at the fucking apartment. It just built and built and built and built. Like, just, and then it's like, what do you know? Way worse. What do you know? That's unrecognized trauma, undealt with trauma. For a long time. Oh, by the way, you have a narcissist mother is already when we were in the cul-de-sac house and the apartments and everything else telling you that it's all your fault. You 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 have your two sisters and your father saying that you're always wrong. It's, something's wrong with you. Everything is you're doing this to us on purpose. All this shit. And I'm like, not a single one of you seem to address. Of course, you couldn't. You were kids. If you were my sisters. Any damn way at all, how to address, like, and communicate, and, like, deal with your feelings, and, and, and work through shit, not a single one of you, what do you end up later having issues with, those very same issues, you know, same with me, you know, who really got, seemed, seemed to got the brunt of it, though, the middle child, John Tyler Lemke, me, yeah, yeah, you are a fashion designer who lives in the middle of LA, you are someone that happened to have a manager job, and then now has got the ability to work at fucking the government and it had a shit ton of savings. Neither of you really understand the level of shit. It's like you're valid, your shit is valid, but you're nowhere near where I'm at. You've never even been homeless. At all. You've been starting around with other people's apartments. You know, maybe you had sex to stay there for a little bit, Amber. Andrea is like, I've got a fucking massive stash of cash. I'm going to be good. <sighs> For a little while. I'm going to be good, you know, honestly. Not to mention I got friends, both of you. I was able to do my homework, both of you. Able to fucking, like, get shit done, both of you. <sighs> yeah, but I was, like, the favorite. Bullshit. I was the favorite. You never knew anything about my life, about how they acted towards me, and how you perceived, you know, yourselves to be while I was just acting, you know, as if I was okay. Like, the jealousies are fucking phenomenal. That seem to temper and harden your fucking grudge and your narcissistic insecurity personality problems. Anyways, but they're helpless, the people over at the SMI housing place, because it's like, you can't ask for more money, you can't get more money, there's no more money, really, no there is, but like, apparently Brett Favre is going to use it to build a gym and defraud a bunch of people, remember that, you remember that fucking story, you remember that, right? And they don't really get that. And you have a person that has a problem, like my younger sister, that has no empathy and sympathy for people. Working for Wicker. People that have real desperate need for this shit. In the government. You know what I mean? The Wicker is a government program to provide food for, for, for children and, and families, basically. And I'm like, whoa, that's a 
terrible position for fucking needing to always have power and have control over someone because they always felt like they were insecure and bad and, and you know, not as, as good as this other person that seemed to be, you know, the, the special favorite in their life. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's really a great position. But it's not. It's not. It's not at all. That's me being sarcastic if you don't realize that. <laughs> Then, oh, wait, wait, wait. Further, my older sister, she has one bad experience with an, with an addict. Everybody rushes to her. Every, she, she also has her entire student loans forgiven by my mom getting an SSDI, of which that shit cost me all of my progress. I went and spiraled down because I thought my mother was that bad. I didn't think about it. I didn't realize I was being gaslit into believing that this shit's worse for me. Not for them. They were fine. This was to manipulate them and to fucking give them this whole, like, well, I guess I have to pretend to care now. Well, I guess now I have to, to you know, put forth effort and call mom or something. I guess I'll, I'll have to come home from work from time to time. You know, which he does, but it's like actually spend, you know, maybe put a little more effort and put up with her bullshit. You know, and it's, all my hard work, all my, and then like my older sister, I'm sorry, my younger sister is getting fat, much fatter. So is my mom, because they're both on medications that are making them fatter. They're eating a lot. I'm losing weight. I'm working out, losing weight. People seem to like me when I talk to them. Everything seems to be good. But it's like, oh, I've got, I'm putting up boundaries. I'm in the boundary stage of my fucking therapy. I'm not going to take no shit. I'm going to fucking ignore you. I'm not even going to be around you. Something I'm supposed to do to fucking care for myself. What do they interpret as? You're fucking so mean to us. Why did it? You know what really comes out, though? With my fucking mother in the car berating, screaming, why aren't you fucking saying anything, why aren't you, you know what I mean, and it's like, you're gonna fucking go have to walk home for five miles, and I'm gonna drop you off here in the highway, because I'm like, I'm not fucking doing this, you were trying to start a fight, I am not, oh my god, that's not even going into like, oh, you know, there's no one else in the house, there's no one, and then she sets off. <laughs> and then I realize it's like my 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 family doesn't care about me. They never gave a shit about me. Not a single one of them. And they stuck around with the narcissist fucking retard. You know what I mean? And I say retard because it's like she's hindered in her narcissism. She's held back. She's not a kind, caring person. She just knows she can manipulate. She's got great crocodile tears. Holy shit, does she ever learn that one. The hard way. Having to be the one that actually deals with her. While I'm also going through the most tremendous amount of pain and anxiety and suffering. And all this depression. Because my mother just tried to kill herself. And I actually care and have empathy and sympathy. And everyone else pretty much just doesn't. In my whole life. That's one more. One moment. One moment. He's like, oh, you, you still gotta go back through college. I'm like, no, I don't, man. And she's fucking going after me. I'm like, I can barely fucking survive waking up sometimes. I'm gonna go to college, mask, apparently tutor someone that wanted to have the fucking, you know, all this other shit. I do well. She gets better grades. I pretty much pass my math, pass my math class. Pretend that I'm, I'm in my, my coding class. I'm actually gonna code. I never code, because it's like, yeah, I can't fucking do this. I need to fucking completely shut down something that's too stressful. I can't do that. I can't do the work at home. I can't. I can't do any of that. I could barely do the fucking math work. I'm doing like eighty percent of the work, and they say fuck off. Whatever. That's all I'm doing. I could barely do it. I could barely do it every fucking day. It took me like three, four hours sometimes to get that shit done. They wouldn't understand that. They were off living it up large. 
I finally found roller derby because, like, I needed a hobby. And I was doing all this shit in my life, and I was, I was really having a hard time. And then I got my lawyer boyfriend, and then like I, I then like got to live in a really nice place, got my really nice job, that I didn't even go to college for, but like I spent over like a hundred thousand dollars in student loans and immediately dropped that. But then I'm gonna tell my my older, I'm sorry, my younger brother, he should go to college. And, like, just eat the cost and pay it. And I'm like, wow, that's hypocritical and a double standard as fuck. Not to mention, women tend to have a harder time becoming fully homeless. Learn that in homeless shelters. Being homeless, living out of a tent, and other homeless shelters. You know what I mean? They all combined. Oh, you know what? And even, like... Living out of my car. But not my car. It's not my car. I'm the one that does the maintenance, the gas, the tires. All, everything but, but title. Should have fucking just bought the damn title. You know, you weren't paying insurance. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Insurance? I could have paid it for that. You know what? It was already through for the entire year. Who would have known? Oh, my mother and my father and my sister are being jerks because I'm like, oh, you know what? I've already pretty much more than halfway gotten to my job. To their house. Just, it takes me an hour, maybe a little little more plus, just to get to my job from the place that literally hates me staying there because, oh, by the way, you're too independent. You, you seem like you're too good right now. You seem to be flourishing without your fucking terrible family members that are destroying you mentally. What do you know? That's classic narcissism. Abuse person, you know, like, that's that's a behavior trait that we see, oh, they got out, and then they seem to, you know, oh, 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 really nice, we'll give you this gift of this car, we'll give you this gift of these pots and pans, we'll give you these things, and it'll seem like it's good for everyone else, and everybody will know how good they are, even though they kicked you out, because evidently, he was talking to himself out loud, in the house, you were screaming! No one else was there. No one else heard screaming. But sure, they all believed her. I mean, sure, sometimes I screamed about dumb shit, sure. But like, you know what I mean? She just kicks me out. She calls my fucking clinic and they're not supposed to talk to her. She's not involved in any way. For three hours, finally gets a hold of my clinic case manager. He fucking takes me away. You're not allowed to come back. Four months. Yeah, three, four months, something like that. I'm in the fucking, like, uh, you know, it was four months, four and a half months, roughly, in a mental health hospital. Four. I had to get switched to another new one that's even further away. Oh, by the way, you're going to a temporary living place, a TLP. And that's after we searched for, like, a month and a half. Because there's no shelters, there's no anything that we can put you into. There's a temporary living place. Alright? You got a temporary living place. Oh, you know, all of a sudden, you're looking for jobs. I'm like, yeah, because I'm about to be homeless, motherfucker. I'm, I'm literally about, that's homelessness. They call that homelessness. It's a temporary living place. It's a homeless place. You are homeless. In the eyes of the government, it is homeless. I'm trying to get into a step-down facility. A place where there are people that will give you meds or be around if you want to talk. For like 16 hours out of the day or 8 hours out of this, whatever. You know what I mean? Depending on your level of care and need. But they, they don't call it housing. You are in a program for mental health care. You are not in housing. So in the eyes of the government... You're homeless. Yeah, that's what they call that. Yeah. Now, oh, by the way, my case manager up and leaves midway through the 30 days I have there. That's right. I get one month. Exactly. One month. You get no more. And then they kick you out. Have fun figuring out. They don't send you to a homeless shelter. They don't send you, they don't get you anything. There's nothing there. No, no, you're fucked. Many people came and went while I was in there for the only that 15 days. Okay, wait, wait, we're not done yet. 
oh, you know, it's because your case manager apparently, like, you know, left. We'll give you an extension of 15 days. 15. 15 more days. I was like, fuck it, hallelujah. 15 more days. 15 fucking more days. I'm getting 15 more days. Oh, by the way, your case manager and I and the entire case team, you know, the, the you know, handling your shit, uh, falsely reported that you were still living with your mother. And to get into the step-down facility, uh, they had you on a very low priority list because uh, we thought you were still home. You, you still had a home. Been doing that for like 20 days, 25 days, something like that. Oh, so now now we got it right, though. Here's your new case manager. He's, he apparently hasn't done this work before. And he's, he's really kind of just annoyed, it seems like, with how little anyone's doing and how much he has to do for me and how much I'm already trying to do as much as I can by talking to my clinic and case managers. You know what I mean? And then, like, oh, by the way, I got a job. I got a, a job as a CBD sales salesman. Over at a kiosk, over in this fucking mall. I did. I rode a bus for two hours that way. Two fucking hours. I took one for an hour one way, and then basically an hour another way. And I got there. Interviewed well, they gave me the job. Took about a week to find out. Around that time, oh, apparently... We got you mixed up. We thought you were actually had a home. <laughs> hey, you got a job now, so we're going to give you this this car that I don't even like or want. <laughs> and actually, I want to spend money that we don't have and, and get like a loan on the house to buy an RV and like a new truck. And take some of the money that our sister is paying them. Oh, wait, no, that she wasn't. We're in free. We're in free, everyone, at that point. But it's so you're so terrible, you cannot live with us. The entire time. You're so terrible. You get a job. You got all this stuff. You can't do it. You're paying for your own laundry. Oh, you know, but, 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 but by the way, hey, can I come over there? I mean, I have to go over to, you know, get my clinic fucking shit done and I, you know, like would like to do my laundry oh my god, I can't believe you let John Tyler come back and do his laundry, Andrea you know, you really seem to be doing, a, you know, you're using a lot of our, our, our laundry detergent and, and our water and shit mom You know, you don't seem to know what you're acting like or any of this stuff to us. I'm having boundaries and, like, I'm working a job. I'm, like, also about to move. Yeah, you know, like, oh, they found me a place. Woo! Oh, my God. I was totally surprised. Honestly, didn't think it was going to go through. They have, like, very few places ever open. Even if you're on a high priority list, it's like they almost have no one that's, that you can get into. I got into somewhere. It was over in fucking Mesa. And fucking ridiculously far deep Mesa. Where there's like a like a airport over there. In Mesa. It's like Universal and like some other bullshit. So far away. That my job is now. From literally almost as far as you can get it. Because it's like Gilbert would be. And I mean like you'd have to go a little. You'd only have to go about like. 15 miles down, or not 10, 15, about 10, maybe 5 to 10 miles down into Gilbert. And it would be a straight shot diagonal from one end of uh, the entire area of like the Chandler, Phoenix, all this other, because it's all the way, it's past Phoenix. We're at the at the end nearly of Phoenix. You know what I mean? We're, we're at this fucking mall that's just way the fuck out there. I'm talking Thunderbird isn't even close. Thunderbird and fucking... 35th Avenue isn't actually that close to where this job is. We're, we're like 15 minutes to 20 minutes still driving to get to the damn fucking mall. Unlike the, the fucking days that you have to get there. So I'm like, oh, great. I, you know, I've been there for a month now. Roughly, almost. 
I've been doing well. I even had one day where I was like the guy that had to open because the manager couldn't couldn't do it. I opened, fucking did wonderful. I did great. I did better than her in sales that day. She's a manager. She's been there for a long time. Did better than everyone in sales. Fucking phenomenal, right? You know? Fucking people clearly like me and clearly doing well. I have to quit. Because it's fucking like three hours. Two and a half to three hours. You know, depending on traffic. You know what I mean? Just to get there. I can't fucking afford the gas. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't want to deal with the fucking, like, the breakdown of the car. I couldn't do anything. I, you just can't do that. You just can't. Oh, by the way, my mom fucking decided to go over to Canada in our RV. New RV. Brand new RV. My dad, oh, I'm, I'm working during the day. I go over to check the fucking, like, you know, I'm, I'm, like, I have no internet, no cell. I get, like, two gigabytes a month on my phone for, for cell data. I'm like, I kind of I kind of want to do some laundry. They don't have laundry in the area. I want to check out the dogs. I don't really ever talk. Nobody's going to be there. You know what I mean? I'm going to fucking, like, download some fucking uh, Netflix because, like, you can apparently download Netflix by that point. That was the big thing. The Netflix suddenly had downloads on your mobile shit. That's, that's around this time. And I'm like, I'm downloading some shit. I'm going to fucking... Like, get some of my other, like, stuff that I need done for my snaps and my food stamp, or my, uh, my insurance and shit, because it was, I needed to renew it around that time. And, like, I had to go online to do that, you know what I mean? Because, like, this just easier. And it's, because it's like, oh, I have to go all the way over to the DS building, which is even further away from the fucking family house. Oh, there's shit. There's dog shit every fucking time. And puke sometimes that I have to clean up every fucking day from Skyla. Every time I go. Every time. Every time. Not a joke. My dad even knows. It's like, why is there a mop there? I had to clean up shit. My younger sister would be like, he's lying. None of that's a thing. It was not that hard. I'm like, I'm all the way... This is a solid 30 to 45 minutes of driving to get to and from their house and the apartment I was at. By the way, that apartment? Grody as fuck. My parents went there. Grody as fuck. It is. It was bad, yeah. It was bad. It was genuinely... Like, the floors were dirty as fuck. Had crusty shit in there. There was, like, one toilet you would never fucking use. Like, you... And you couldn't... No matter how much you clean it or how much you plunge it, it's like it's not going to go down. And then the, the, the AC just decided to not work. The other fucking... Like, the other bathroom, like, oh my god. Fucking terrible. My room, though, nice and clean. You see a trail that leads up to the roommate. He'd been there for a while. Remember, I just got there. I literally just got there. There's no way for me to have caused this. It was that way from the start. Okay, so. What am I doing? I'm caring for my parents' fucking shit. I am. I'm doing that. I'm house-sitting. I am caring for the dogs. You know what I mean? Oh, by the way, it takes me a lot to get back to and from. My younger sister is apparently now suddenly dealing with whatever the fuck she's dealing with. You know what I mean? With her, her boyfriend at the time, Alex. It's like, I'm trying to get into, to, uh, what is it, Costco, I think. And, and like she didn't get the position because like they didn't find her to be the, the type of fit they wanted. Which to me means anything or nothing. I don't know. Take your pick. It could mean something. It could mean nothing. And she might not have been... From from what my mother told me and everything else, she like angered the... the, the because she tried to be like a, a secretary or not a secretary, administrator, you know, and, and like the, the person online filling out the dates and times because she was working for this masseuse asshole apparently. But then like had to do that job. And then like apparently they angered her and then or them, or something, or the job wasn't good, and she just wanted to quit, I don't remember, she got fired or something, I don't remember, and then, like, she was, like, kind of on her own for a little bit, you know what I mean, and then she was just kind of like, oh, I'm gonna do my masseuse job, I'm gonna look for a job, I'm really stressed out, all this, and I'm like, okay, cool, cool, well, I'm kind of dealing with, like, basically homelessness, I can't talk to you, like, I'm trying to get out of a TLP, and all this other shit. 
trying to get into like, you know, a housing program that isn't a housing program. I might be homeless. Like, honestly, like out of the car levels. Of home. Oh, wait, I didn't have the car yet. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, but, you know, I got the, I, I, I applied, I got the, the intern, or whatever the fuck. I'm still dealing, I'm going to my thing. You know, oh, but, hey, you just, you just basically moved, like, three times. You know, you, 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 and by the way, once while you were in the mental health hospital. Because it's like, oh, you went there to the place that you initially were at. And then they moved you to a mental health hospital another time. And then they were like, oh, right, you've been here too long. We need the space. There's a place over here that we can move you to. They moved you to there. Three times there. Then the TLP. And then you got the step-down program. Oh, you had a job. You lost the job. And by lost the job, you had to quit the job because you couldn't do the job, even though you had a couple of friends at the job. And they seemed really nice. And and everybody was fucking chill. Everything was pretty good. And in fact, I was well-liked by the staff and... And, and all the fucking people that were there at the TLP. Yeah, I was I was genuinely a really nice dude. Everybody was like kind of sad to see me go. <laughs> oh, but hey, wait, wait, we're not done yet. The step down place, we're moving over to 35th Avenue and like fucking um, some other shit. I think it was like, I don't, Alatuki? No, 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 not Alatuki. Arrowhead? I don't remember. Point is, it's like, it was over at this borough. You know, like, seriously. Like, it's all Mexican, but it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, okay. I don't have any way to do this, but I just moved again. And I'm going to be needing to move here in, like, two months, basically. They got me two months. You know, in reality, it wasn't really two months. It just continued on until two months. Because they were like, we'll get you in, like, Two weeks to maybe three tops, which blo- blossomed into like the amount of time it did. You know what I mean? My my mom's apparently having this terrible time. Everybody knows how bad that her her friends that she tried to take and her aunt is. My my younger sister has like some issues going on. She's depressed or with Riley or or whatever. I don't know. I don't. You know I can barely even keep track on that one because her life was chaotic too. I'm sure. My dad's barely ever home. And when he is, you know, we're pretty much chill. We didn't really have, like, any fights or anything, but, you know, it wasn't, like, we really talked too much to each other. And it, he definitely didn't really give a shit about the fact that I'm, like, at a fucking housing place. You know what I mean? Like, what, what the fuck is this? And all this other shit that I have to deal. All of a sudden, I have to move, though, all right? You're right, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, you know, I was trying to find jobs, but it's like, we're moving in, like, such a short period of time. Should I really try and find a job? <laughs> I know, you know, apparently I'm going to go over there. I should try and find a job over there. I'm like, yeah, no. I mean, I would I would think that's the case, too, for someone that would be neurotypical. I'm an SMI individual. I got diagnosed SMI before this even happened. I have all these other issues. Dude, I just got kicked out of my house. I got fucking run around by the fucking mental health care program. I was almost homeless. I got a job, lost a job. Major upheaval. Major stress. Major lots of shit goes on. Nothing like what they probably have to deal with on a daily basis. When it comes down to the meth heads, the crackheads, and everything else I was ever at at the TLP. Not even getting into all the rest of the people that were doing the step-down program. Oh, okay, so I move. It's worst thing ever. I can't believe you're making us do this. This is so much work. I'm so angry. Everybody needs to pay attention to me. I'm mom. You know, it'd be really hard for you to come. You know, is there like a thing? You know, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Sure, keep fucking throwing me out. You know, you're not supposed to come out over here anyway. No matter what, don't come over. <laughs> I'm like a leper. I'm like, what the fuck? I just, I just cleaned your house. I just took care of your dogs. I, you know, like I was fucking cooking and cleaning my own shit in my own fucking goddamn place. I did all the work to even get a job and get there to and from all this shit. I'm showing that I can do shit. No trust. No trust. It's like apparently you use drugs. You use like. Psychedelics, yes, because they helped me tremendously at the time. They did. 
And they still do sometimes, truthfully. Yeah. I'm not a violent person on them. <laughs> and, like, I tend to be like, oh, my God, I love myself. I have motivation. I feel like I can do this stuff. Everything's okay. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get through this. You know what I mean? And I'm going to fucking do this. I'm going I'm to get this done. You know? And then it's like, hey, you know what? No one was around. I was by myself. Dogs were fine. Everybody's fine. Everything's good. But you were supposed to use that money on that. I mean, you gave me money for house sitting. And watching the dogs and, and shit like that. Oh, but apparently everybody's so bad and you shouldn't be doing it. I'm like, even my psychiatrist was like, you don't, we tried antipsychotics, atypical antipsychotics. We tried SSRIs, SNRIs. We tried all this shit. We tried all that shit. You know, and the fact of the matter is, is like, now that we know a little bit more about it, it's like, oh, you've been traumatized as a child, as a teen, as an adult. You have PTSD, got diagnosed later with that. Nobody fucking knew about that. Then it later comes out. It's complex. Complex PTSD. You have ADHD. And then it later is like, oh, you're schizoaffective? And it's like all these other symptoms can mimic like that. No, no, you have both. You can have both. I'm like, what? Why? Why? And it's like, I've been through the outpatient therapy they go over all the symptoms of each one of these bipolar with psychosis schizoaffective schizophrenia fucking all the shit we have a test on it i'm like i know what the fuck this is i know this you know what the fuck you know i passed the damn thing i get a little certificate of completion you know eventually for my outpatient doesn't matter though like i i succeeded in getting that far and then like my mom kicks me out and by the way she was getting worse around that time which meant I was getting worse, and nobody knew she was getting worse to me. So you were getting worse around that time when you were using psychedelics. I'm like, you don't know shit about anything. You don't, I mean, my dad doesn't really know. He only saw small little snippets when she pushed buttons to make sure I would blow up. And then she told a bunch of people whatever the fuck she wanted them to know. Much like she told me that apparently... They were thinking I was all these things, and, and like, oh, later on, it's like, hey, by the way, you know, your two sisters told me it was a good thing that you were homeless. <sighs> Apparently, that was true, though. Talk about, like, justification for their anger, resentment, and jealousy. Narcissism. You know what I mean? Anyways. So I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. You know, like, I'm fucking freaking still. I'm dealing with all the shit. Like, all of this shit just piled on me. I'm like, I, 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 I'm like, I, 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 I can't do shit. I'm afraid I'm going to get fucking, like, you know, we're going to move again. It's going to be a whole other thing. You know, if you take into that, all of that, it's like, I've been, I moved like six times already. Five, six times. You know, five, six fucking times. In a short span of like less than a year. It's not very easy for someone to do at all. Okay, so it's like, alright, so what are we doing after that? Well, my, my fucking, uh, my roommate, it turns out he's, he's, he's got all these other issues. I mean, he's, it's not like he doesn't. He's there for a reason, but he's not a step down. Turns out he's he's from the previous program, and he's not leaving. He's not going to leave the thing. Smokes weed, and, like, he's allowed to. He has all this shit in his place, you know, all these things, right? But it, we, we hit it out pretty well, honestly. It seems well, you know? It seems well. Things started to go bad. It was like, I had some weed, and then, like, I freaked out. I freaked out. I had, I had a freak out. There were other medicines involved that I was on. And I freaked out. I drove myself with him to the ER because I freaked out. I admitted myself in like you're supposed to. Stayed there for exactly one day. And then I went back. He moved all this stuff back into his room. 
He's like, cut contact with you. Don't talk to me. I'm going to continue eating your food and like, and, and in no way replace it. I'm going to use your shit and in no way replace it. Or like tell you that I'm going to use it. Petty ass shit, man. Petty shit. I'm talking petty. It escalated. I escalated it. I could have, con- I mean, I, I didn't have anywhere to go. I, I kept talking to the fucking managers of the fucking place. No, no, no. He's not part of it. I can't do anything. I'm like, he's still eating my food. He's still, all the, like, what the fuck is this? You know, I'm not feeding someone else. I have snaps. It's limited. You know, like, we, he broke the relationship up. Like I said, like, hey, you know what? It's okay, you know. I'll give you some food every so often. You know, give me a little weed or something. You know what I mean? A little something like that. Or, like, I'll drive you to a grocery store. Some shit like that. Basic stuff. You know, common courtesy, too. Because it's like you're just helping someone that doesn't have the ability to drive themselves. You know what I mean? Like, and, and they might not be able to get some decent food. You know, trying to help people out. But it's like, hey, you know what? A little weed. Like, you know? Nothing. He took the... He took this... Uh, apparently, there's another another guy there who gave me this keef. He took that. Took his shit. All out of there. It's all his shit anyway, so it's like, he can do that. Then he started taking my shit. And then it's like, he started getting pissed off with me. I eventually escalated it. There was a one... there. You know, this is... This real talk. This is how angry, frustrated... Because it's like, oh, by the way, your parents are fucking shitting on you for not doing enough work to try and find a job. And it's like, what the fuck? Oh, by the way, your younger sister is, like, fucking shitting on you. Oh, by the way, you're fucking, like, the people that are there are, like, sick of you, you know, because it's like, you're you're going to these physical therapy appointments, and, like, you seem like you're capable, but meanwhile, they're doing, like, no work themselves, almost. Like, they, they pretty much don't do any check, like, you have to do some check-ins, and that's it. Pretty okay, though, for me. Later on, I would have been okay with that. But it's like, it seemed hypocritical. And it's like, you have no idea what I'm dealing with. You literally have no clue. Like, you have no idea. You have not done that shit. But it's like, I'm missing a leg. I've been to the army, all this other shit. It's like, you were an analyst. Sure, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, whatever, you know, it's like, okay, so you've dealt with some shit, but it's like, where's the empathy and sympathy and compassion coming back to me? There wasn't. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like some shit. It's valid. It's absolutely valid. But it's like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? Why why is mine not valid? You know? Anyways, around that time, I got some, I got some, uh, some psychedelics, you know, not mushrooms. I, I got like a pro drug. It's fine. And it was good. And, um, you know what I mean? Like, we had a little bit beforehand. Nothing really seemed to have happened. He didn't get any kind of use out of it. So he didn't want to take any more. And, 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 of course, he took everything away. I decided to do some that night. You know, and it's like, you know, it fucking hurt. Like, he just basically blew me off. Hurt like hell. He blew my ass off. Like, it was just like, whatever. I'm done. Freaked out on me. I'm like, you've never had a freak out? You never had issues? You're here. Talk about empathy, lack of empathy and sympathy. You know what I mean? You know? So, anyways, I got over it. I'm like, I'm fucking great. I'm fucking doing really well. I get some fucking, like, confidence in myself just a little bit. And then I don't. Because it's like I go over to my fucking parents because I needed to get, like, this shit. I forget what the hell it was. I think it was, like, downloading, like, Netflix shit again because there's no fucking internet. And it was like, okay, so I'm coming back. Everything's kind of shitty. And I have, like, almost no fucking, like, willingness to do anything. I, I can barely even get to my physical therapy appointments or even do them. You know? And by barely, I mean, some of them I just blew off. I told them, like, I don't know schedule or some shit. I don't know. You know, that's what that was. I didn't say those words specifically, but like, yeah, no, it's basically kind of what I think happened around that point. And then, um, then I, I, unbeknownst to me, microwaves were not a thing for everyone in the fucking apartment. He had his own microwave. All right. I didn't know. No one told me. 
No one told me anything about what the hell comes standard in this place. They just said, this is your room. Sign this thing. Have fun. So I took the microwave in my room briefly. You know, like, because I was making popcorn. I was fucking so depressed I didn't want to get up. And I was kind of, like, trying to fuck over. I mean, he almost never uses the microwave. Like, and I mean that. Like, almost never use the microwave. And it's like, boom, 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 I'm going to kill you, John. I'm going to fucking murder you. He's got power tools in there. I'm hearing him shuffle through tools. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? You know what I mean? Yeah, but the the worst part about this one for me, because it's like I escalated it. You know what I mean? That's what I did. It was like a couple of nights or about the previous night or something like that. I was sitting in the in the living room with like a fucking pan or a pot or something waiting for him to come the hell out of his room so I could just brain him and beat him to death because it had gotten that bad for me. My anger, my frustration, everything boiled over. He never came out. I fucking let it subside. And I fucking chilled. I chilled. I chilled out. I fucking did other shit. I did. But then he continued using my food. Then he ended up using, like, my ice packs that I had, you know, for, like, fucking going over to his grocery store. It's like, never fucking told me you were going to use those. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> then, like, I was like, oh, but I'm, I was going to replace it later. No, you weren't. So suddenly, like, some a little, a little bit of meat, not even anywhere near the amount of shit that he took from me, shows up. It's like, it's yours. I'm like, what the fuck? That's what it boiled over. I was like, I'm fucking kill you. I really was. I was that fucking close. I was that close. If he had stepped out, I would have done it. And then that happened. And they were like, no, 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 no. You can't stay in this room anymore. We're, we don't know where to put you, though. It's clear that Brad had some issues. You had to file a police report. Yeah, because he's like that threatening. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like, but he stole my microwave. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I had it in my room. The door closed and locked, sure. Because it's like, you know, I kind of want some privacy. But, like, I didn't fucking even know it was your microwave, for one thing. And then, like, on top of that, I gave it back. I didn't even know. I was like, holy shit, oh, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? But that's fuck you, you know what I mean? For going that far, trying to fucking, like, literally unscrew my fucking damn screws on my doorknob. And then he's got like a fucking hammer. He's fucking pounding. I'm going to fucking kill you. He's pounding on the damn door sill. You know, that type of shit. Like, that's what I had to deal with. You know, in the step down. It's like, okay, we'll move you over to this other place. No one's really there to help you do it. But like, you do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, my parents helped us, helped me, that is. But it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, they, eh, it was not a very nice thing. and it was, it was very mean about the whole thing, again, with my mother and everything else. And then it's like, okay, okay, I, I got here. I got a nice roommate, seems nice. I'm, I'm getting situated. You know, I, what, what I did, it's like, by that point, I had already started going to the library, like, every day. I'd already started going to the library every day, like around after that trip, that, that psychedelic trip. I was like, okay, I'm going there to apply for jobs. And I went and typed in entry-level job into Indeed.com, and I applied to everything that actually I could do, and I even had like a little bit of marginal experience on. I went all the way to like page fucking 30-something after a certain point, because I could just leave the tab open. Got nothing, nowhere. I had one single thing that was like, oh, we'll interview you. Went through three interviews, but it's like, actually, we, we're we not going to hire you. You know what I mean? Like, by, by the way, it was it was like, because you have a disability or some other bullshit, you know, it's like, you, you're speculating, but it's like, it's probably what that was. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you're hard of hearing this is a desk job or you're a customer service or some shit. And it's like, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> You know, look like we're, you know, really considering. You... I got taken for a ride. But by that point, it was like, okay, so I'm, I'm kind of fucking, like, destroyed. I can't do this anymore. I, can't, I don't want to go over to, to the library. I can't do, I can't fucking pay for the gas. I don't want to fucking deal with, like, the traffic. I can't fucking, 
you know, I can't even put up a fight in terms of like getting out of bed some days. And so it's like, all right, all right, I'm doing this. You know what I mean? I'm going to fucking do this fucking place for a little bit. I slowly get myself kind of together. You know, I'm slowly starting to get myself back to the library and apply again. I'm slowly starting to, to get shit done. You know what I mean? And then it's like, oh, by the way, you're moving to this other place uh, because apparently we said that this, this room you're in, that we moved you in and we said that you could be there and, we, and it wouldn't go to anyone else and it was fine, was assigned to someone else. Oh, and the other one that they suggested previously had bed bugs. Previously. Yeah, but we took care of it, though. We did. We took care of it somehow. You know, we kind of sprayed for them. They didn't really remove much, but, like, we sprayed for it. I'm like, I'm going to take the other one. Oh, we can't move you to that other one? It's already taken by someone else. This place... Fucking two, three miles, just straight up north. Maybe even five. Honestly, I don't know. I say it's like Thunderbird and 35th Avenue, and then we were basically at the fucking 101 at that point. You know, <laughs> fucking Jesus shit. That's it, or 17 or some shit. I don't know. There's like that one right there. And it's just like ridiculously far distance. Especially when you have to deal with traffic. And it's like that basically gets you to the heart of Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, what, where I was at, it's like, it's basically the heart of Phoenix at that point. You know, more or less, like, you, you're, you only need to move, like, I mean, by move, I mean, like, you only need to drive, like, a little bit in your heart of Phoenix. I just started applying, I got a, a couple of, like, little, eh, well, maybe we'll consider you, you know, and then, like, nothing, it's scam callers, beyond belief, you know, all that other shit. I get everything moved over. Barely, the parents don't help me this time. They weren't going to. Sick and tired of this. You moved three times, four times. You've had us. At, you've asked us every time. We're getting tired. What about me? What about like all the other times I had to move? What about all this other shit? You don't think that that's tiresome for me? <sighs> the fuck are you on about? You're my parents supposed to support. This was something you decided to do as my mother. Kick me the fuck out. Because I was so unstable, so bad. I was so bad. Everybody there, it's like, you know what? You, you, you seem fine. You, know, you had some problems with Brad. But like, you know, nothing actually came of it. I was that close, sure. Again, nothing came of it. He was the one that tried to assault you. I was the one that had to file the police report. I was the one that went to some fucking, like, weird building, administrative building, and, like, asked what I should do and shit to them. And, like, they, 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 after that, were like, no, I don't really like you here. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck this is about. I didn't even do anything. I was the one that getting fucked over. So I go there, three fucking goddamn meetings a day, non-negotiable. Well, maybe if you have a job. Well, you know, we'll talk about it. I'm like, I need to be able to apply for jobs, if that's the thing. Yeah, well, we have this, like, uh, internet thing that's around these other people, you know, and, like, it's noisy, it's a bad environment, and, and, and generally speaking, it doesn't really work. But people sometimes use it. I'm like, and you take a third of everybody's, uh, because this, I didn't have income really at the time. And by really, I mean, I had snaps. <clears throat> so it's like, that take a third of your income. You're not really, really technically supposed to leave premise and try and find like, a job, but they say you are. It's to get you more independent. It's to get you there. But it's like, this was the first place I could get to. I was already on the waiting list before this even happened for this move. 
for the eight hour and lesser than eight hour place. I was even filling out the fucking paperwork to try and get the like the fucking your own apartment thing. They're like, oh, you have to wait for like three years because then you're homeless long enough. And then, oh, if you had a lot of your shit stolen, then it's like, then, then you get to mark that. And they have a little checkbox and it's like, okay, so if you got this amount of points, then you can then get the application, which can then put you onto the wait list, which could be up to five years. Shit out of luck. You don't get you don't get any of that shit. You, you, and it's really not meant for that. You know what I mean? Turns out. Because it was like, uh, wait, no. I was told at the TLP and all these other things, that's what it's for. And I'm like, well, yeah. Uh, but, like, this is my case manager. You know, I don't really know anything about that. And I don't think it's really meant for that. So I'm still with the same case manager. I had never moved. Still at the same clinic, because that keeps the records going. They keep fucking knowing you. That keeps the stuff, like, good to go. Because you're an active case, and they're, and you're not shuffled out. And they were actually, of all of the SMI clinics, one of the few ones that were at least good to mediocre. <sighs> So during this time, I'm on court order treatment. I got kicked out of my house. I said I didn't want to be there. They admitted me involuntarily anyways. I fucking made jokes or other bullshit. You know, that meant like they, they think I'm so unstable. It doesn't matter. You could say anything and they would just fucking take you in. I learned that the hard way. Many people were like that. That I later met. I mean that. That's a genuine thing. Like, that's, that's just, they just fucking check you in. And it's like against your will. Oh, by the way, now that means you're up for quarter of treatment, even though you didn't do anything. Yeah, and you can't find it. You really actually can't fight it very much. I mean that. You really can't. Like, the judge barely gives a shit, and they're just going to side with whatever the doctor says. You have no idea how... That is literally the case. That's like almost everyone. And like I say almost because it's like I'm sure there are some that didn't. But it's like I never met anyone. No one ever I, I ever talked to. And some of them have been into mental health hospitals more times than even I have. Which is five so far of it as of this recording. You know. All coinciding, by the way, with my mother and my family being involved. With drug use too exacerbating my issue. Cannabis, very high THC, no CBD, and certainly no fucking, like, actual non-sativas. Even regular people get psychosis on that shit. Even regular-ass people get paranoid as fuck. They act erratically. <sighs> That's the problem I have with dispensary weed, and it's like, oh, well, you know what? By the way, nug to nug, it's also different. It's also it's different. Like the cannabinoid profile can change pretty decently, not by like a percent. I'm like five to even sometimes ten percent can change depending on each individual nug. It's it's like what the fuck, you know? And it was helping, and then it's like, oh right, right, by by the way, by the way. Your family is shitting on you at this point. They don't understand a word what it is that's going on with you at all. They don't seem to think that any of the shit that they did previously has resulted in this situation with me going ridiculous. I'm sorry, you going ridiculously crazy. But it's like, are you ridiculous? You weren't punching balls. You weren't like you were a kid. You weren't doing anything. You were mouthing off, but like mouthing off, speaking up for himself and like having his boundaries known and like not taking shit when someone does like does shit talking to you is a bit of a thing for narcissists. They have control over you. And so it's like, oh, obviously, that's not okay to do. You, you need to learn what your place is. And it's like, okay, okay, sure, 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 sure. All right. All right. Whatever. They don't want to fucking know. They don't want to care. They don't want to do any of that. You know, like I'm drinking, which doesn't help. It just it doesn't help. I don't like drinking anymore. 
And it's like binge drinking, and I'm like, yeah, it's sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's kind of throughout the day, and then I'd take like a week to two weeks off. I don't know, man. Like, it was random. It was random. That's the problem. It was random, you know? But, like, consistently, after that psychedelic experience, it's like, oh, I'm I'm walking again. I didn't... I, I, I fucking went to the hospital... They didn't give me cannabis. I go through this fucking, you know, this outpatient, all this other shit. I'm, I'm, I stop walking. I can barely fucking get out of, of bed. I'm eating so much. I go from like 190 when I started to 320 pounds last time I measured before I was starting to able to lose weight. You know? Oh, by the way, that's fine. You look good. You look healthy now. Oh, now you're eating too much. <sighs> You know, that's fine. Whatever. You should shut up, stop mouthing, all this other stuff. You know what I mean? Mom goes, I'm going to fuck with you, and then I'm going to, like, allow you to finally have cannabis. You know what I mean? And it's like, you stole her cannabis. I'm like, yeah, because, like, genuinely nothing was helping. I already gone through the medication that I was on. I already done that. I already done that antipsychotics. I already done that shit. I wasn't doing shit. I was like, stole? What does stole mean? She had some leftover, something that I think I gave her, or she had herself, or some shit like that. I don't remember. I snuck it. I actually started doing better. And then eventually she found out, because, you know, you can't keep that hidden forever. You know? And it's like, well, what do you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, so what did that amount to? I, you know, I beg on my hands and knees, don't fucking kick me out, I'm lying my ass off. I'm like, fuck you. I don't want to fucking even be here. I fucking hate you. But I'm going to degrade myself and look like I'm fucking weak and all this other shit, you know, because, like, I have to actually have a place to live. You know what I mean? That kind of shit. And it's like, from their perspective, it's like, you had such a dependency on cannabis. Everything that you were doing was so wrong and bad. You were willing to steal and do all this shit. I'm like, medicine, that seems to help me. I was doing better. I was being more sociable around that time. You know, I was actually participating back in group. I suddenly didn't have all these massive nightmares that were going on. My suicidal feelings and ideation went away for a good while until I got off of it again. I'm eating healthier. I'm working out again. <laughs> like, oh, sure, yeah, no, whatever. Sure. Sure. You were so much worse. It was cannabinoid dependence. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's kind of a dependence because it's like it's a medicine that works for you. Like you call someone that's on ADHD meds. It's like you're dependent, but it's like they work for you. And so it's like, is it that bad? No, it's not. You don't call that bad. Seems to have caused your psychosis. A large amount of repeated use of trauma against me. Triggers, abuse, fucking lots of that shit. That seemed to have caused a lot of that issues. And then, of course, problematic, bad cannabis use. With, on top of that, hey, guess what? You're going to add in alcohol. You don't sleep for, like, a week randomly. Because it's like you're on the, you're on the, the fucking, like, super hardcore sativa. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, what happened? I just, I, I just, I can't sleep. It's like, next thing I know, I'm paranoid. Uh, I'm fucking acting weird. <sighs> Who the fuck isn't going to? What the fuck are you on about? Someone's definitely not going to do well with that. It's like, okay, so I get kicked out eventually. You know what I mean? From that. Sure. I was the bad guy. None of their shit mattered. And it was all just because I was addicted to cannabis. Sure. Sure. No one really, like, that would think about it from this point of view would really, and knows a bit, a bit about mental health disorders, would really believe that. <laughs> they wouldn't. It'd be like, it was a fucking combination, sure. And it's like, that's what that is. But, like, whatever, sure. So it's like, okay, so I, I finally get to this northern landing place. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm going to the library. I'm getting the fuck out because these people... My God, the managers are shit people. There's a reason why there's three damn meetings a day that are mandatory. You want to know the reason? They get paid for each one. For everyone that attends. 
By the way, on top of this, it's like 9 a.m. is not when you have to check in. That's the last call check-in. You have to immediately check in at around 7.30 or some shit. And I'm like, I have ADHD. I usually stay up to like 2 a.m. and I can barely wake up early enough. And like, it's not nearly as easy for me to have a good sleep schedule no matter what it is anyone says. Even if you force that. It's not going to help. People know that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It didn't help me. It didn't at all. Like, anybody that's like, yes, it does. I'm like, no, it doesn't. You don't know mental health disorders. He doesn't, though. Because it's like, oh, what's a genuinely well-studied, well-documented issue with ADHD people? Oh, by the way, with these medications and everything else, uh, and it's untreated? Yeah. Yeah, no, he wasn't going to get up in time very easily. <laughs> what are you doing? You weren't going to be able to do that. That's that's what that is. It's just what that is. Okay. So it's like, all right, all right, I'm getting my, my shit together as best I can. I'm trying to do my shit. You know, now I'm, I'm, now I'm trying to, like, deal with, like, all this other crap that's going on. You know? And it's like, oh, I've got this Wellbutrin. This Wellbutrin is garbage. I hate the Wellbutrin. It doesn't work anymore. I'm now feeling suicidal. It helped for like the two months to three months, and then it's gone every time. I've been on it three times. That's exactly its profile every fucking time. Three months seems to help, then suicidal ideation, and it gets worse. And like lots of side effects and no benefits at all. Like it never helped. It just doesn't. It's like, you're, on, you're not treating your ADHD. Well, I have psychosis, I have schizoaffective, I have all this. So, it's like, they can't give you that. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, I've been on Stratera, I've been on non-stimulants before, and it's like, I've been way worse off of, on that. You know what I mean? That, I, I remember that when I was a kid. That was one of the reasons why I was so aggressive. That was one of the reasons why I was so, all these other things, when I was fucking going through that. It's like one of them happened to be mixed around with like one of my fucking uh, stimulant ones. I'm God's child now. Which that's a thing. You know what I mean? And it's like, wow, geez, seems like he has psychosis issues with large amounts of trauma. Which I'm sure because he was, when was that? That he was in, he was in first grade? First grade. Big upheaval, just moved, just had to go to his brand new place. His family is fighting like crazy. And he's he's apparently acting out in class when in reality his grades are good. His parents don't want to fucking help him with his homework or at least like sit around because it's like, hey, if you don't, ADHD people do well when someone's just around and you can kind of like do the work a little bit easier. You know what I mean? You know, but no, 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 they can't do that. But it's like, you're so angry, you're all these things, and I'm like, gee, I wonder why that might have been trauma. Man, if I, you know what I mean? That's that's a thing, you know? <laughs> it's not, I was not that bad. Yeah, okay, we don't believe you, but sure. <laughs> we don't, no. But like, okay, so like, it was there, that's a thing. And then your your idea is like, you're so bad, you're so wrong, why are you so angry, it's all your fault. Why can't you just do the work without us? You should know this already. How many times you heard that one from mom? <sighs> Fucking lots. There's a reason why I do it so well, that impression, that little jab. And then it's like, hey, but, but by the way, that's your, your older sister, your younger sister, even your dad at some point. <laughs> My family's garbage. Total trash garbage. So it's like, all right, all right, all right, all right. I got to Northern Line, I'm getting to the thing. I randomly decide to apply for a fucking, because I've been staying away from fast food. I've been staying away from fast food purely because it's like, I'm hard of hearing. That's a very fast-paced environment. There's lots of loud things. All these things bad for PTSD. It's stressful, and people just fucking hate on you for not doing, like, a literal perfect make fast food into gourmet restaurant levels of jobs. What do you know? I get the job. What do you know? Oh, you're hard of hearing? That's fine. You know, oh, this person seems to have, have gone through, like, many people already before I even came there. <laughs> 
It was like it didn't matter that I was over an hour away through traffic to be able to get to the job. Lots of red flags, I just ignored them. Oh, I didn't even really have, like, an interview, if I'm being honest. Like, you just have the job. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay, we'll start you, you know, and then it's like, okay, I have the job. I'm, like, one of the best people there after a certain point, but I certainly was slow in the beginning, you know what I mean? Everybody liked me. Everybody appreciated me being there. You know what I mean? For what it was worth, you know, some of the managers, even the managers, like, my dad died, I don't I don't know what to do, or something like this, or brother, or some shit, and then he's like, I have to go, I'm just letting you know, and I figured you'd want to know, and I'm like, what the fuck, why are you telling me? We barely talk. <sighs> you don't need to tell me anything like that. Why is this going on? I'm with my friend, I'm about to go hang out, because I met through, like, in the area, because I'm in a, in a terminal, I'm in an airport, I'm in a terminal for... Wendy's. That's my fucking crew member job. You know what I mean? And it's like, there was hell to get the fucking parking shit done. I'm not even kidding. Like, I rode around all these different fucking... I finally found the place. I'm like, what the fuck? This is, like, so difficult to actually find. Like, you have no idea where the... Like, I asked multiple people, it's over there. I get an entirely different direction. Over that way. Over this way. Over that way. <sighs> I'm like, where the fuck is anything anymore? I'm looking at a map, and like, it doesn't say where this is. I'm walking all over the airport with, like, a Wendy's uniform going, like, what the fuck is this? Where am I? Just trying my best... To find the place where it's like, hey, so you 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 work here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that means like uh, now you now you have a parking spot. Oh, by the way, you know it's you have to go through this like little training program or some shit. You know, after that, at this other place that's as far as you can reasonably get and still be in the airport. But they have like a train, then you go down an elevator, and then you walk a shit ton, but not too much of a shit ton. But it's it's a decent walk. <laughs> But no, no, it's a walk and a half to even get to the fucking elevator. You know, it's a walk and a half to even get to the little fucking sky train to get you to the fucking elevator. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then the fucking elevator, or the, uh, the sky train is its own damn, like, that's a fucking long thing. So it's like, okay, I finally get there. And it's like, all right, no, we'll see you then. This other day, whatever the fuck it was. I'm like, I've been here for like two hours waiting for you to say something. Like, fucking, I'm just sitting around, like, oh, yeah, no, yeah, we'll see you later. <laughs> like, what the fuck was that? What? <sighs> okay, finally, I get in, I do the thing. I take the test, I pass it. You know, it's kind of stressful. They give me these little headphones. I can't hear shit out of them. I'm like, my hearing aids are just going to go, Nee-e-e-e! all the way through. I say, hey, here, here, you know what? They're going to pay for your your, uh, your badge. You know what I mean? There you go. Finally. You know, otherwise you have to pay for your own. It's a whole bunch of fucking shit that's attached to it. Like, that's really kind of scary. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, okay, you're finally at your job. Yeah, someone has to walk you through TSA before you get the badge. Every time. Every fucking time. And you have to go the slow way. Finally get the badge. I'm finally going through my own way. You know what I mean? I get I, I come early, about 10 minutes to, you know, like five minutes early. And you know what that takes? That takes going through the back way because the highway is filled with traffic. It was literally faster to go through the back way. Just go over to this, then go down to this other fucking like regular street road, straight over to there, and then I hook a right over to the, uh, the, the little parking lot, you know, little roundabout thing. And you go, oh, I'm going to take a left and then boom, I'm there. I'm in the parking lot that's over there by the SkyTrain. I'm finally there. You know how long that takes? 45 minutes still. (laughs) Stop and go. Still traffic. You know what I mean? Still doing it. I have to pee every fucking time because I'm like, I have to drink coffee. I can barely stay awake. I'm like, I'm, I'm like getting there. It's like five minutes or like 30 minutes. There's like this one CVS that I always go to. I was like, oh, I accidentally locked my keys in my car one day. Oh, guess what? I'm going to be late. I wasn't supposed to, like, you know, you know, because I was supposed to go do this other thing with something else. So it was fine if I was going to be late anyways that day. But, like, 
you know, it was really working or some shit like that. But, um, and then it's like, oh yeah, no, my dad, because my mom was like, couldn't be asked to do it. <laughs> couldn't be asked. It's like, I can't do that. It would be too scary. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. You know what I mean? Too scary. You, you apparently did something like this before to do something else. But, you know, every situation is different. You have to validate that, even if it seemed an awful lot like knowing her now. That was just because she didn't want to do it. <laughs> and then it's like, all right, my dad from his job, all the fucking way over in Deep Gilbert or some shit, has to drive from there all the way where I am, which is effectively, like, just a little further down from Thunderbird, you know, and then, like, it's a further over, so instead of 35th Avenue or some shit, it's, like, 30th or I don't fucking give a shit. It doesn't matter. It's, like, it was pretty far the fuck out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's, like, thank you for saving me. For real. Holy shit. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. I was going to be stuck. It was the damn car was running. I left the keys in. Was, you know what I mean? And I'm like, what? Why the fuck did I leave the key? I, what the fuck? And then that's when you realize like you have ADHD. Sometimes you're going to fucking fuck shit up. You're not treating it. You're not focusing the way you need to. You know, you have all this other stress and trauma that you're going through. You have to deal with all of that brand new fucking stress and trauma of the job. Your parents basically wrote you off. Oh, by the way, we're going to let your younger sister apparently live with you around this time. Because Alex broke up and then like, I'm going to break my lease or some shit. Or I didn't want to, but then eventually did anyways or some shit. I don't remember. Don't care. That's bullshit, but whatever. <laughs> so it's like, all right, all right, all right, all right. You know, I finally get there. I'm good. And you know, all that stuff. That was one of the major moments. The job eventually, as, as it turns out, because I'm like, you know, I'm, you know, I have a car. A lot of them don't really have a car. You know what I mean? That's a big, that's a big thing, you know? And it's like, oh, I, I'm going to be a carpool. Oh, yeah. No one's really someone that's got the right schedule for me to do it. So I can't. <laughs> and then, like, there's just, there's tremendous amounts of traffic when they're actually there. And I need to change my schedule so I have a lot less traffic. A lot less. <laughs> Because I'm like, I'm willing to go till, till like, whatever fucking, I, I can't deal with the traffic. Because the way home is literally, like, a hour and a half to two hour slog fest no matter where you go. It's fucking terrible. It doesn't matter what you listen to. All of it's, it's just like, uh. and by the way, you just went through a massively stressful job. And then, like, you're, you're like, dealing with, oh, but, oh, oh, this one's great. You're... Your managers at this at this fucking this housing program. It's not a housing program. It's a it's a mental health program that happens to have housing for you. So that way you're homeless and they don't have to deal with certain paperwork or some shit. I don't know. And they get money for it, a lot more. Yeah. Anyways, um, you are doing your three meetings a day. Before I got the job, you know what? You're seemingly always going somewhere. I'm like, yeah, and I'm applying for jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to use that place because I knew I couldn't focus and I needed to focus to be able to apply for jobs. That's a thing I have to do. You know, standard, like, working around the issue that you have. You know, the workarounds. You try your best to do that. Everyone that's ever been through any of that shit, that's, it's what you're always trying to do with any of your mental disorders. Work around it. To fucking fit in a, dare I say, terrible fucking world that's not really built for it. Anyways. So it's like, alright, I got the job. And, okay, well, you know, we'll work with you now on the meetings. You're not going to enough jobs. I mean, meetings, you know what I mean? You know, It's like, oh, by the way, I you shouldn't think like that. Because, like, I have to work this shift over here at this place before I come over here. I have that recorded. I recorded my meetings with my with that fucking person. Her name was Mary. Total shithead. Worst person I could ever imagine being in anything with this program. With anything in the mental health care. She didn't give a shit. No sympathy. No empathy. Like, I'm like this. You're apparently fine. I'm like, I'm not fine. You don't know me. You don't even talk to me. We meet this way. This is what this is. You don't know shit about me. I don't want to fucking tell you because you're a fucking shithead. 
You're like, I'm barely making it by when, on like three, two to four hours of sleep every day. I have to fucking go through all this traffic all the time. I'm like, really? So where's the empathy? <laughs> also, I'm in the program and you're not. You're the one that's fucking managing it. <laughs> the fuck are you on about? There's Dan, the ex-meth addict. You can tell like he's stopping himself from fucking like beating the shit out of people. You know, when he gets angry, like he just, eh, like he's got that shit. That, and it's like, oh, you, why don't you come over to our group where we, we can discuss stuff? No, you don't. You read a fucking goddamn stupid piece of paper that you got off the internet, and then you go, what does that make you feel? Or some shit like that. This is not fucking therapy. This is not helping anyone, really. You're doing this for money. And then they get annoyed because I'm like, hey, you know what? I have a car. I'm able to be independent, which is the point of your fucking job, you know, to make me independent. <laughs> the whole program. Anyways. You know, and it's like, hey, so you're, you're getting your own shit. I'm really proud of you. You know, you need to find new housing. You don't... I'm just saying you might need to because you seem to be doing this stuff. And I don't really, you know, can't say that I don't want you here. But... <laughs> parents even know it. They even heard about it. I'm fucking like, oh, right, right here. Back to... I have a job at the Wendy's. I'm over halfway to where the fucking parents are from where I'm at. And it's like, even if it's halfway, which it's more than halfway, I can get my fucking laundry done and clothes done. Why the fuck shouldn't I be allowed to do that? I don't have to pay for it at a fucking... I already had to spend the gas. Hey, do you don't want to see me? You don't want to fucking see me at all? What the fuck is that bullshit? I didn't even do anything to any of you. And it's like, oh yeah, no, no, I know why. Yeah, yeah. You're doing well without us. You know, mom's like, oh, I, you know, I might give you, you know, five hundred dollars if you decide to go on a vacation or something. You know, I, I saved this money from when I was, you know, gonna give you, give it to you for for cannabis. You know, but it's in a separate account, and 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 I'm like, what the fuck is, what is this? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? That that doesn't make sense. What the fuck is that? And like, I look at the the fucking numbers. It was more than five hundred dollars. With the amount of money that she, that she saved up, but it's like whatever, you know what I mean? She just wants to fucking do the narcissism. I, I'm gonna give you like this gift, because you seem to be doing well without me, and I want you to fucking like seem to like have a massive issue, and that like, you're the bad guy. You know what I mean? This is the button press. It's a, it's like that's what that is. I need to be the good one. You need to be the bad one. So, anyways. You know, I'm, 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 I'm visiting friends. I go out, I take them around, you know, I, I fucking talk with them, I help them with their food or whatever else, you know what I mean? Like, get groceries, shit like that. You know, I talk, I, I, I hang out. You know, I'm a good, cool person. People like me at the job. People like me out there with the friends, and then, it, you know, kind of, I, I got depressed as fuck by a certain point. Like, at my, every, I was screaming bloody murder on the way back home. After I got, like, my schedule more or less fixed. You know, I have a manager that's fucking calling me names behind my back. And it's like, is that just your paranoia? No, no, no. The other manager tells me while I drive her back to her place. You know, it's because I want to know what the fuck's going on. And, you know, it's, I want to be a nice person. She, she accepted the ride. What the fuck, you know? So it's like, okay, so I, I guess I get to talk, see what the hell is going on. You know, that kind of stuff. You know, being sociable. That's what that is. Yeah, no, she was doing that. I can't believe you didn't slug her. <laughs> you know, more or less. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, and it's like, oh, right, but then, like, you know, your other friend, you know, wonderful person, is, is kind of, like, in her own sort of situation where she got taken out of being homeless after being abused. I mean, he, sorry, not she. He. He. Was being viewed because she's female to male, female to male. Misspoke. He was being abused at an early age, living with his grandparents because his mother died or some shit after abusing him or some lost custody and then something happened. I don't know, whatever, something like that. I don't want to get too deep into the details. You don't really deserve that much. But like then randomly, the 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 people that he's staying with, his friends, seemingly only friends. Or like, yeah, no, I'm going over here. You can come live with us. And it's like, right, okay. 
And then next thing you know, like the person with multiple personality disorder, dissociative identity disorder, which is really what it's called. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I don't, you know, I haven't gotten to dis- I don't want to get too far into that. Cause like maybe she does, maybe she doesn't, you know, that kind of stuff. Cause she's a, she, they're, they're, they were together and then they're not together. The mom's there, you know, it's been a kind of a weird thing. For the most part, I seem like I'm pretty cool, I feel, but I've been like, I went on rants because it's like, things just boiled over and I fucking vented. You know what I mean? But for the most part, everybody seemed chill. Everybody seemed to like me. They weren't fucking like, you know, anything like that. And then like, she starts mentioning how she gets treated. And I'm like, you're actually kind of getting mistreated. (laughs) You know? And then like, she kind of distances from me. (laughs) And then by that point, she's like, I was share, I was showing her pay money wubby, making a joke about like the age of consent laws being crazy and weird. Cause it's like one fucking state's like really low and another is like 18 or fucking some other shit. And it's like, what the fuck is the country? What is this? And to me, it spoke to like, yeah, the country's really odd about a lot of this shit. Like some of you can just do ridiculously easy things that like you know way easier in your state and then like california you're like you can't do nothing in california like that you know what i mean and it's like what the fuck is that i didn't even know anything about it but it's like oh what the hell but she, she kind of gets a little bit weirded out that day and like we you know we kind of tried to talk you know and we hung out a little bit later uh, he sorry he 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 got you know we hung out a little bit later but it wasn't you know he bought me like a burrito or something and I was like, oh, hey, no, 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 don't do that. And then it's like, okay, sure. I was, you know, trying to you know, do my thing because um, the first time I ever really hung out with anyone. That was my very first friend, really, that I ever hung out consistently and I put in the work and effort to do so. You know what I mean? I did. You know, and it's like, you know, gas wise, the fucking, and it's like, they only take a third of your money. I'm not fucking making that much money. You know what I mean? I'm really not. And it's like, I, I was trying to like, you know, but it's like, you know, they, they were fine with it. Or I, I assumed, but like that, that was kind of like the last of it that I heard. But then I actually kind of regressed. My depression and ADHD got so bad, I couldn't talk to them. Like I, I tried a little bit, but I couldn't do it very well. And then like they were leaving because of COVID. COVID at that point had been getting big. And hit, and then they were willing to, like, you know, basically house the dude. And I'm like, with all that other stuff that they do to trigger you and everything else, I don't know, man. That seems a little rough. That seems a little too far to me. Uh, I didn't really say that, but that was what I was feeling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, um, we kind of met the last time going, she was leaving, he was leaving, not she. He was leaving. I'm bad at that. I'm still bad at it. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. And he was leaving. And then, like, I was heading to work. And I was like, what the fuck is going to happen to my fucking hours? Tanked. Next fucking day or week. I was like, no, you don't have you don't have any hours for two weeks. I was like, I wait a week. Okay, what's going on? Why didn't I call? And it's like, yeah, no. What, what, what happened? it's like we'll get you next week what yeah yeah what is that but it's like because i told them that i happen to live in this this place that if i don't make an income i will still keep the place you know so that's kind of what that is and other people actually need the income you know that's what that is and then i see other people that are like oh you don't need that income you live with your parents by that point, I'd kind of made a name for myself for kind of like singing, you know, kind of like I'm selling my soul for like barely any money. I'm selling all this garbage food to people that like hurts them and kills them over time. You know, it's not even real cheese. The fucking customer apparently flips out. It's not even real cheese. They hear me. Manager doesn't like that. You know what I mean? That's kind of a thing. You know, I'm singing, I'm dancing. You know, it seems like anything, you know, you know I'm like, I'm trying my best to kind of just go through the damn day because <laughs> i'm like this fucking job sucks everything about the job kind of just sucks except for like some of the people some of the people were really nice but then like other people weren't very nice <laughs> you know what i mean like any other job 
And it's like, yeah, 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 exactly. Any other job, except like it's kind of a stressful, fast paced job. And then it's slow and then nothing for a really long time. And then it's like, what the fuck? And then I'm dealing with like breathing down my ass, neck, and my fucking everywhere, you know, fucking place I'm staying at. That's like, hey, you know what? We don't really want you here. And if we could kick you out for anything, we will. <laughs> By the way, my parents are basically like disowning you. Everything you're doing, it's you that's the problem again. Your friend basically is like, I don't really want to hang out with you. And like, I'm kind of weirded out, I guess. Or not going to really, you know, talk to you. You know? Yeah. <laughs> They're dealing with their own depression and shit. That's what that was. And me and everyone else, it seemed. And it's like, oh, right. You know, I need something to do. Because I can't languish around, and the meetings are god-awful. Like, it was just as bad as I thought. It was just as bad as I thought. I'm like, okay, I'm doing the fucking... Oh my god, these meetings. <laughs> I get real acquainted with how bad these meetings are, and they mean nothing, effectively, to a person like myself that needs more individual therapy that's more targeted on trauma response issues, and isn't around a bunch of individuals that are effectively not really able to even talk like I am now, even able to kind of get their own food together sometimes, own laundry. I mean, like, they, they're able to do stuff, but it's like, it was, it's, it's a bit rough. And, uh, oh, hey, on top of that, you're the only one that's cleaning the apartment at all. Your roommate doesn't, and, like, they ex inspect every month. You're the only one that's cleaning it. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're the only one. Like, you have to buy all your own, cook your own food. Like, you basically get home with almost no time to yourself. And I mean that. Because it's like, I immediately have to wake up, call them. Hey, I am I am here. No, 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 okay, bye. Yeah, 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 whatever that conversation ends up being. And it's like, oh, no, but then you need to check in person at fucking whatever the fuck it was. Because, they, you know, you can do a phone call. We know you're alive. We're not going to fucking, you know, whatever. But it's like, you get an extra two hours, I think it was. And then you have to go walk over there. And it's like, the fuck? What is this? Why do I have to do that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? You know, I didn't have to do that with the other places I stayed. But sure, sure, I'll do it. Because, like, I need a place to stay and live. You know what I mean? By that point, my fucking parents and I had, had already had a big falling out. I moved, like, my, my computer stuff and all this other shit. And then, hey, what do you know? I'm going to go just fucking go for road trips. I'm going to go over to Son Sedona. Fuck it. I'm going to go to Sedona. Why not? I have the time. Fuck you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I do. I have the time. I have the gas money. I've saved up a little money. I've got the gas money. I can go to Sedona. Why not? Fuck it. I'm going to go to Sedona. I went to Sedona. Nice enough place. I went with my roommate. He didn't speak a word at all. The entire way up there and then pretty much the entire way back. He spoke a little bit when we got there. Didn't pay for gas. He doesn't have money for gas, to be fair. But, like, jeez. I don't even know why he decided to agree to go. I don't know what that was. Anyways, I get fucking bored again. I call them. Hey, yeah, no, we don't have anything for you next week. But, like, you know, we'll, we'll try and get you the week after. Something around there. Something around that point. You know, I was like, fuck this. I mean, it could have been around two weeks that I was basically off. I think it was around three, really. But it could have been just two. You know what I mean? Because it's like, I think basically they were like, we're shutting down airports or some shit. And then I went in one day or for a couple of days and there were like no one there. And like, you know, don't come back tomorrow. You know, we don't really need the people. <laughs> some shit like that. You know, and it's like, that's literally what happened. Yeah. Yeah, you have to go through a whole other TSA checkpoint and then walk like a fucking mile to get to where, and there's no one there. Really, that's going to go get the, the get the food. So it was like, what the fuck, you know? Um, so it's like I kind of languish around a little bit, and then I'm like, you know, fuck this shit, fuck this. I don't want to deal with them. I've got like the ability to do a day trip. Sedona happened already. You know what I mean? I went over to Flagstaff one time. You know, they came back. It didn't even go anywhere, and I was like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, I'm I'm, I'm testing the waters. I'm seeing what I can do. You know. Oh, you know, I I got some money. I'm gonna I'm gonna redo the gas or the uh, the oil. 
the oil done. I'm going to change out the tires or something, get them rotated, some shit like that. You know? And then it's like, okay, okay, okay. You know, fuck it. I'm going to go to California. I'm going to fucking buy some fucking dispensary weed. Screw it. I am. Absolutely. Fuck it. Why the hell? Not. I go. I drive up to Flagstaff. I hook a fucking, you know, west, you know, from there. Beautiful drive. Gorgeous scenery. Holy shit. So happy. I'm like, oh my god. I'm like just in a good place. I'm like away from them. I'm like, this feels good. I'm like, I'm also talking and journaling. I think I might have had the journals on my phone or might not have. I, I, don't, I don't remember if I deleted them or not. Could have been in at, at some point during, because I apparently missed, clicked, and then like deleted the May 2020. Because I had May 2020, and there's a big old file, and I thought it was done. And it was like, delete. And it's like, no, shit. It's not actually done fucking zipping itself in my fucking folder. And it's like, ah, great, yay. <laughs> it's dead. But it, I should have it on my, my, my hard disk drive. You know, the, the spinny one is what I said. And I'm like, yeah, 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 no, I remember fucking keeping that there. Yeah, that should be somewhere in there. Anyways, around this time, I have I have internet. I'm, I'm paying for internet monthly. Cox Internet. You know, I, I'm, I'm paying for my rent, you know, which is a third of my income. You know, I'm getting my own groceries. I'm doing my own laundry. You know, I'm, I'm doing my whole thing. I'm, I'm, I even, I'm taking care of the car. Parents, you're the worst thing. You can't be this, blah, blah, blah. I can't trust you. What the fuck is that? There's no way that's working. It makes no sense. I actually have trust here. You're the one that can't be trusted at this point. What is this? <laughs> okay, it's like, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to go over there. You can't smoke marijuana in here. I'm like, well, I wasn't in. I wasn't around. You know what I mean? And like, but then other people were smoking in the apartment. I know that for a fact. <laughs> You know, you smell that shit, like, everywhere. <laughs> but you're in the program, and I'm like, I've seen people drink. Well, you know, I'm not going to kick someone out for drinking, but marijuana. <laughs> but hey, 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 by the way, I go there, I get to the place, I buy the stuff, I have a little bit of money, you know, I can buy it. It's not that much, you know, and it's like, all right, all right, you know, I'm going to drive down this scenic route. All the way down to the 17, from where that Lake Havasu dispensary over at uh, California is. You know, it's around that area. And it's like, alright, I'm going to drive down this scenic route. Beautiful as fuck. Beautiful as fuck. And I mean this. Beautiful beyond belief scenery. It's just gorgeous out there. It is beautiful. I also decided to ingest all my edibles. <laughs> All of them. All 100 milligrams that it added up to. And it's like, alright. Well, you're driving DUI. It's bad. I proceed to drive all the way there to the I-17. I missed the turn a little bit. I'm like, oh, where the fuck should I be going? But, you know, throughout the entire time, it's like, holy shit, this is amazing. I'm finally feeling good. I'm finally... Like, my depression's gone, my anxiety's gone, my fucking stress is gone. Like, my, my back isn't hurting nearly as much. My headache that I've been nursing for, like, ever seems to have disappeared. Like, my fucking, like, oh my god, everything feels decent for once. I'm not, like, crying on the inside all the time. I'm, like, having a big old wonderful time enjoying the scenery as I'm driving down this road. And just kicking it, cause it's pretty much a straight road with a, a few, a few cor corners. That was it. There's almost no one really on the road. It's, it's it's fucking gorgeous. No one almost ever uses the road. It's a scenic road. You know what I mean? So it's whatever, you know, whatever the fuck stupid sucking the authority cock bitch face they are saying you should never have done that. You're already wrong. Everything is bad. And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, whatever. No one no one that would be in my area of anything would ever fucking like you, but sure. Or even think like that, but sure. <laughs> sure. 
and you're better than me somehow and you shouldn't have done that and automatically now you're wrong and bad and so therefore I've won automatically because you are now the bad scapegoat and uh, I'm not, I never did anything that bad. I'm like, you see what I mean? You know, it's a personal failing that you had all these issues with your, with your, all these stuff. And I'm like, what? What? How is that a thing? You know what I mean? That's how they talk. You know what I mean? It's, it's not a part, they don't say personal failing, but it's your fault. That's what that, that is. And it's like nothing you can say will ever change that. You know what I mean? Like nothing. There's nothing you can do to change that part. And it's like, okay, so I, I missed the turn for this for the 17 to, to get back in and the, and then get to uh, get to getting back to my apartment. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, you know, there's this little pull off road. That's, you know, a little campground area. I'm like, where the fuck am I going, really? Because there's, like, almost no signs, like, at all. I have no real idea. And I'm like, oh, is this, is, did I miss the 17? I clearly, and I apparently parked at some weird, random, like, campground area. There's some people over there. It must have looked weird as fuck, you know what I mean? But I, like, I'm looking up at the sky, and I'm like, holy shit, there's so many fucking stars. Like, whoa, you don't really ever get to see that. In the city, you, you, just, you don't. It's fucking gorgeous as hell. It's, it's just so. It's like, yeah, no, it's back the way to to the right. I, I turn around, you know, I, I get back in, you know, I stretch my legs. I've been sitting for like, you know, hours, trying to fucking like, you know, get to this place. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna drive down to 17, you know, because that's all it was. It's like, all right, so I took it. Oh yeah, there's the there's the fucking there's the sign. I can't believe I missed that. <laughs> It's like, it, it, the other one is kind of like non script. There was like a little thing at the time. It, it seems like it didn't pop up. This one, oh yeah, no, it's right there. I'm on it. Wasn't even hard. No issues. None whatsoever. And I, but at this point, I've had many years of experiences with using cannabis throughout the day and driving with it in my system. No problems, really. You know, outside of, like, the random traffic accidents that, like, if you're in a bad fucking traffic environment, even if you pay attention, sometimes you just can't fucking avoid. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I had one or two of those. I think I think it was just the one. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Point is, there's one or two. I don't care. They're out fault, but it's like you couldn't avoid the damn motherfucker anyways. And they slammed on their brakes with no way to get out. So it's like, okay, sure. And I wasn't even that close. The brakes on the sole were so worn or brake pads or whatever. It's like, okay, well, whenever I decide to stop then. You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't know that they had apparently and just been like, no, I'm not going to break now. Levels of, of needing to be made to actually break again. And whatever this other one was, I forget what it was. It might not have been anything. I might not have had anything. Anyways, point is, anyways, uh, I don't think, I, I no insurance ever got, I don't, I don't think anything really ever happened. So it's, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think I ever got, I got into like a little fender bender or something like that. The truck, I think, it was another version of that. There's, there's like this truck and then I kind of creep forward and then the truck kind of went backwards because it had like um, a manual as an old ass motherfucker. And it kind of bumped me and he got out and he looked at it. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me get my, he's trying to get my insurance. He gets into his, his, his uh, driver's seat and he drives off and he's like, whatever. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> sure. Whatever. I mean, we have a basically bent as fuck front bumper bondo to crazy hell. Like, it, it's a bomber car. This is not a nice-looking car that they had that given me. You know what I mean? But it worked. Eight, point A to point B, it works. It worked out. You know what I mean? You know? And so it's like, all right, all right, whatever. I'm the one that's taking care of it for the most part, you know? And then it's like, okay. So it's like, and then this other one, there's a guy that kind of sideswiped in front of me. And then it, like, kind of hit me, kind of not. I was like, did I hit him or not? Or did I just break really hard? And he just kept driving. I'm like, I guess he just, what was that? I was like, what the fuck was that? Don't know. But that was what that was. Never fucking did anything. So it's like, okay, so I guess I'm just going to to school or something now. Or no, 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 school work or something now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, okay, sure, whatever. And then like this, it's like, okay, yeah, I know. I'm just going to go on the I-17. I have to just wait. For it. And that's when I got good at traffic 
you know, uh, the traffic signs or the, the signs that they give you. They, they give you all the signage needed. You don't need to be anywhere near on your phone looking at your phone for the GPS. You can just figure out how to get there with the signs. Like, it's stupidly easy. So I'm like, okay, I gotta go up there, da, 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 and then I just go up fucking, like, North 17 or some shit, you know? And I'm like, alright, then it's, like, all the way up to there to Thunderbird, you know? And I'm done. I get in there, I close the door, I'm like, okay. I feel really good. And, like, every, I'm, just, like, I'm still buzzing, I'm still feeling nice, like, everything in my body is, like, cleansing off all this stress and damage, all this shit. I just drove an entire day trip. It was already like 10 p.m., something like that. By that point, I got back. It was wonderful. Everything went well. There was no issues. I was like, okay, so I haven't smoked any weed. I haven't done any of that. Nothing like that had happened. It's like, okay, so I need to go like buy like a, a like a pipe or some shit. And like, oh, you're not supposed to smoke out in public. So I guess I'll just... Find some random place, I'll sit in my car and I'll fucking blow it out the damn window or some shit. Finding a place that doesn't have people randomly drive down in or is fairly kind of somewhat secluded, kind of hard to do. Especially when, like, you use a lighter and, like, it shines a fucking lighter, you know, light in the car and, like, you can see that. So it's like, I don't want to look like I'm smoking crack or some shit. So I was like, you know, I found a couple places. It helped. It helped out tremendously. It was working. I was finally going back and doing my journals again. I was trying to, like, post stuff on YouTube because it was like, hey, you know what? I want to try and do that. I have the time now. You know, I don't know what's going to happen, but whatever, right? And I'm, and then it's like, I haven't been going to therapy. Yeah, I needed to, and I desperately wanted to. I wanted to go to therapy, but there was no real way to get to a therapist, not with the time I had, the schedule changing every fucking week. To week, to week, to week, to week. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, and then, uh, uh, then I'm like, oh, uh, uh, and, 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 all right. And then it, there's venting out. Venting out happened. The real venting out. My roommate, I was like telling him, like, you know, hey, I don't want any of that, you know. Basically, he's telling me, I don't want any of that because I tell him, you know, that's kind of a thing. So he knew. He didn't care. There was no problem there. You know, I, I smoke like a few times on the balcony. A few. Late at night, no one really supposed to be awake or around at all. There really shouldn't have been. You know, and it's like, oh yeah, wh why is this random motherfucker just suddenly, you never see them. I've been out here at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 10, what, uh, no one's ever around. I mean that. All of a sudden, they're around, and I'm like, okay, whatever. But I, I need to vent. I, so, so I talked to myself out loud with my fucking... I think my phone was recording at the time, but I don't know anymore. You know? And it's like, alright, so I go over, like, how the mental health care system was treating me, and all this stuff, and how bad I... You know, just like I'm doing now. You know what I mean? Like, just like I'm doing now. And I get through it, you know, I don't think of anything of it. It didn't seem like it was too bad. Didn't seem like anybody was, nobody fucking came up and said don't. Nobody said anything about anything at all. And then you know what? Like, for the most part, I got my shit together again. I started, like, actually doing stuff. You know what I mean? And then it's, and then, uh, you know, like, okay, so. What? Like, they just call you in? I mean, around that time, I'd already started smoking somewhere else that wasn't in there, so that way I wasn't smoking around everybody. You know what I mean? That's that's what that was at that point. I get called into the office. They're like, you, you have some complaints about smoking marijuana. I'm like, okay. Well, uh, I wasn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're like, are you going to test me? No, but you're kicked out. You need to leave in like two weeks. <laughs> it's like, I, you don't see any of it. You don't know any. Like, what? What? what what? And it's like, we could test you, you could say it was from somewhere else that you smoked, which is normal and fine. Right, right. So didn't they just smell it on my clothes? And it's like, no, 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 we're not having this discussion. Kicked out. Not to mention, lots of people, lots of people, were smoking marijuana in that fucking goddamn apartment complex. So it's like, 
you know, if I didn't admit to anything and it's like, hey, you know what? Am I admitting to anything? Because it's like, hey, you know, that could be fantasy right there. I never actually did this road trip. I never did any of that. There was nothing that like that happened. And then you have to get into the police and I'm like, you're really going to charge me over something that I was allowed to do? <laughs> or almost, honestly. Yeah, I went recreational literally, I think, the next year or the year after. You know, so <laughs> it's like what you know what i mean what is this but you shouldn't have been doing it and so go 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 that authority cock right <sighs> this time it's the cock this time because it's like i would charge you you were smart i would be so i would have all this it, you know it would make me have headaches and i would feel so bad and i'm like what the fuck are you doing <sighs> You're making the million excuses to immediately mean it's okay for you to be angry about something that seemingly is really honestly not that big of a deal. <sighs> so you know it's not a big deal, but you need it to be, so you're doing that. <sighs> and it's like I've started smoking somewhere else before that point because I'm like, you know, I don't want to be, and people are around. I don't want to fucking disturb them. <clears throat> you know, I found a nice little place. No cops come around. No nothing. <clears throat> no cameras. All that shit. I'm not even on the fucking goddamn like apartment complex grounds. You know what I mean? So that's that's what that turned into. I was ready to go hiking that day. I was gonna get some shit done. I was call. I called the the. Uh, the Wendy's, it's like, hey, so when's my next... Oh, we might get you next week. Fucking great. <laughs> yeah, no, really. Like, we might get you next week. You know, basically, is effectively... Oh, no, we're, we're going to finally get, like, you in, in, in the next schedule next week. That's when that's going to happen. Like, it's been, like, two, three weeks now. They tanked my hours. I literally never went in for those two, three weeks. I had one day I was supposed to show up, and it was like... What? And by supposed to, it's like, then, then, then it's like they felt relieved. I was like calling them because I had some, apparently some other shit and I was not feeling very good at that point. Anyways, I was like, oh, do I have COVID? Some other, or it doesn't matter. Point is, it's like, okay, I'm just going to call and say for the one, you know, whatever. Right. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's good. You know what? We might get you next week. You know, we're trying to like, and it's like, <sighs> that started the whole thing. And it's like one fucking day, you know. You don't even know how many goddamn times I had people just skip out three times, three times, three days in a row, or fucking one day randomly when they wanted to fucking just do it. Like everybody was showing up late. Everybody was just like, "I'm gonna call in sick." Uh, you still work here? Yeah, no, she still works here. What? She's gonna have like a joint in her back pocket. And the manager's gonna catch that in a fucking pass the TSA checkpoint. She still works here. She still works here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, that's the kind of job it was. That's what this was. You know what I mean? That's what this was. So it's like, you know, everybody kind of... And at that point, it's like, I didn't need to be there anyways. I'll be real with you. you I just didn't. Like, there was no one there. <laughs> like, almost no one was coming to us for food at that point. There was no arriving planes practically ever. <laughs> And of those, it's like, um, maybe you might have a cus you know, a customer come from that, you know, maybe. So, um, that was what that was, you know. And so, uh, you know, I'm getting kicked out. I'm like, I'm catatonically depressed now. You know, I threw my fucking weed out by that point. I did. Like, I, I mean, I, I was like, okay, you know, I'm just going to fucking just put it in this fucking cooler or some shit. And then, like, leave it in the dumpster, you know. Like, and just fucking like so that way it's it's it doesn't smell and, and you, you you wouldn't know. Cooler's gone later. Turns out I'm being watched. Cooler's gone. I'm not even kidding. I went to go check the mail. Cooler's gone. Cooler's gone. I'm sitting in my car fucking journaling at some point because I'm like freaking the hell out and all this other shit at that point, you know. And it's like okay. Cooler's gone. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And we're, we're not talking like this was during midday or like even very, very early, late at night. And we're talking like fucking 2 a.m. or some shit. Cooler's gone. <laughs> Cooler's just gone. So it's like, all right, so I'm clearly being watched, clearly being followed on this shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about paranoia, right? When you know that shit. Like, you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. So it's like, all right, all right, all right. And then it's like, all right, I just, so I, I did nothing. I didn't tell my parents. And like, what the fuck were they going to do? They're not going to fucking keep me there. It's like, maybe you'll figure out something in the two. And it's like, there's no way that's going to happen. I even called my clinic already. It's like, hey, do you have any place? Well, we'll put you on the list. You know? <laughs> that list. You know, that list that just nobody knows what their fucking place is. And, like, priority-wise means almost nothing. Sometimes, you know, because he's like, you had a place, but you're getting kicked out. Nah, well, you know, uh, mm, live in your car. Andrea, you can't, you should have your life already figured out. Why are you even coming here? You're so terrible. You would be so bad to even live here with us. My, my mom is like, maybe you can live with here. No, you can't. Like, as I go outside to let them talk to themselves, you know, between each other as a family. And the next thing you know, as Andrea comes over, dad comes over. Dad's like, okay. Andrea, no. And then mom's like, no. And it's like, she didn't want me there to begin with. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, the fact of the matter is, it's like, you had a job, still have the job, you didn't get fired from the job. I mean, effectively you did, because like, no one was really going to be able to like, you know, really put any work and give you any work. But then like, even then, it's like, you still should be getting hours regardless. So that doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. (laughs) That's a thing that you have to do. Like, you have employees, so there's an economic downturn. Okay, fine. Fire them or give them the fucking hours for them to actually live. Because they need them. Yeah, these are people that have apartments that aren't even like mine. That aren't going to just, you know what I mean? Like, this is stupid as fuck. What I heard from someone and it's like, oh, no, no, you, you don't need to be there. You don't need the hours. I'm like, what are you fucking kidding me? What? <sighs> I need the hours as much as anyone else. My place wasn't secured. I didn't have a fucking stable house. You know what I mean? I, if I had gotten fired, I would have been okay. I guess. Maybe. But it's like, that's the only caveat in this. You know? I still need to fucking pay. And it's like, oh, right, right, right. Well, they, they, you know what? Because you have about this amount of money or whatever else. It's like, okay. so they, they, you, you, And then eventually... You have whatever little amount, and then they're like, okay, you don't have to pay. You don't have an income anymore or some shit like that. And that's basically what that turned into. It's like, well, they cut my hours. I told them ahead of time. Like, the COVID happened. They cut my fucking hours hard. I can't pay. I can't pay you. Like, I have no income because I have no hours. So they're like, okay, well, we'll see what happens here in the next month. And, you know, and then it came, you know, the bill time came, you know, for the, for the next month. And they were like, yeah, no, you don't have to pay us because you haven't, you've been going to fucking three or however many, like, you know, meetings every day because you don't have any hours. Nobody's really, you know, and then every so often you're like, oh, you know what, I'm, I have some stuff I need to do. And then you, you do, you know, you hang out with your friends or you go to Sedona or Flagstaff or whatever the fuck it was. You know what I mean? Like, you, that's what that was. And so it's like, okay, I come back and I'm like, all right, so I, I'm going to fucking just be like catatonically fucking depressed. Like, I, don't, I barely get off my bed. I mean, that was just to use the restroom. I don't make really any food. I barely even go outside. I, I don't do really pretty much anything. And I'm like, all right, you know, I'm, I, I finally text my mom or some shit. Meanwhile, at this point, like, I've been telling her, it's like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe I can make it, I can get transferred over to, like, a, a Wendy's and then, like, maybe a, another facility, like, over in Colorado or some shit. There's no real transfer. You really can't do that. Not that far. As, as far as I can tell, you really can't do that. <laughs> I kept trying to look at it. I'm like, maybe I could be homeless. Eh, that doesn't seem like a good idea, though. <laughs> and it wasn't. Because it's like, I got kicked out. And it's like, okay, so my parents weren't going to let me stay there. And it's like, okay, so we'll help you clear your stuff out. All right? And I'm like, it, it, what the fuck? Why the hell did you... I didn't even fight. Like, it's like, okay, it's okay. And then it's like, all of a sudden, you're the world's worst, shittiest person. Even though you got a job, you're paying your rent, you're fucking getting your own groceries, you're cleaning the apartment, you're fucking the one maintaining the car. 
Like, you know, you're doing your own laundry. All the stuff. All the adult stuff. There's no more adulting you could do. You've clearly shown that you can be trusted. You clearly show that, like, everybody, it, roughly, pretty much in his life, except for, like, the people he's not friends with, like him and are friends with him. <sighs> the fucking authority figures in his life, his family and everything else, fucking shitting on him and all this other crap. They have to do all this. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? And I'm the bad guy here? How the fuck am I ever the bad guy? This doesn't make any sense at all. Nothing, and you can't be trusted. I'm like, trusted? I have mental disorders. You apparently do too. What the fuck are you doing? I'm doing better than you are right now. You're not even working. <sighs> she wasn't. My, own, my younger sister was not working at the time. She had so many bad issues. She can stay. I can't. <sighs> I'm like, no, you were worse. I'm like, you need to have your light. I'm like, oh God, I wish I could get those texts back. I mean that. I wish I could get those texts. Like, she went hard on me. And then that's not even what she said out loud. Even my mom was like, okay, wait. <sighs> the one that's gone after him. You know, me. Yeah, me. Gone after me. That hard. You know what I mean? <sighs> way harder in other ways, too. And it's like, some of those things were some of the issues I had to deal with in therapy because I felt like people were saying that about me or felt that way about me. Turns out I was right. <laughs> turns out that's not so much rejection. As far as it turns out, that's kind of like you knowing like the person that, 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 that feels that way in your life. <laughs> that kind of coming to mind of fists itself. You know what I mean? So, like, that's, that's a thing. And I'm like, then they find that the day arrives, you have to leave by like noon or some shit. Where they're scream, yell, all day, why, this is your fault, you're, you're not going to be, you know what I mean? Even Jeremy comes out, he's like, what the hell is all this screaming? That's my roommate. He's like, just give me the fucking $500 and leave. I do not need to take anything about your bullshit about how terrible I am or how bad I am in any way. Get the fuck out. Now, I say that quite a bit louder. But, like, you know, still. And then it's like, all right, I have to throw everything out. I can't take all of this in this tiny little Chevy Cobalt car. It's like 2003 or some shit. It's missing a right fucking mirror. The fucking front hood's bent in, just barely stays in. And then it's like, it's got Bondo where that bend is. Big scar. But it's still point A to point B. You know what I mean? That's what that was. You know? And it's like, oh, you can fit all your stuff in your car. I'm like, it's packed. I actually looked up the legal part of that. And it's like, yeah, no, you still need clear vision to the rear of the vehicle. Or you need to have both mirrors. Otherwise, you're going to get pulled over and ticketed. <laughs> Trunks filled. Rear seat all the way filled as fucking far as you can go with still being able to see. Same thing with the fucking passenger. Like, there's nothing. You know what I mean? Like they, And it's like, all right, so I have to throw out my computer. Some dude's like, are you really throwing this out? I'm like, oh, yeah, can I get that hard disk drive? That one? And I forgot to sign out out of my fucking goddamn account. And I'm like, fuck it. I don't care. My life's terrible anyways. Fuck it. I'm going to just whatever. Everything is terrible. I'm just going to go fucking kill myself. Because that was genuinely my thought and feeling. Yeah, no, I, I was suicidal at that point. I mean, goddamn, who wouldn't be? The fuck? After that many years? Like, th what, two, three years? Two, three, two, it was really just two years. Really around two years. I'm only talking about two years here. And I'm like, I'm homeless. If her mom kicks me out because it's like, she's abusing me. And I'm not fucking, like, treating her like a goddess and worshipping her. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, it's standard narcissist garbage. <laughs> and it's like, all right, all right, all right, you don't know, blah, 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 same, same bullshit, you know. And it's like, I, I have to believe you, I have to believe you, the guy that's like seemingly like this, and he put his life back together and all these other things, and he's talking about how his, he just went hard as a motherfucker where like even nor, normal, neurotypical people would be like, this is a stressful fucking day. Because remember, he was like fucking six hours on the fucking phone trying to get like his snaps renewed. Oh, by the way, he just got like into this SMI place to get away from her. 
But it's like, hey, it's really far away. And then it's like, oh, by the way, you, you, you don't have internet. Oh, by the way, also, you don't have laundry. Oh, by the way, you have the smallest fridge that you can think of. Oh, hey, by the way, also, there's almost no real jobs you could do in the area. But they're like, you're going to thrive, and we're going to take a third of your money, and like all this other shit. And that's not even getting into like the voc rehab I've been going through since like December, January, something like that. Still haven't got my hearing aids. You have barely got, finally, finally started. I, I talked to them about my glasses back then. Like for when I started, I got them last month. I got them last month. It is September. Last month. <laughs> it's like, oh, by the way, you're going through like all this other job coaching bullshit. Wonderful person. It's it's not total bullshit, you know, but it's like kind of kind of know this, unfortunately, just a little bit. You know what I mean? And it's like still kind of need it. I need to like reform. I need to get like a fucking routine schedule. It's nice to talk to someone in any way. You know what I mean? It's just nice, you know, and then it's like, it's still a slog fest for me because it's like, I, I can barely focus still sometimes or like my, my day is just garbage trash and I'm dealing with so many other issues behind the scenes with my mom fucking like, you know, all this, my dad and I, you know, my two sisters and then like, oh, my clinic barely helps me sometimes. <laughs> like I have to call like multiple times every fucking week to get finally an answer of like, oh, well, you know what? We, so the therapist finally we're gonna get you one and then it's like three weeks later to four weeks later it's like oh wait now we got you one and she'll call you and then they call me finally <laughs> you know what I mean but it's like oh by the way throughout all that it's like we're gonna leave you just in the lurch there was this thing like the senior citizen center that you're, we gave you the number for to like see if you can have them drive you for whatever fee they're gonna pay you know to like show low they do it once a fucking month they do it really early and or like in the afternoon something like that and then they pretty much send you right back within a certain time frame otherwise you're not getting back and it's fifteen dollars and it is definitely not on the day that i was talking about at all and it, oh by the way it's not really meant for for you <laughs> so that was after i called the 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 access line that I have to try and get a, a a ride, and it's like no 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 because it's going to this hotel for some damn reason SSI put this meeting in a hotel, no clue but I'm not the only one that that's there when I show up and they have a little placard and a and a whole thing that fucking you know says yeah hey, no this is the doctor, you know, <laughs> yeah no and I'm like what the fuck why did they put it here and I, I know it turns out that's not the only time, you know. That's, I'm not the only, it, he's done this before. I talked to him, he's done it before. He's, he's been there before. It's not abnormal for this fucking hotel, apparently, to host the stupid mental health and physical health evals for SSI people. I don't know why the hell they're doing that, but yes, they are. <laughs> but it means I can't get my access to give me a fucking ride through my insurance to this place. I call... And then they were like, I'm going to reroute you to my supervisor. Supervisor's like, I'm going to reroute you to my fucking manager supervisor. And then I'm like, okay, so I'm going to look into this. Okay. Uh, no, we can't do it. Well, you know, maybe this and I'll keep looking into it. I'm going to call these people. I'll, I'll call you later. Doesn't call me. Ever back. Again. Okay, I'm going to call the, the, the helpline on this on this, this sheet that they gave me. That suddenly, like, I have these fucking appointments that are over an hour away to get to with a car. Over an hour away. We're talking that. Yeah, we're, we're genuinely, like, it can be that way if you got the traffic. You know what I mean? Like, it can be up to 50. It was solid 50 minutes no matter what. So anyways, it's like, all right, all right, all right. All right I'm going to call this. I leave, like, five messages. You know, I, I leave, like, three, one, you know, throughout the day. And then another two over, like, the next few days. And then, like... A few few days later, someone in California calls me. Not California. Fuck you, you stupid asshole Republican. You worthless bitch. California. <laughs> so, I'm like trying to get that done. And it's like, yeah, no, so they'll give me a call back. I'll let them know. You know, it could be like week, two weeks, maybe three weeks. I'm like, I have this next 
fucking week. Next, literally next week. I have this next week. And then my first appointment is next week on a Friday. Uh, you know, like I kind of I can't wait that long. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I'll see what they what they'll say. Like, and I'm like, why is it that I'm getting someone from California? And it's like, oh, because you know they piece things out to other states to do. You know, you know, so that's that's what that is. Because it's federal. It's not state. It's federal. So it's like every DES, every SSI, every SSAA, or SSA is all part of that shit. You know what I mean? So like, like that's that's what that was. And so it's like, all right. And then, and I'm like, okay, I'm fucking. I don't know where the fuck to do what the fuck to do. What the fuck to 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 fuck. I'm freaking, rightfully slow. I'm like, I, I even emailed my fucking uh, voc rehab case manager. I'm like, hey, you know, I, I, I have this. And like, they give me a ride share, so I call them. Like, I don't know why they're not calling them, because they're the ones that have to pay, you know, with a check to get there. But she's hard of hearing. She's deaf. She can't do it. And I'm like, that seems kind of rough for, like, being able to help me. <laughs> Considering I'm hard of hearing and I have a hard time, social anxiety, hard of hearing, all these other things, making calls. In general. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, I call them. I'm fucking, I, I just bolt for it. I'm like, fuck this, fuck you. I need to do this. Fuck you. Fuck you feelings. Fuck you, fuck you. I'm, I'm doing this. I call them. Like, it's $100 there and $100 back. They're the only ride share, by the way, in the whole fucking area. No Uber, no Lyft. They don't exist here. There are no other ones. We called someone else to see if they'd get me all the way over to Phoenix for, like, my hearing aid appointment. Yeah, they didn't really fucking... They were like, no, we're not doing that. No, we primarily go over to New Mexico. That's it. And then they, they're not a thing no more. And there's... So, ended up... Uh, you know, my, my job counselor, all this other stuff, uh, gives me another one later on. as Because we were talking about it. And then, like, I feel like it was sketchy. Like, I look at the, 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 you know, the website, and it's like, it doesn't look like this is a real website, kind of. It kind of looks like it's real, but it's like, kind of, you know, barely. And it's like, I call the number. Yeah, no, this is not, this is not a person, you know what I mean? Like, this is not that number. That What are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Click, you know what I mean? This is before I decided to call the other rideshare service, you know what I mean? And like get that done. Oh, by the way, they're like, oh, hey, so we'll we'll be willing to send you the four hundred dollars, because I have two appointments, so there and back, there and back, four hundred dollars. And it's like, oh no, no no, what arrives, after my appointment, but about a week and a half later. The check. For two hundred dollars, not four hundred. For two for two hundred dollars, yeah, that's right. For two hundos, it'd be great for my next appointment. <laughs> How'd I do it? I was like, all right, I'm gonna fucking go over, text my mom. Hey, you know, you think Norma, our neighbor, will be willing? By the way, you know, we're all well aware, and and my mom, I, and even my father, like she's a little racist. By a little, I mean she's pretty racist sometimes, depending on. And she has problem with like comparisons, empathies, stuff like that. And it comes out uh, along the, the ride because oh yeah, no, she does give me a ride. I'm not comfortable. She she fucking drinks tequila. She's gonna be on like her her hydrocodone, you know, her Percocet or whatever. She's she's gonna not drive you. Oh, you know what? It's like oh, I'm willing to give you the money. You're we're willing to go down there. I'm like, I don't want you anywhere near me every time you come around. The last time you were here, you know what happened? You literally tried to ditch me in a Walmart. Everywhere you could go to just ditch me because I was like fucking fed up with like having to tell you and wanted the boundary of privacy, which I'm I'm I'm, I'm a fucking grown man. I have that right to privacy for my fucking treatment. I tell her a little bit about my medicine and everything. It's not really sort of lining up, and some of it's not so great. We changed my medicine and all the stuff. It's like, you need to be on more meds. They don't know how bad you are. All this stuff. <sighs> They're not doing enough. They're not doing enough, John Tyler. It's just because I'm out of compassion doing this for you. <sighs> yeah, sure. And then proceeds to basically just ram home. Lots of shit during that time she was here. My dad would never know. My mom would say whatever indifferent to it. You know what I mean? And it's like, 
all right, and then we had to go, like, through this whole fucking, we're lost out in the middle of nowhere while she's kind of, like, going after me, you know, about, like, this, this fucking, uh, you know, this clinic not doing enough for me, you know what I mean, and I'm like, there's literally nothing that, that, and I want their number, I want to talk to them, you know what, John Tyler, I'm like, I interrupt, and I'm like, no, 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 I, I know where that leads to, I know you're going to try and say, like, if you don't let me do this, you're going to kick me out, she almost gets those words out, almost, it's like, you know, I don't want you to get in, you know, like, not get in, but like, live in the house, you know, live in the house, <laughs> like, it's like, okay, yeah, no, I know where that, I'm gonna fucking, you know, talk loudly, I'm gonna fucking, it breaks me down again, like, I'm screaming again, but not really screaming, you know, I'm talking loudly, I'm, I'm like, trying to fuck it, I'm bringing up and defending myself and my own shit, and it's like, oh my god, all of a sudden, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not gonna fucking argue anymore, I am not talking about this with you, I am not doing anything, I do not say a word for the remainder of it, I'm not the bad guy, I'm not the this, you know what, I didn't, and she just keeps doing that over and over and over and over again, silent treatment, oh, I don't want you to talk, I don't, I kind of want to go home, but it's like, I don't, I'm on a ride with the truck, on the way from the dumpster fucking on, you know, like fucking going to like wherever the fuck we're going. Cause it's like, I'll get you pizza wherever the fuck. And I'm like, man, she lured me in. Like I knew, I, I mean, you know, I felt bad fucking like doing this whole thing. Cause like she, before this, she's like overwhelmingly just shit. Like all of that, that I just talked about and like just wanted to go off on anything I did while we were cleaning this garage. Anything didn't matter. Any reason didn't matter. I moved something. No, my God, that's the worst. Why would you die? You're just trying to annoy me. <sighs> Stuff like this. I don't want to trigger too many people, but it's like, that's what that is. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm just smiling and kind of laughing to myself because I'm like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? It's the same fucking thing I had to deal with even Honestly, it was worse then, but it's like, this is still really bad, and it's like, I'm this close to getting kicked out, because I don't have my quarter to treatment anymore. Yeah, no, no, no. Whole thing, I got on quarter to treatment. That's a whole other thing later. But I don't have it anymore. Everything's good. Therapist, case manager, psychiatrist, everything. Hey, you know what? You seem to be doing well. You know what I mean? You, you know, don't have, like, all the stuff that they were putting me on in this other place. Hey, you seem to be doing well now. And your mom's not around. Wow. You know what I mean? What do you know? You're not around like this fucking like mission goddamn uh, homeless shelter. Bed bug infested place. That you have to be indoctrinatedly Bible study fucking uh, goddamn church. All these chores, which it's like, every day it doesn't know, that, but okay, sure, whatever, <sighs> you know, you're using, like, a shit ton of, oh, we're gonna get all these donations, we're gonna kick out your gay friend, because it's like, he's gay, and I can't believe that, like, this is verbatim that he tells me, like, it, you, I would have thought you appreciated the sin, that, and you were gonna renounce your sin and no longer be gay, is the director of the fucking place, they're, they're like paying them nothing, to really technically, but there's something kind of, because it's like they're working for the shelter, but it's a mission, and it's like they get free labor kind of shit, we'll give you room and board or whatever, or we'll get you like all this, you know what I mean, but it's like, really realistically, there's like almost none of that, and then like you have an autistic friend that comes in, you know, we eventually, you know, talk and all this other stuff, you know, that's how we become friends, same thing with the gay guy, you know what I mean? And, um, it's like, okay, cool, yeah, no, oh, you can't touch the jacket, you can't do that, and, 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 that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, you know what I mean? And next thing you know, it's like, yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of here, fuck you, why would I stay here, you know what I mean? Like, fuck off, like, you're being, and, and you don't do that with any of the other ones that are there? And there's a guy named Brad there, again, oh, shocker, Brad, but it's like, you know, that's just coincidence, fucking, like, all this other shit going on with him, and he doesn't do any chores, he just does that until, like, he got caught, like, with a, with a random, you know, drug test, and it's like, he's got marijuana or some shit in his system, and he's kicked out, middle dead of winter, gets to, like, probably the negatives, maybe zero, you know, at night, he's got, like, nothing, I'm like, what the fuck is that? But okay, whatever, you know? But, like, the gay friend is, like, he's trying to be, like, one of those little mission helper people. And he's doing the same thing as someone else that decided to do that. 
he's getting called out as you're doing too much you're doing uh, this is wrong and that's bad and all these other things and then he's actually conservative he's a conservative gay republican he is or libertarian i'm sorry he said libertarian and then it's like you know and it's it's like right right well i maybe i can stop being gay like maybe i could stop being gay maybe i could do it Talk about gaslight. He has a similar, similar family life with 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 him, his own damn self as mine. We kind of bond over that, <sighs> you know. And then it's like, the, then he's going through this, and and like I'm telling him some of my shit because I'm like I'm willing to fucking just say whatever the fuck at this point. I'm like, fuck it. I've been homeless like all the way down to being in, in a tent before, and, and, and you know, like I'm just like so. You know what? Maybe some of these things are okay. You know, if you do it right, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking about it wrong, you know, eh, you know then it's like also, maybe I could be God. You ever think about, or maybe it's like aliens, you know, that they super ultra, you know, all these things, you wouldn't know. There could be a fucking random stupid ass thing going on in your universe where someone seems to be the one that interacts with something or just statistically seems to just fucking keep being the one that says something and does that or whatever and then like the thing pops up in their life and it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on you could just be that guy you could just be that motherfucker like you always flip a coin as tails no matter what it's always gonna land tails that's like a thing it's a quantum thing maybe you know about it but it's like that's a thing that is a thing you know multiple universes you can do that you know you don't know and then I start bringing up the fact that like that just seems a little weird. You know, this guy could have easily, you know, like kind of con people, you know, by switching up. He didn't look the same at all. He's still Jesus. I'm like what? What? And then it's like, wow, there's all these sins, and they were killing animals to remove sins and everything. And it's like all of a sudden, like all of a sudden, you don't need to do that. It's all this, all the all the sins are gone. They're all done. But it's like, oh, I go to church, and you're bad, and you're this, and you're that. But it's like all the sins are are done. But, like, you're not. You're a sinner. You're the worst. I'm like, what is this? And you're treating people totally wrong. Like, just because they're, like, you know, having some difficulties or they're, they're the wrong fucking sexual orientation. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, what the fuck is this? And they no, we can't get rid of the bed bugs. We got this donation thing. We got, like fucking what did he say like over close to like 30 or seven thousand dollars and then the, the like the 2019 taxes was like over a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars or some shit like what they brought in it's non-profit and so it's like that gets split up between everything and then like whatever they need for like the the the, the you know the, the the shelter and the mission and whatnot but it's like i know oh by the way you have to pay like 30% again of whatever you make or like only up to like 200 and something dollars. We take like half of your snaps. We we just randomly go to like other food, you know, shelter places and we'll bring those that food here instead of like making our own until dinner. We kind of have breakfast. It's mostly cereal and you get coffee. You have to do lots of chores. You suddenly have to be a landscaper every Saturday. Yeah, because that's mandatory. Oh, by the way, the women, yeah, women don't have to do the chores, really. That's an actual thing. They don't talk. They're not allowed to talk to the men. Can't be seen outside, anywhere near the men, because then they're, they're kicked out along with the men. You are required to go to this, this stuff to really get the points necessary to be able to do it. Eventually, you make way more than you then you can, like, say, like, you know, that you need to do that, but, like, it, it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, and, oh, by the way, we're closing the mission every Sunday, you don't have to go to church, but there isn't anything for, like, a mile down the road, except for, like, a Circle K and a Burger King, you don't really probably have money, because, like, you're homeless, and odd jobs maybe come up, and maybe you have, like, some military benefits, or, SSI, perhaps, which they're going to take, you know, a chunk of, and, like, that's what you get, it's like, oh, but you need to be applying, there's, like, basically, almost, they're, like, there's jobs everywhere, everybody's hiring, there's, like, almost no one really hiring that much, 
Especially if you have a record. You know what I mean? Like, you have a record that's like, nah. Nah. I didn't. I don't have a record. So I apply. I, I go through I'm the same Indeed process beyond belief. I mean that. Like, I keep applying, 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 applying. I finally get to a UPS place. It just hired me on the fucking website. Yeah, he'll go. Go over there. Yeah, they didn't even know I was going to be showing up. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, I was there for like two days. I was there for like two days. Fucking terribly hard job. Fast-paced. Holy shit, you got to do it as well as you can and fast. And I mean, well as you can as in well. You know what I mean? And uh, it's heavy work. I got the second, or depending on the day, basically a very filled truck. We're talking like the there's two of them. Mostly filled. It was me and the woman that was trying to train me and help me to, to just fucking do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all that was. There was no video, no nothing. They just put me into it. That was the first day. I walked over there early in the morning. I told everybody I got a job, all this stuff. Uh, you know what I mean? And it's like, great, 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 great. Then I get a call, second day, or first day, and they're like, hey, so do you want to go to Safeway? We can pay you this much. We're offering this amount of hours. And I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to go over there. I'm like, maybe I could swing it. Maybe maybe I can, because it's graveyard. But it's like, oh, no, 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 because it, 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 it ends around the same time you'd have to go to the UPS job, like a minute maybe separation or some shit like that. So I'm like, UPS is done. They were paying me more, but I had a lot, a lot less hours and there's fewer fewer days this one's graveyard shift it's almost 50 hours it's 39.95 shocker right you know good old corporate america i got the job i interviewed that day got the job they gave it to me i have a weird lucky streak about that <laughs> i do i do i do and, and you know because it's like i'll apply for fucking ever it took me like two weeks to get to that point Two weeks to a month or some shit, like and then that and I was building up for like a month because it's like I was still just trying to get my shit together, and I was doing odd jobs from time to time for other people, you know that kind of thing, and it's like okay so you know that's kind of what that was, and then like I I was still dealing with my fucking court date because I had a court date, I got charged with something. You know, it, th that was where I was like I I assaultively touched, which sounds a lot worse than it was, you know. It's a misdemeanor, like, first, second degree misdemeanor or some shit. And it was like, I was in a PTSD fucking fugue, whatever the hell you want to call it. You know what I mean? I was like, I was genuinely in a psychosis. And, you know, I, I don't know what the fuck was going on. What the hell my thinking was. I thought the world was coming to an end. My mother had basically made me, made me go down so far that, like, I literally thought the world was ending and there was no way out. And then, oh, by the way... On top of that, oh, I'm going to, like, because, like, I can't handle this anymore. And, like, I've been drinking already up to that point just to get through days. You know, just to, just to get through a day sometimes. I was growing cannabis. It was going well, actually. That cannabis, that cannabis plant kept my ass alive. I was that suicidal. That cannabis plant kept me alive. I started that project after I rolled the vehicle. And rolled the vehicle, that was a suicide attempt. That was a suicide attempt. My mom asked, was that a suicide attempt? I'm not telling you that. Fuck you. You'd use that against me. <sighs> Fuck you. I'm never going to tell you that. I barely even told my fucking therapist. I still haven't really. I still haven't told them so far. I should. It's been like two years now, but it's like I should tell them that, but or year, two years, something like that. But it's like I'm not going to tell them. Because yeah, that puts you into fucking like the whole like uh, the mental health jail that you end up at. Cause it's like it's like jail. You go to, you go to your bed. You share it with a roommate, and then they open up the doors. You're allowed to go do other things. You kind of don't. You you don't have like the thing cell doors close, so you kind of get to wander around. You have the one common area and a TV, and that is it. Also, the people there don't really like you, but then actually a lot of them stood up for me, like me. Social worker, some of the people that were in front, because like you're getting bulldozed, like you voluntarily came here. Your your lawyers going to bat for you, like you seem fine. Your social worker going to bat for you, you seem fine. You don't need to be on on meds, like you seem talking to yourself, sure, a little animated from time to time, sure, whatever. Nothing that needs to be forcefully medicated. 
you know? The fu- I'm, I'm talking to the fucking psychiatrist, and, like, she fucking quits. Because, like, she realizes, like, this is a fucking joke. Not even kidding. There were several people that just quit because of how shitty they were getting treated. I kind of fucking just couldn't stop myself from fucking feeling... Like, you know, like, cause I know about a lot of that stuff. I know that they are going through a shit ton of work, effort, and energy all the time. They're overworked, underpaid, underappreciated, all this shit. And then on top of that, it's like they get paid next to peanuts to the person that sees someone for maybe five, 10 minutes, maybe 15 max. They make a determination and then they move on through all of them. They you get pushed meds and then like, they get like thousands in a day. You know what I mean? Like, that's a genuine thing that's going on there. Oh, by the way, hey, I know this study about, like, oxytocin apparently being able to help with psychosis-like symptoms and, like, reduction of depression and all these other things. No, I've looked it up and never, there was never a thing. I search up oxytocin, reuptake inhibitor, you know, you know, and I'm like, it's right there. There's one with multiple fucking studies. Multiple studies. And then you know what it is? The little blue pill, the Viagra, turns out it expresses... Oxytocin. Expresses oxytocin. Is it perfect? As a fucking what medicine is perfect? Fuck off. <laughs> but it's like he straight up lied. He's like, oh, you know, I'm joking. You know, may you know, aliens, whatever, whatever. You're not joking. You're not. No, fuck you. I'm not gonna sign the thing that says that you you volunteer to be here. There's a reason why the fucking nurses came onto my side, even though I was a kind of a jerk. And, like, one of my hearing is pretty much broke. And then, like, nobody really, they were like, nope. <laughs> they all just went like, nope, nope, not dealing with that. One of the, the other social worker was like, nah, I'm going to call your mom when you know how triggering that is. And then you told me to not do that. You know, with me around. And you freaked out and all of a sudden, like, you now need medicine. What the fuck is... That's a thing that happened. And then, like, the other caseworker or whatever, it's like, oh, you know, you know, you touched yourself, you did all this stuff on the phone, right? And I'm like, I don't remember that, honestly. You could be lying for all I know. People would fucking believe you. You know? There's no evidence that I can tell about it happening. You know? But, like, where does that leave me? I'm like, I kind of remember going up to you weirdly but then it's like the very next day the car wash incident happened you didn't fucking like try and like talk to me or anything like that and no we just talked normally everything else after that day after that night whatever what the fuck i definitely remember that part that was a thing yeah and it's like fuck you Fuck you. Fuck you. you clearly knew something that you were and i was going through and you definitely were a part of you know, like, this, this, that's the level of care my mother has about me. You know what I mean? Like, that's a thing. But it's like, okay, so what is assaultively touching? I went over to, like, a, a car wash. I was walking down the street shirtless. You know, fucking looking all out of sorts, I'm sure. I'm in psychosis. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck do you want from me? You know? And so I go over to this. I'm actually passing the car wash. I'm going over to the car wash. I kind of barely remember this now. I go over to it, and I'm like, oh, uh, we need to go or something. I don't remember what the fuck I said. I don't, I don't know if I even said anything, honestly. I really don't. But, like, I, like, pawed at, like, apparently there was a teenage girl. I didn't even see faces. I don't even know what the fuck. I was like, we gotta go. <sighs> it meant nothing like that. But, like, you know what? My mom, oh, he's, and then, like, my, my neighbor Thomas's wife. Oh, he's been, he was trying to touch girls or something. And I'm like, no, none of that happened. He, dad pushes me away because they, they slink off. Like, you know, like, holy shit, I don't want to be around you. I distinctly remember lo- them looking co- really concerned and, and walking away. And, and the dad, like, shouting and pushing me. And I kind of, like, you know, defended a little bit. I kind of pushed a little bit back, you know, and I fucking walked away. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah okay. Because I, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I think the world's coming to an end. I'm going to a special place where the fucking goddamn asteroid doesn't hit us. You know? (sighs) That's what I think. And then there's something to do with the post office where there's something waiting for me there or some shit. No clue. 
Literally, and somehow when I was walking like that, I was like saving the universe because like it was, or not in universe, it was something to do with like, like this reduction of energy bullshit that had occurred due to like these, you know, outside of our time dimensional individual, because you know, if you don't know what this is, we happen to live in the third dimension and we go and pass through the fourth dimension, which is over time, time. Right now, and there's a there's the whole like multiple parallel worlds. It's all around us all the time, all the shit. And then there's like time. You can exist outside of that if you could create your body to be a little bit like, just a little bit, like a, a universe that sustains itself in its own version of time. Outside of it, you just have to be able to accelerate outside of the dimension, your third dimension, your universe that happens to be connected in all these other ways, which you just got to accelerate out of that, and then you're able to exist outside of our universe, looking at us in all of our time going on, like a fifth dimensional time being. And there is some stuff going on, because I had stories going on, with in revolving around that. And they had apparently fucked up and started, like, siphoning some certain amount of energy in our fucking universe or some other connected universe. Something like that was going on. And, like, I was, like, trying to, you know, walk basically, like, be the essentialness of it was effectively, like, a treadmill and some, universe like, connected dimensional treadmills type of thing, you know? And, like, if it starts up a little bit of energy and they're able to build from there and make more because, like, that's how close they were to death. And, like, of course, that it's somehow also connected to these other things. Delusions of grandeur. I'm not God. I'm not anything. But it's, like, that's what they were. That was what was going on in my head. And I was, they were, like, I had to do it, you know, to fucking make that occur for them to live. <laughs> you know? Like, that's what that was. It was like, oh, I have to walk this to fucking give them energy. Anyways, I'm walking away from the fucking uh, car wash. I don't know what the hell I'm doing anymore. I'm walking off to wherever this special part is. I don't know anyone ever called anyone. Why the fuck would I? I'm hard of hearing. I don't have my hearing aids on. I don't even really notice what's around me. They're like, whoop, whoop. There's this guy grabbing me. There's this black fucking blob thing that seems like he's got like shit that's coming at me with guns and stuff and I'm like ah <sighs> I need to run holy shit <sighs> and I'm like what the fuck is that what is going on ah <sighs> and it's like and then I started walking because I, th I felt like that was probably just some random fucking hallucination I'm hallucinating or some shit I don't know what the fuck's going on you know, and it's like, whoop, 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 and it's like, what the fuck, I, if it's a hallucination, it sounds pretty good, all right, I'm gonna put my hands, I'm gonna go down on the ground, <sighs> I don't know what the fuck's going on, I'm on the ground, he's shouting at me to do something, I'm like, my ears are ringing, I can't hear shit, dude, like, what are you saying, and he's like, I'm just letting, I, I go limp, I'm like, do whatever the fuck, you know, like, you're the one in control here, he puts my hand behind my back, and shocks me, but like, I only later, found out that he shocked me while I was already on the ground and already cuffed or pretty close. <sighs> Meanwhile, I'm talking about all this crazy shit going on, thinking it's all real and they're all, they're totally aware of it and all this other shit. They try and send me to the hospital because they think I'm probably on drugs or some shit, which I mean, I kind of am, you know, I didn't have any alcohol that day, but I did have like, um, some cannabis. That was it. <laughs> it's just psychosis with trauma and ADHD and all the rest of that shit with PTSD and apparently I now got diagnosed with bipolar and borderline personality disorder while I was in there oh I'm schizoaffective still even though like I don't present with symptoms unless there's a large amount of trauma occurring and the drug use on top of it <laughs> which it's like Cannabis and alcohol every time. There's no stimulants ever. That's never occurred. If anything, stimulants would have helped. Because I have severe ADHD. That's a thing, you know. So anyways, like, you were combative and terrible. You were a danger to others. And I'm like, I want to voluntarily go to the place. Yes, 
I'm telling you, they're like trying to break my arms is what it feels like. So I'm like, you know, I just want to put my arms by the gurney sides and have you cuff me there. That's I tell them that lucidly. <laughs> they're like, he was flailing about and all this stuff in the hospital. I'm like, no, I wasn't. Like you were literally holding my arm all the way back past here and bending it downwards. Like really rough. I'm like, you're trying to break my fucking arm. I'm just trying to put him right here, dude. Fuck off. And then I do that, and they're like, okay, well, we can't get him on that. <laughs> Try to freak him out. <laughs> and so it's like, well, no, no, no. And then they got my eye color wrong, my height color wrong, my weight wrong. Everything seemed to be wrong when it came down to what they wrote on the report of what my, my everything was. Even though I told them exactly what I was. I even told them my phone... They got my mom's phone number just right. They got the fucking billing address just right. They got all of it just right. <laughs> Everything like that. Just right. But the moment it was like, you're voluntarily going? No. <laughs> moment it was like, oh, hey, you know, like, I'm, I'm definitely aware of my situation now. You know? No. <laughs> Anyways, they sent me over to a change point. That's where I ended up at. Fifth hospital stay now. I have to go into this other room because it's like, oh, what's going on? You're combative and everything else. Never combated. <laughs> no. Didn't even throw punches or anything. There was like one push you could maybe say. <laughs> there was some like grabbing or pawing or like whatever. But like you wouldn't be able to. But trumped up charges are what they are. You know, and they tried to get me on resisting arrest. They were like, okay, what the fuck? This is what my, my second lawyer, because my first one was like, I don't, you know, like, we, we wouldn't work well together, and I was also of the opinion of the same, you know, and it's like, it's, you know, like, he didn't really want to go and, and do that amount of work. I mean, he's a public defender, so what do you want, you know, because I'm going through SMI court, a court, mental health court, you know, that's what that is. Still real court, still real. But I'm going through that to stop myself from being on court order treatment because I don't want to be forcibly medicated because I know they're going to pump me full of antipsychotics and all this other shit that doesn't do anything. Even though I've been on it and I've had the history with Southwest Behavioral Health all those many years and with my other fucking like Aetna or whatever the hell my mom had, you know, for like Matthew Marcus and all of his other shit, which is all my other shit. Because it's like, I imagine someone would be saying all his other shit. <laughs> you know? And it's like, okay, so it's all there. You've done practically everything under the sun with your fucking cheese. You know, it turns out a lot of the, the nurses kind of felt similarly to like how they're being mistreated. Because I'm fucking saying, I'm kind of ranting, you know, from time to time. You know, because it's like, what the fuck is this? I'm getting mistreated beyond it. And then eventually they realized... Why the fuck is he not, you know, my lawyer, my lawyer's like, yeah, no, you volunteer, you seem smart, you seem like you're well, you know, like, what, what is this? And it's like, I'm going to try and get you to, to, to drop the fucking resisting arrest charge. I mean, you know, because it's like, he's not, he just wasn't aware of anything, you know, at all, really. <sighs> you know, like, you're kind of aware, but you're not really, that kind of shit. And it's like, I totally, like, the moment I was like, okay, this might be real, Fucking stopped and dropped. <laughs> That's all that took. You know? And he still tased me on the ground. There's probably some... Because I was getting filmed at that point. There were multiple people around me. They, and they filmed me. They filmed that shit. <laughs> I saw their fucking uh, cam... You know, their, their phones fucking recording. If it wasn't for that, I probably would have had a, a beating of my life. Because, <laughs> like, the cops are fucking shitty here. They really aren't very nice. Turns out... Hamlin, my lawyer, who is the mayor of our town that I'm in, eager, was like actually kind of aware and was a big health advocate of that situation. And then it's like, hey, you know, so they, they dropped the resisting arrest. Doesn't it's not charged. I'm not trying to charge you with that. You know? And then you still got these other charges and it's like, right, right, right. So I went to SMI court, they already we did the thing, they they put me on court order treatment. But like even the prosecution, the one that's trying to get me on court order treatment is like uh, telling my lawyer apparently, Yeah, I don't believe he he needs it. <laughs> but 
The doctor doesn't say that. And so the doctor gets his way. <laughs> and that's what that is. And you can ask anyone in that field, you'll know. <laughs> You'll know damn well that that's the case. Yeah. Because even he was like, oh, you've been in a step down? Yeah, that's just a money-making scheme. Yeah. Thanks, Hamlin. He's <laughs> like, I'm so glad someone actually knows. Like, honestly. Yeah. No, because it's, it's total bullshit. They, like, if you're that fucking bad, like, you should probably be in an institution, but, like, you know, because, like, you're not really doing anything except going to one single common area for bullshit fucking, like, groups that don't actually mean much, unfortunately, because the people doing them aren't actually trained for that kind of stuff, you know? And on top of that, they need a little bit more individual help, which helps a lot more. But it's like, we're pounding you full of fucking medication. Anyways, I uh, ended up meeting a friend named TJ. He's like, you're fucking funny as fuck, because I ended up doing a couple comedy routines in there. And like, he laughed his ass off. He said, I was able to get him to laugh while he was in one of his darkest points in time. He, he, he was there when I was there. He left and he came back and I was still there. Because of how long court was taking. They were like, you can't appeal this. Not really with us. And oh, by the way, your, your other attorney for the appeal is like, uh, I don't really want to do this work. You're fucking, you're being so sensitive. And it's like, I, I'm, I don't need to do all that, you know. <sighs> And if you can't get, like, the doctor to say it wasn't, you know, and then it's like, I get another doctor, she says this, you know, you seem fine, you don't mean, you know, I can maybe go over to Vegas. I'm like, God, I kind of couldn't get that through, though, because corridor treatment kept me here, away from my family, because we all know that situation now. But it's like, okay, wait, wait. So I get through this. I'm going through, I'm going through, you know, the change point, you know, my fifth hospital stay. Everybody that's there that I end up actually kind of, like, you know you know, uh, becoming friends with, pretty much, yeah, no, I was a nice guy, most people liked me in there, even, like, the nurses, it was just the fucking psychiatrist who seemed to have a stick up his ass, because, like, oh, I was saying shit that others felt, but, oh, by the way, was actually intelligent, and did have merit and value, not just something that's out the wall, delusions of grandeur, and you're not smart, as you think you are. You know what I mean? I'm like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck? You know? This is bullshit. So it's like, okay, whatever. I eventually just start doing my... I, I end up injuring my foot because I'm kind of like doing, you know, shadow boxing. And I stomp the floor. Next thing you know, it's like ballooned up. I'm, I'm, able, I'm not able to walk. He's like, here's some ibuprofen maybe, you know? And I'm like, that's cool. Can I get something to stay off my foot? Eh, we got some crutches, maybe. You know what I mean? And then that happened a third, like a second and third time. Because it's like, I've been there so long. And it's a hard floor. They don't really, they give you like some, some shoes, you know, like some flip-flops or whatever. But they're not really the best. And like, you know, all I was doing was walking around on hard, hard flooring. And that was enough to aggravate it, re-aggravate it. And same thing with like doing some squats in my damn room, re-aggravated it. And he, the, the, the second and third time, he basically didn't want to give me anything. He didn't want to give me crutches. I'm like, everybody's literally complaining about this doctor. They all know that this stuff hurts. Like, it, they're all literally watching this ginormous fucking foot, clearly inflamed, just being untreated. I had some guy that was like, I'm going to fucking try and do this shit. I'm gonna, you know, I'm like, yeah, I know you're not, but whatever. Thanks for the, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But it's like, you know, and, and then like, that's pretty much the end of it. That was pretty much the end of it. Like, after that point, it was like, there was, quarter treatment had happened. They were trying to find me a place to live, to go to. They were like, you can go to another place, maybe a step-down facility down south. You know, you can go to another fucking mental health hospital in Phoenix. We'll take you. Or you can go to this, this, you've never been there, you don't know, what it's, some, some, some people say it's okay, generally not that good though, you know, that kind of thing. Mission, that's like a homeless shelter, otherwise you gotta go to the Red Army and you work basically for peanuts, and they kind of maybe give you a place to stay, but it's really not that great, and then the other one's the same. That's the options, you get those options, there were no other options. Oh, by the way, you kind of need to deal with your court. So you can't go to another mental health hospital. 
You can't. As far as you were aware, aware though, and also your social workers were told to court was taken care of. They weren't going to be able to charge you anymore because you had already gone to court for this very thing. So that's a double jeopardy. I get, you know, like, no, 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 you need to go to summons, you need to do all this other shit. I'm like, I'm all the way over in Holbrook. At a mission, like, I can't, I have no way to get there. <laughs> Guess who I have to call? The abusive mother. I get there. I, you know, I get my, I, before that, I'm freaking, I'm doing all the work I can with, with the Hamblin, you know, my lawyer, and, you know, putting all this stuff together to show that, like, I already went to court, and they already, like, fucking decided this, and, and then, like, they can't charge me, and, you know, all this other stuff, basically, and it's like, oh, yeah, no, we're gonna drop the charges with prejudice, complete your court order treatment, and it's like, you couldn't charge me, though, I know you can't, <laughs> But I'm a tough judge. You don't have PTSD. What years did you serve? What tours were you serving? <sighs> That's not how that works, but sure, okay. Tough on crime bullshit. That doesn't make sense and it doesn't work. <sighs> but that's what that is. Alright, we're doing that now. And I'm like, yay! My mom's like fake crying, I can see it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's really great, yay. Yeah. Why the fuck did I have to deal with this? I don't even want to be around you. <laughs> I'm fucking in disassociation mode, trying to like not go off into like, you know, extreme panic and shit. Meanwhile, they get me back, they drug test me, nothing's there. Well, you know. I have a pizza with me, because we went to go get pizza. Yay, the pizza was okay. You know, I hadn't had pizza in for fucking ever. Food quality, at, at that point, started doing, like, the weird, like, I'm gonna kind of try, and then it started, like, not trying. And then it kind of happened for a little longer, and then I'm gonna try it. And then it's, it's kind of what that was. And then, of course, the, the gay guy was having, like, his own issues and, and needed to vent. And then, like, fucking the, the autistic guy it's needing, you know, his own damn self to vent. But then, like, he was also dealing with his own issues. But also, he was becoming harassing. This is something that I learned later. Because, like, the way he described it is like, well, that's, you really shouldn't call the front office just to be, like, you know, kind of, kind of mean or like, you know, whatever to the, to the, which to be fair though, like the, while she was named Karen, you know, the front office worker, she's actually not a good person. Like, it's not like the opposite. She's not a Karen, Karen though. Like, and, and show me your manager shit, but like kind of almost. Yeah. And, and like, I wasn't the only one that knew <laughs> turned out. You know, I wasn't the only one. She'd been doing that. I got told by other people that she'd been doing, like, that kind of stuff. You know, and, um, you, you know, like, and, and, like, that's just kind of not even getting into director and the board of, or, you know, or whatever. You know, they, they have, like, this donated fucking Nissan truck that they use at their house. But they then they after like John started trying to investigate that and took a picture, they're like all of a sudden it starts showing up at the mission every time. When I can I can guarantee you all of them would say yeah it never was there at the mission until that point, because there was like you know a newspaper actually investigating the you know what I mean and he was talking to a reporter, and he was going off like we're you should try and you you know uh you know secretly record Karen. In in the office, while you talk to her together as the you know the gay guy and, and I was like what the fuck is no, no, <laughs> not I can't do that. What what are you going on about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like what what is that? I I can't do that. You that's okay. No. <laughs> We had, we had some decent conversations, you know, that, that was kind of a thing, you know, but then, you know, kind of went out there, he, he's very different than I am, I'm not, I believe in COVID, I definitely do, he's also anti-vax, I, I'm not in any way, 
I, you know, I, I, like I, I let them, you know, talk, and like I didn't judge as much as you would think, you know, and it's like I tried to be a friend, you know, whatever, you know, and then we had some similar views, and then his was a little, quite, a bit, maybe more extreme than mine, truthfully, than others, and then I was more extreme than him quite a bit on other things, you know, and then um, that's a thing, you know, that I had to deal with, uh, and then. You know, I'm just dealing with, like, my fucking stress by journaling out in the middle of the fucking, you know, next to the place, you know, out behind the chicken coop and shit, you know, and people, there's this, there's this, uh, reportedly, he was also gay, but, you know, he, you, you know, he's a little Mexican guy, came high on meth, he was just starting to, like, fucking yell and scream at me, it's probably because of some of my other extreme views he may have heard, or it could have just been he was being a dick, because he was also a dick, you know, to, he had other run-ins with, with others in the past. And anyways, uh, he ended up getting, uh, you know, drug tested. And it's like, he apparently had drugs in his system. Probably amphetamines, I would imagine. You know, and then uh, he tried to punch the staff there and get into a fight. And he got kicked out permanently. I went almost just a, like a week maybe before or something close to that. Like, me leaving, I see him show up again after the police handcuff him and take him away with this person that's there that's like, I can't have him live in my house anymore. I can't do any of this. This is all bad. He's freaking out. He's like, I don't know what the fucking, this is fucking really awkward. I can't, I'm like, oh shit, I've been there. Sorry. But you didn't need to scream and fucking get all up in my face and shit, you know? And I, I, I had to kind of help hold you down with this other guy after you did that, you know, sorry, I, I don't think it's okay that they, but then at the same, you know, I don't know what the fuck to do here either, you know, and that wasn't my issue, my issue was other shit, because court had finally been gotten dropped, no charges, no nothing, they can't, they can do prejudice, but it's like, he already went to court, so like, that would be its own thing, and so that means, likely I could get away with saying, you can't charge me, <laughs> like you can't go through with the case you know what I mean so but you know I, I, I finished my quarter of a tree I'm still trying to appeal it it didn't go anywhere I fucking and then I was like oh you know I actually was trying to move it over to Vegas you know because it's like my parents ran it you know like oh hey by the way around that time because I had gotten a job I, I just told you about the job Right, my Safeway job, my grocery restocker job, where we didn't have enough people to really do the job. And I was not really physically fit or really able to do the damn job. Anyway, it was graveyard shift. That's already hard to start immediately. Oh, by the way, you, you don't really get to sleep. You can't, like, just fucking relax on your phone phone in the in the in the uh the dorm thing that they have, which is mostly, like, one side is pretty much, pretty much bug bugs. It's a bed bug infested place, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, you know what I mean, you know, and so that, that's, that's what that is, um, and it's, it's like, okay, so I moved, I got to another place, I still had a bed bug or two pop up, but I didn't really get bit, bitten, you know, too much, if at all, after that, you know, I was willing to kind of go to church just to see if I could find someone, I was genuinely like, hey, you know what, I might actually get somewhere, you know, I can maybe, I can maybe get an apartment, I can get, to, you know, I, I had plans, I had plans, I had plans, and then I, I realized I can't sleep, this shit is taking its toll on me, like, I mean, I, I'm just, I just sank down, I couldn't deal with the, with the freaking going to all the different damn meetings and everything to get enough, you know, stuff, and then that on top of it, I was like, I was just giving basic, you know, kind of arguments to why that might not be, like, as, as, um, maybe good of a, you know, like, you know what I mean, like, difference of a philosophy, difference of certain things, you know, for, for religion on, on, and on interpretations of religion, you know, and like what, what, well, that doesn't really make that much sense, or maybe this could make maybe sense for it, or, you know, stuff like that, and they didn't like that, <laughs> they really didn't like that, they really, like, one of the people that I thought was, like, kind of, you know, we were, we were kind of buddy-buddy, and it's like, I'm, I'm so angry with you right now, I have to get up and leave the meeting, because you suggested something like that. And it's like, 
this this is not so good, you know. And but see, that's the thing. It's the same thing with them, with my family. You cannot make you cannot make others. This is what it is. You just like eh. It's same thing with the government. Same thing with the tough on crime people. That kind of stuff. You know what I mean. And then it's it's like okay okay so I I need to work how long to be able to get and then the only apartments are really hotel buildings. Oh my god, this is actually gonna be like a fuck ton of work. You know what I mean? Like actually a fuck ton of work. I mean, in fact, if John decides to move, which was this autistic guy, it's like okay, then I'm 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 kind of needing to ride a bike in the middle of dead winter downhill with like almost no brakes you know what i mean and then uphill a pretty steep uphill you know it's kind of rough it was actually pretty kind of rough yeah and and i'm like that sucks but like he was there for the the amount of time i was there i kind of like you know got to hang out and chill with him and it was it was okay until it's like my mom said this shit and i was kind of like talking to him yeah i still had some some issues Back and forth from both of us, I'm sure, at that point. I don't know what he felt, but, like, you know, I kind of insinuated I knew what he was feeling. But then, I was like, you know, he, he kind of got a little bit more defensive, and you don't, and stuff like that. So maybe it was a little bit caveat true, but maybe none of it was true. You know, I don't know. But I was, you know, kind of doing that kind of thing, and, you know, because it's like, I, I picked up on body language. I'm pretty good at body language. Like, there's a reason why. It's because I had that kind of abuse, you know what I mean? You know, like, you kind of get, you have to get good at it, you know? And so it's like, oh, you know, maybe I just didn't know him, or whatever, but, you know, and then, you know, he was kind of getting upset, just having to fucking drive everyone everywhere, which is totally understandable. It's his house, basically, you know, because he lives in a van. He already getting, like, nearly stabbed, somebody fucking, like, you know, popped his tire intentionally, you know, all this other shit, and then he's, like, dealing with the fact that, oh, these, this mission just tried to it basically made him have to leave because he was getting effectively bullied in a lot of ways, you know, yeah, and then same thing with the 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 yeah gay guy Clinton too, you know, and and it's like, this is not super. If I wasn't like straight, you know, more or less straight, you know, and then it's like, oh, if I didn't, you know, I was tall. I seem to be doing you know, what I should be doing, you know what I mean, like, you know, it's, it's like, this is an entirely different story, you know what I mean, if I hadn't been, you know, like, fucking volunteering, you know, if I hadn't been doing that kind of stuff for, like, for things, because I was like, it's just, I need to find something to do, I cannot stay in here for this, this is grinding on me, you know what I mean, it's, it's, and it's like, I need to get up, I need to do things, you know what I mean, and I need to get myself, you know, to a job, eventually, it's like, there's no way out of this without one. You, you know what I mean? Like, not really. Because it's like, SSI, that's like a long-ass time from from now. You know what I mean? Uh, anyways. Uh, Clinton and John... Clinton kind of just went over to his parents, I think. Or something like that. I don't really remember. Truthfully. Like, he drove off. He never talked to me again. Like, and, and then John says something when I was trying to confide in him about my mom kind of being a, a, abusive again and saying shit that, like, hey, you know what? It, that's, that's you know, neither here nor there. Like, I don't want you to feel bad. You know, like, not the way, you, you know, and then, like, all this other stuff on top of it. Oh, I told all the neighbors, too. You know, what is that? With no, like, real evidence of anything. You know, and then, like, but it for sure happened. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't doubt, like, some shit happened. Like, I remember some shit. You know, it's embarrassing. You know what I mean? Which means, like, I that started fucking going crazy for me, you know, that night. And I didn't know. And that's just fuck you levels to fucking expose to people. You know? Like, fuck you. But whatever. You know? And, and he's like, you need to man up. You need, you know, like, shit like that. Toxic masculinity crap. So he says, I care for you and all this. I'm like, okay, we're done. I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm just not going to talk to you anymore. We're done. You know what I mean? And so, I just ghost him. 
I try, I, you know, I, I tried talking to TJ again. He's 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 kind of receptive. I mean, he's receptive. He's like he really likes me. It's just the way I interpreted it because I have ADHD. I have all those other problems. You know, <laughs> it's like he didn't respond to to he didn't re, you know I I tend to respond with a lot more in 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 my messages. And so I assume that meant that like he was just not wanting to talk to me. And if I'm having to carry this conversation so much, you know, I felt like a, a little cheated out of it. You know what I mean? And it didn't. It didn't feel. It didn't. It didn't feel like he really wanted to talk to me. And you know, then I put out some. You know, I was talking to him about these like, podcasts or you know stuff that I was. I was trying to get anyone to kind of try and listen to any of them because truthfully, like, you know, I had nothing else to do, and you know, why not? Why not? My thoughts are, you know, my thoughts are something still. I have a voice. Fuck you. Everyone's got that shit. You know, like, I, no one in my life really ever listened to me. Nobody ever freaking, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it's kind of rough. And everything's just kind of shit on me. So, I don't know. But he, I don't think really listened to them. But maybe he didn't. I don't know. Uh, but that was also a fear of mine. Because I talked about some of my more extreme views. And I felt like that meant... Like, he didn't really, he got weirded out, and he didn't want to talk. That was what that was. And, like, um, you know, I felt like I, you know, it, it, I, then I didn't talk for, like, months, or, like, a month or some shit, because, you know, I, I had I had been going through shit, I was so depressed, I have ADHD, and, and I, I felt like I, he didn't really even want to talk anyways. And I eventually reached out because I couldn't handle it. I needed to do something to talk to someone because I had no social interaction. And my mom was fucking breathing down my neck. Because guess what, guys? That's right. Drum roll. While I was there for a week. And change point. Totally unaccommodating on the fact that, like, I definitely know my shit about fucking these different types of, of, of medications I've been on in the past. Nope. We don't care what you say. You're going to take this. And that's exactly what I was afraid of when it comes down to quarter of treatment. You know, you lose your rights. You really don't have rights once you have that. Like, you think you do, you don't. Like, the nurses at Change Point suddenly realize it's like, holy shit, you really don't have much of any rights at all. <laughs> and they're gone practically the moment you go into a mental health hospital. So it's like, you know, and, and so, anyways. I had uh, been talking to my mom. My dad, my dad talked to me one fucking night, like all about how mom is having all these issues with Andrea or like whatever her life was going on, and she was all this. And I'm like, I'm in a homeless shelter. I'm in a homeless shelter. What the fuck are you going on about? This is stupid. You don't even care about me. I wasn't the only one that felt that way. <laughs> all the people I talked to, it's like, yeah, no, that's kind of shit. That's really kind of shit. What the fuck are you doing? You know? And then, um... You know, so he does that. I try my best to, like, kind of deal with things. As best I can. You know, still trying to make music. I was trying to podcast. I kind of crapped out after a certain point. I'd, I'd gotten a job. I was, I was like, oh, okay, so my mom suddenly decided to be like, well... I guess I'll let you come back and live with me. I'm like, I've been here three months. I've been here three fucking months. Three fucking months of hell, honestly. It was not fun. It is not fun to live here in a homeless shelter. It never is. I've been at a homeless shelter in Massachusetts, and that one closed down, and you have to, and I have to live in a fucking tent in a park, several different parks, because, you know, various shit went down. And, like, you have to leave. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, fuck. Okay, so, like, okay, 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 all right. Um, shit, can I do this? I'm going to leave my job. I don't even like the job. The fucking job is not for me. Like, there's a fucking asshole who's just like my younger sister. It's like, you should be able to do all of this already. You should be faster than us. I don't like this person because, like, she slacks off. And, you know, she's another gay conservative. Holy shit. How the fuck? 
how the fuck did this appear? They just like rare unicorns suddenly, but they're not around here, so. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, that's a thing. But then she's also like, yeah, no, but I don't think union should be a thing and all this stuff. You know, like standard Trump shit. I think Trump should have won the election or, you know, like he should run, you know, like that kind of, I don't think vaccines were necessary. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then, like, I kind of, like, try my best to, to get acquainted with the other people. And then, like, I apparently shoot myself in the foot or say something that was weird or some shit. Because, like, after I was, like, mentioning internet or whatever, you know, because I was, like, trying to find... I was genuinely planning on trying to find a fucking apartment. And it's like, you know, do you know where it is? No, no, I think anything's like the And they kind of, like, just sort of stopped talking to me. And then, like, kind of just, you know, didn't really want to deal with me. As much, but you know, truthfully, I was hardly even there. I was barely functioning to be able to do that. And then on top of that, I had to go to the fucking other stuff for, for the the brainwashing mission. I had to keep doing that. You know what I mean? And then, um, then on top of that, it's like I'm dealing with like I'm gonna have to talk to reporters. Apparently, because they're gonna. And I did. I called a couple until, like, I got to this point where I was at the the house I'm in now in Eager, which is my mom's house. You know, uh, you know they, they were calling me, like, hey, so what was your experience? And then I missed one of their calls. They never fucking tried to respond again because I was like, you know, actually, I have a lot of shit to do. And all those things are actually lining up, unfortunately for me, on shit that I have to do that day. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I also have... The ability to be tired. I don't know if you know that. I can get tired. And I don't really want to like, you know, immediately go into into a traumatic but not, you know, that traumatic experience with someone over the phone. You know what I mean? And it's, and they're like, no, nah, I'm just, not, you know, I missed one time. I tried, it's like, hey, I emailed back. It, nope, not going to fucking contact you anymore. Fuck you. Like, what the fuck was that? Anyways, um, yeah, no, it immediately turned into exactly what I thought it was going to be. Mom's fucking definitely just shitting on me, you know, like, and she's like overblowing almost anything I seem to do. And so it's like, I had, there's no way for me to win. And it, she says it's boundaries or some bullshit, but it's like, by that, I mean, there's no way for me to at all do that because it doesn't matter anything you do will be wrong the wrong way yeah that's what that is for them yeah and so you know that, that that's that's what I had to deal with and you know I tried to pretty much just fuck off and, and like not talk to her and everything but it's like oh you know it's like I kind of need to do I'm trying to get a voc rehab that immediately it's like, yeah, no, I have voc rehab, you know, I'm going to switch it over, I'm doing, and then it's like, okay, I'm getting that ball rolling, she can't fucking go after me on that. So I'm trying to get a job, it's going to take whatever fucking time it is. Oh, guess what? I don't know when the hell I'm going to get, like, any of my stuff that I need, so I'm, I kind of need to stay here. Because pretty soon after I got here, which was not a fun experience, I gotta say, but for the most part, like... I'm just gonna fucking like fuck off, you know. This guy, eh, eh. I'm just not gonna. I got my my new psychiatrist. They put me on new medications. They actually listened to me. They actually listened. Wonderful, wonderful shit. You know, change point. Oh my god. Ah, you know, I'm gonna keep doing this thing, and I'm like, and they're like, okay, so you don't want to do that, and then you've been okay, so we'll try this. What do you know? I actually, gave a shit about me actually the proper place to fucking like go to because they were not they are shit in terms of like an actual mental health care company in terms of what i had to experience yeah especially when like several of them are like oh god the the the, do- the psychiatrist that sees you for 10 minutes maybe all of a sudden i do have a, a perfect evaluation of you and you still are and in fact you have all these other mental disorders you don't know my past history you don't know he didn't take into consideration anything that i said it was all fake it was all lies i talked to the other one when i get out 
of of the of the 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 facility. You know, it's like no, no, no same. Oh no, you seem to they, that's not a big deal. It's not a, you know another one, another one. I go to a doctor. I'm trying to ask about. It. It's like you don't have psoriasis. You might have eczema. I've been diagnosed with. I have psoriasis. I definitely have psoriasis. I go to a dermatologist and show though you have psoriasis. <laughs> That's later, though. But, like, I've been diagnosed with... Uh, yeah, no, it's like, fuck, fuck that doctor. <sighs> I had to walk from the shelter, the, like, two miles, three miles, something like that. Like, all this other shit. Like, I don't know what the fuck it was. But I had to walk all the way to the change point because they wouldn't pick me up to get my first intake. Otherwise, I would have been going against my quarter of treatment and I would have been put back into a mental health care hospital. On my bum foot, with like all the heat, and everything else that's going on at that time, yeah. Oh, I have to walk back too, you know, yeah. Okay, so then it's like, alright, alright, all right, you know, I, I get that, the going through, I'm going to get therapy, I'm finally going to see a therapist, so like, hey, yeah, yeah, I know, hey, it's, this guy is trying his best, trying to understand what, what's going on, we didn't really get too many appointments, you know, um, the unfortunate part is, like, I'm a quick, fast kind of person, and, like, what was going on is, like, I'm gonna have to go through all this stuff, and I just got, kind of got the feeling as this was gonna be another venting therapist, a therapist I just go to for venting, that, and, and I don't really have the ability to really do any real work with, and stuff like that, and it turns out, that's kind of what that ended up being. And then all the, the work that I had, because they say, oh, I need to clean out my ears. You know, I have to clean out my earwax every, like, two months to a month, depending on how it builds up. I have to do that. And I don't always get that done. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't. And, like, this is a teaching hospital, so some some student and I poked one of my, I swear to God, she poked my eardrum or some shit. I swear she did. Because like, it, it, like, I just stood there and took it, but it was like, oh, my God, that's a lot of pain. And then, like, all of a sudden, my left ear suddenly doesn't hear as well. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? But, like, you know, I, I'm going to get, you know, STD tests, all this stuff, you know, just in case. Just in fucking case. Because you don't fucking know. Man, you really don't. You never know. I hadn't had sex, but it's like, you never know. And I haven't had sex. Like, I had sex when I was homeless in Massachusetts, you know. And I had, you know, a brief sexual encounter with someone you know, before I was sent to the, uh, the mental health hospital, you know, and so it's like, all right, you know, I'm going to test this, I'm going to test it out, it was, it was months ago, sure, yeah, but I don't care, you know what I mean, yeah, and so it's like, all right, I got tested, and everything seemed fine, you know, and, um, you know, I got that done, I got tested before I saw the other one, after my, my encounter when I was homeless, everything seemed fine, <laughs> All, all negative, yeah, all clear. So, that's good. Yeah, that, that seemed great. Should have been happy, but, you know, you never seem to get to let yourself be happy when you've been traumatized. And no matter how big the accomplishment, it doesn't feel like an accomplishment. So, that's a thing. First sexual encounter, oh, I actually did well. She said, it, you know, you know, for most part it did well she knew you know but it's like hey you know what fucking christ right yeah <laughs> you know like it's it's just like great yay wonderful can't feel you know that good about it for whatever damn reason but i'm gonna move on from that because it's like all right so I'm, I'm having to now deal with you know the whole the homeless shelter thing and, you know, all the way up till I get out, and I'm, I'm dealing with my mother, you know, any of the major events, really. I'm, now I'm dealing with my mother. So, it's like, alright, so then that kind of became, like, its own fucking cat and mouse game, where I'm trying to get my medicine straightened out. You know, I'm trying to get stuff figured out. You know, I'm trying to, like, you know, figure out the, the, the therapy, the all this. I'm trying to set it all up. And I, I tried, and I did pretty much set everything up to get the intake going, to get the, the services going, everything, before I even went. So I already did that. So, it's, But still, they're slow here, and they're understaffed chronically 
Always, always understaffed. That's what I've known after being here for almost a year. They're always understaffed. And, like, a lot of them are just like anyone else, you know, trying their best to do a job that maybe they, they don't really care as much as you would hope them to to do and care about, you know. Um, but, like, some of them, you know, they do. They do care. You know, that's what that is. It's like anything else. So, uh, and some things just take a long time. And I'm a pushy person. I will try my damnedest to get that shit done as best as I can. But then it's like, oh, my God, I'm pushing the hell out of myself to get any of this done. And it's like I'm getting like kind of just roadblocked in so many ways on so much of this. And so, all right. And then the mom, mom situation was terrible. And it's like, fuck. And it's like, you really want to go to Vegas there? And I'm like, you know, to be honest, I did. I, when I, when she, she has a real fucking problem with just extremely like, go, 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 go. We're going to do all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to get out of here. Yeah. And, you know, me, she knows how to prey upon me. It's like, oh, yeah, there's, like, nothing here. She knows that. She knows that it's like, hey, yeah, there's nothing here. You wouldn't really, you know, you have more opportunity there, all this other stuff. Seems like it's a good thing, but you're, like, forgetting about the fact that it's abusive. You know what I mean? And it's like, maybe I can handle it. You know, maybe I can get something to say, no, 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 you can't do that. You really can't. But you did try. Like, you felt like maybe. And then you later on, like, when you were able to calm back down and settle the fuck down... You thought about it, and then you even, you know, went on a, you know, uh, and posted about it. You went on a website and posted about it and, like, get, got, you know, any kind of advice you could. You know, because your therapist basically kind of was like, meh, what do you want to do? And, and like, uh, you know, that kind of didn't really try and reframe it or rephrase it or anything like that. You know, and to see a different perspective. And so it's like, all right, so I eventually got, while the whole thing was going on for, like, trying to get the, the, the transfer or appeal or cancellation of court order treatment happening, I had voc rehab, and they were like, oh, yeah, no, we'll get your hearing aids someday. You know, like, it's supposed to happen. You know, it, you, it, you wasn't supposed to go this long, we didn't know, but then, like, you know, it wasn't like they were saying it was going to happen really anytime quickly or soon, you know, like, it's, that's government, right? You know, so, anyways, uh, I'm doing my best to kind of go muddle through that. My mom had, like, gave my dad another, it's not even the first time she's done it. Think about how abusive this is, that this sounds like, I'm going to leave you, divorce you, if you don't sell that house. I have a job, I don't have, like, internet where the fuck you are, there's no way, you don't have no plan what the fuck? She's been telling me this this entire time. Everybody knows. Everyone knows. Everyone knows about how he can't fucking come up to Eager and, and, and work his job. And he's not going to be able to live off his retirement. Mom spends more money on all of that. It's, it's just like, what the fuck? And it's like, she's done, done it before. Yeah, she's done it before. She's been abusive like that before. It's like, I'm going to leave you. I'm not going to divorce you. But I mean, you know, all this other shit. Hey, I'm going to live somewhere else. And well, you know, she did. <laughs> the fuck is that what the fuck is that you know what i mean but it's like dad's actually kind of doing better you know dad seems to be happier they you know they call over the phone but like they don't you know he's he's but no dad's doing all this bad like he's working too much all this you know what i mean but i'm hearing from her <laughs> yeah he didn't pick up he didn't have enough time to do this and i'm like he's working what do you expect? You couldn't do? No, because I have this. I'm like, well, then why don't you fucking just realize and have empathy that, like, that's a thing. But they don't. That's narcissism. That's the manipulative. That's that they don't think like that. That's what that is. <laughs> you know? They don't care. It's, it's your fault, not me. And before they certain things happen, it's like, I'm hearing her scream about shit that my dad didn't do before, like, She's going over to the Chandler house to, to, to get rid of, uh, you know, sign the paperwork and then, you know, move all the shit over to somewhere else. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, it was like the day of or some shit. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? What the hell am I dealing with here? Well, maybe you'll have your quarter to treatment. I'm so glad it didn't go through. I'm so glad. It gave me time to process. Gave me time to process. Like, three months, you know, we were dealing with that shit. 
Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, we're like, oh, okay, so we're, you know, and then he needs to sign this, da, da, da. been like two weeks, three, something like that. And it's like, oh, did it go anywhere? Yes, no, we sent things. Maybe they'd contact you like a month and a half later, two months, something like that. It's, it's like I get a random email that says, hey, nope, they upheld the uh, previous decision. Didn't go to court because you're supposed to go be able to go to court for like an appeal or something, I think. You know, like, we didn't do it, like, and it was my old fucking lawyer, it's too sensitive, you, I'm not doing all this, all this stuff, you know, uh, it's the guy that handled that. What the fuck was that? The fuck was that? But there's, like, almost no lawyers around, so it's like, yeah, great, great, whatever. The public defenders, and even lawyers themselves, there are not many, so... Like, okay, so I, you know, I guess I'm staying here. I tell my mom that, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. And I'm like, that's when she suddenly becomes weird. Like, she started, like, wanting to come back and wanting to do these other things and all this other shit. Even, like, I, I can almost guarantee you, like, my, my family would probably see it a little bit, too. Like, she got weird. She got weird. And then, like, that's when, when she was around, just me... Shit got way worse, much faster. Ramped it up. And when I was like, I'm doing all, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking talk to all of the family members about all of this shit that I am doing. I'm in voc rehab, I've got my psychiatrist, I got all this other shit. I, you know, I've been, you know, re diagnosed, and other diagnoses are now gone, but I don't know anything about any of it anymore, and I don't know how much I believe almost any of it. You know? You know what I mean? And it's like, hey, and she, and my older sister can't offer anything. Doesn't really want to talk to me anyways. You know? And, like, I barely want to keep in touch with her because it's like she's not putting any effort into any of this. And, like, she's the one that has to fucking, like, do that for me. You know, not the other way around. She's the one that left and abandoned me with a fucking monster of a mother and she left the state because she wanted not just to go pursue fashion and shit but because she wanted to get away from the family so you know that's a whole thing with that and her and it's not like she survived wonderfully but it's like you have no idea the fuck it you really missed out on and I had to take you don't know. And then, oh, right, you know, I'm not, you, you know, like, uh, understanding that she's being compassionate. I love that fucking stupid. Like, she's being stupidly immature. Or, like, just fucking saying the same words back to me. Fucking, like, don't talk to me. Fucking screaming and yelling at me. Fucking trying to ditch me in a Walmart. You know, all this shit. On a truck ride to Walmart, when it's like, we went to the dump, and she got lost going to the dump, Yeah, or, or after the dump, she, she got to the dump part, and she's like, oh, it's over there, and it's like, it's actually over there, I'm like, okay, whatever, taking a trip, yeah, yeah, that's what that was, it's like, I'm taking a trip now, but it's like, no, 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 the entire way, she was like, trying to pretty much just get all this information, and all this other bullshit, I fucking text my sister, my sister texted my, my, my father, my father calls her, and then, like, a whole new fight, she doesn't care, she didn't want to deal with it, she didn't want to deal with me, she doesn't think it's that big of a deal, she thinks it's, it's entirely not the same of what it is, and it is that, and then that's on top of the fact that, like, it's like, oh my god, do you know how much, like, of a life that you happen to have that's better, and then, like, I know for a fact that you were like, oh yeah, that's a good thing he was homeless, the fuck? Like, and then, oh, oh, right, it's not like we ever addressed the fact that you still hurt me while I was growing up. Never fucking gave a shit, it seems like, you know, and then you've got, like, all this other shit that seemingly, you know, you're doing great, wonderful, right? It's not like you can house me or deal with me. That's your your prerogative. It's not mine. You know, you, you're allowed that. But, like, when you don't want to take anything and you don't want to deal with the drama, you don't want to even deal with your own fucking life drama. And you're like saying you're going through therapy and all, and it's like you, you, you know what? You, I'm just, I'm just gonna stay out of this. 
You know what I mean? Like, I went to you for mom for help. You fucking shit on me, basically. It's like, you blew me off, you know? And then she tries killing herself. And then, like, I did poorly, and then next thing you know, it's like, it seems like, you know, from my perspective, you were ganging up on me with the fucking mom. You know what I mean? You wouldn't have known, though. But it's like, no, 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 I can't say that you're really a person that I can have in my life. That isn't having these other issues. That clearly I can't deal with you. Like, you know what I mean? I clearly can't be around you. I can't be near you. I can't, you know what I mean? And it's like, I'm suddenly, I'm the worst roommate. I'm suddenly unable to live with you. You know, like, and you tell me that when I'm in stuff. And it's like, I'm actually like a really put together person for the most part. But even then, it's like, those are masked to a certain degree. You know, like I'd have days where it's like, oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm not really able to get the fucking dishes done. You know, like the days, you know, sometimes I like don't bathe for a day or two still because it's like, oh shit, for some reason I just forgot. Or like, I'm so depressed. I'm, 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 I'm like, you know, but it's like my, my older sister would be like, I can't deal with you. You don't even know who the fuck I am. You don't even know what to deal with. You don't know anything at all about me. You think, you know, you know me from like a fucking part of my life where you, my mother, my other sister, and my father were abusing me. You don't know shit. You don't know shit. You really don't. You don't know. You don't know anything. You never bothered to. You never wanted to. You never reached out. I was the one that reached out to you. I was the one that talked to you about mom. We eventually got together later after talking and going back and forth. Mom didn't like that because you were talking to me and not her. Which definitely set off a whole bunch of shit with her narcissistic trait problems. You know? And it's like, oh, you used us. You came over here for like a week. I'm like, oh yeah, no, I was going to do that. Thank you. Yeah, I needed a fucking break from that. Yeah, that's not a bad thing to do. I needed, oh, a sanctuary, a place where I wasn't going to have that problem. Which you would understand. If you've ever been abused that hard. Oh, wait, you did. You went to fucking college. You don't see it? Oh, my God. I do. Okay, now we're not done yet. You know, still not done. So it's like, all right, all right, all right. All right, so I'm doing all this shit. I'm getting everything done. I'm just, seems like I'm functioning I'm better now. Seems like it, 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 seems like it. I'm not. I'm fucking freaking out. I'm dealing with a lot of problems. I'm dealing with a lot of problems behind the scenes. I don't tell anyone about. I'm dealing with a lot of problems. Every fucking day. And you know, when I finally do get to talk to someone about a little bit about it, you know, it's like, oh, you know what? Can't do nothing about that. There's no fucking, like, suddenly going to be their job that's perfect to you. There's no, like, I'm going to actually have you have enough money to be able to, like, maybe build a life of some kind and maybe work on some of these engine ideas that you happen to have. Maybe build a business or, you know, like maybe program like an, like an Adreno ECU type thing, you know, for people that want to have like a cheaper version and sell that. You know, like any of these things that I know I can do, if I could get the time, I could get the effort, you know, like shit that just doesn't really work very easily. But it's like then I got my concepts written down. You know, I've got all my stuff done on like how to make it work. Talked to Grandpa on some of that, and he's like, yeah, no, that should work, or, well, I didn't really, kind of, but, like, you know, trying to talk to other people, you know, some of it's really pretty fucking good, some of it's stuff we already have, but slightly different, or slightly new, you know what I mean, like, that's, turns out, I, I, you know, without understanding, as in, like, going through school, came up with stuff that PhDs come up with, you know, for their thesis papers, <sighs> I'm not kidding. That's a genuine thing I learned. It was like, has anybody ever thought about doing this? I look, I Google it. Yeah, no, I did this the PhD thesis about this. I'm trying to write about What do you think with the, this number? And I'm like, what the fuck? <clears throat> but it is. That's a thing. That's a thing. And then I'm like, oh, hey, wait, wait, wait. You know what? I'm not finished yet. I still have to refine all my designs. Everything that came up with in the fucking mental health hospital was just a preliminary 
preliminary as fuck. As in, like, this is a rough concept. Seems like there could be something. There's some fundamental issues. I'm going to have to work at it. So I do. That's what I do. I sat around and fucking focused on, like, my, my fusion engine tech design. I love this one. I love this one. I do. It's particle fusion accelerators. All right? You, or not particle fusion accelerators. Particle accelerators that smash together that create fusion. It turns out we have that already. You know, we can make that create heat. You know, because it's fusion that creates heat. Now, if we put that into a fairly dense plasma that happens to be in the standard tokamak design, all right, and we fire these things and we create pulses. These are pulses, okay? You know, and what that means is, like, it basically creates a shockwave pressure wave that heads towards the center in the in-between of these particle accelerators, creating another fusion, creates another particle accelerator, shockwave area, double pressure wave. Because it's like there's a pressure wave that's heading back towards where it was originally. It should be, if we can get it hard enough, of a, of a pressure wave, you know, I can get that to pop off again. With fusion now taking a lot less energy for the particle acceleration. <laughs> that's a thing I can do. That is a thing. Turns out I'm not wrong in that. <laughs> so it's like, all right, all right, all right, all right, you know what? I want to make it into an engine. I want a rocket ship engine. I don't want this stupid, like, gah. And I was, like, trying to figure out how to, like, turn this into, like, energy. Because I'm like, oh, my God, like, steam engine, and then the, the steam will break down. Oh, what, we don't have any materials that can handle that amount of heat. You know what I mean? We really don't, you know? And then I'm like, I'm fucking thinking about it, thinking about it. <laughs> I'm like, because I got nothing else to do. It's like, what the fuck else am I supposed to do? And so I'm like, all right, I can push these into tubes. I can make that work for me. I can make that work. And if I center it towards the center, you know, like I angle it and I angle it again and I angle it in, and it's always heading towards the center. All right. Each one of those pressure waves can also still have what is effectively a series of those capturing for the pressure waves tubes that accelerate the pressure wave and the resulting plasma therein that's heading, that tube, heading down that tube and utilizing. Uh, electromagnets, okay, to basically try and accelerate it, and then you got your particle accelerators, there's no reason why not to have that, you know, and then it's like, all right, and it's getting squeezed, okay, just like a Takamak design, but it's like, oh, wait, 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 wait we're not done, because it's like, you know, you got the center teardrop, right, that's going to help pressurize that with the pressure wave that's heading down faster with Bernoulli's principle, which, if you don't know what that is, Larger area diameter of circle at this end, smaller at this end, creates cone. It accelerates to the tube of the smaller cone, and it goes faster. Something you actually kind of want, need, in a particle fusion accelerator. Now, wait, 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 we're not done yet. <laughs> so it's like, wait, 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 I've got this teardrop here. Yeah, I've got this whatever the fuck. I don't care. doesn't matter. To me, that's not that big of a deal. What that to me means is that's acceleration. And I have particle accelerators that I can fire into that. And it's also getting squeezed, like a tokamak design, at that smaller diameter. There's no reason why I can't do that. Why shouldn't I do that? That makes total complete sense to me. It's like, well, you know, I didn't really add in lasers. But, you know, I can use inertial confinement lasers. Or lasers that basically act like optical tweezers. But if you put a lot of juice in them, they squeeze shit really hard. They move it. And say, well, you know, I need heat. I need more heat. It's like, I got a little bit of heat from the fusion before. You know, it's a little. It's not much. It'll do something, you know, maybe. <laughs> and I'm like, there's lasers that I can use on this other area that is the other shock pressure wave. And then I can kind of pulse it every so often. To basically make that go into this tube. It's only, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to exist where it needs to exist at the right area. And it's like, well, there's no reason why I can't just constantly keep firing particle accelerators at those areas and then have the, the pulse of the, uh, the shock waves. And, you know, some of it's going to get diverted into these tubes, but the majority tends to get there. You know, and I've got lasers. Why not? Why don't I use that? I mean, you know, I've got this heat. I can still, with a Takamak, squeeze that shit. Why shouldn't I do that? accelerate it towards that faster and I get 
an increase of velocity, an increase of pressure, an increase of heat in the exact right area I want it to be at for fusion. Wow, astounding. Seems like it'll work. Yeah, you know, you'd have to build it, but yeah, it seems like the concept should work. I'm like, I'm not done yet. You know, because like, I want it to go zoom, zoom, you know, up in the spaces, which isn't actually very empty, but like, you know, particles that are that small should might as well be considered that way. <sighs> Anyway, so I'm not done yet. I'm like, okay, so it's like, of course, you're going to add your lasers and your particle accelerators and your confining, you know, tokamak squeezing and then the pulses to make more fusion. Right. And then it's like, oh, right. I can just make another version of that and another and another until I get to the point where it's like most of the fucking fuel has fused. And now it's accelerating very fast, extremely fast. It should be in the... Maybe relativistic speeds. Now we have hydrogen that has turned into helium and it is at the equivalency of whatever speed it is. And so now I've got a fusion fucking rocket engine. That's what I got. I got, you know, it works. It's like, all right, you know, for a rocket engine, why not? Sure, should concept wise do the deed. You know what I mean? And it's like, wait, 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 you know, the, the, the donut tokamak, you know, that's one. I need like four of these so that way it can time the pulses exactly right. You know, four little fucking little tiny chambers. And I only need them in rings and then I can push them into the center. And I'm like, this is John Tyler Lemke's design. You know, that's who the, this design came from. You know what I mean? And you know what it started off at? Why don't we put magnets on fan blades? You know, turbine, jet turbine fan blades, but like, kind of like try and try and squeeze and push it, you know, and use like electromagnetic coils in the fan blades. You know what I mean? Try and like basically make the fan blade its own version of a, a fan blade, you know, for fucking plasma. It's like, hey, it seems like it could work. It doesn't seem like it wouldn't work. It kind of does work, but it's like, eh, you know, I mean, eh, those things can bend, break, whatever. I don't want to deal with it. You know, I have to deal with, like, fucking contact points, all this, eh, 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 out of here. Get out of here. But that was my first one. That was my first area of design. And, you know, eventually, like, it's it's another version that basically does the same thing that I just talked about. And I've gotten it now to, like, oh, what do you know? Like, I don't need any of that. I just need the basics. I don't need any blades. Blades get in the way. I want acceleration. And this has a lot of heat. So it's like, you know what I'm looking into? This thing called thermophotovoltaics and thermoelectric generators. And I'm like, why is it we don't have, like, better fucking versions that are more, and I mean way more, efficient? I'm seeing this one, it's 40, why don't we use that? And I kept going on about this 40% fucking shit. It's not 40%. It is not. It has a very special setup that makes it 40%. It's not 40%. There's no way it's a 40%. Then I'm like, all right, you know, I eventually learned that. And then it hit me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, 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 okay, you know, my, yeah, okay, so whatever. We can still use that to our advantage. Then I'm like, you know what, I'm not done. Because it's like, fuck that. I wanted to use something that was at least decently efficient of that design because then I can still use the liquid hydrogen pump it in there at like volume into this shit immediately cooled off in particular areas that you need it for the main fusion area and then basically have that heat absorb much like we're direct injecting in an engine and then making it effectively turn into plasma almost instantaneously and then we can fuse it it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You just gotta get a lot of fuel. And then I was like, ah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> that's what I had to do. You know what I mean? I was like, nah. No, I want more power. I want more power. I know there's more power. There is so much heat power here. I can get so much more. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I have to design a fucking waste heat generator. Yeah, I did. I was like, okay, what, what, what are these nano 3D printers? How far are they gone? God damn you. <sighs> this stupid... Uh, no metamaterials? No nothing? I can't use, like, multiple different types of... I, ah, man! Fine. 
fine, fine, fine. And then it's like, all right, right. When we get there, this is the basic concept of my waste heat generator, John Tyler Lemke's concept. All right. Because it's like, all right, all right. We have piezoelectric crystals. They turn compression, stretching, whatever. They turn kinetic energy into electricity. Pretty damn efficiently in the 90% range. Fucking phenomenal. It's amazing. I had to look that up. And I was like, there's no way that's... Oh, my God. <laughs> that's true. Holy shit. <laughs> that's actually true. And I'm like... I thought that that was what I was talking about with, like, this fucking, like, new solar panel. No, that's something else. That's, it. that's pet some other bullshit. That's something else. <laughs> I don't care. I finally figured out what piezoelectric is. Great stuff. Wonderful stuff. And I'm like, all right, all right where are we going with this? Hey, you know, heating and cooling, and it just stretches and whatever. Shut the fuck up. You haven't heard anything yet. Stop being papooey. Just listen. <laughs> It's like, all right. So it's like, all right, so we have copper, iron, this, that, whatever. You know, we can use layered, you know, lattice structures of carbon if we would want to for, like, super diamond for high heat transfers and high heat. And I'm like, all right, so piezoelectrics can do that. Like, all I need is a nitronol wire, and a nitronol wire will then change its shape based upon heat and cold. All right, and it's like, well, we're not done. This is this got a fucking notification. It's, we're not done yet. And I'm like, all right, so that's that's seeming to be something. And I'm like, all right, so we need to cool it down. And, and no matter what, and, and, and all of this needs to be cooled down. And we have thermoelectric generating, you know, it, it, material material that makes heat turn to electricity. So they're not very efficient, but you know, they're what they are. That's what that is, you know. And so it's like, all right, all right, we can put that in with the, the areas where the electricity is going to accumulate because it's going to be pretty heat intensive is the application I have here. All right, and it's like, all right, I can use MOSFET. If you know what MOSFETs are, you know, the magnetic differences between things, and I can layer that. I can layer that in many, many billions and trillions and all this stuff, fucking sizes, especially over distance, so it's like I got depth and distance here to work with, and that means I can move energy very efficiently at very high loads so that normally any copper wire would die to, <laughs> so it's like, all right, I took care of the fucking energy, if that ever goes too high, it should be good, it's got to have the receiving end, and do, 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 and it ticker tapes down, basically, you know, checkers, all right, and so it's like nitronol is going to move based upon pressure, you know, nitinol, not nitronol, nitinol, all right, and it's like, all right, all right, so, a three-phase uh, low-pressure gas, effectively, so it's like, it's a liquid, right now, it's low pressure, it immediately wants to turn to a gas, and I'm like, okay, so these other ones, one of them is still a gas, definitely still a gas, and one of them hides it being a gas at a super critical state inside the low-pressure fluid, simple, easy enough. All I need is capillary areas, you know, little areas for it to shoot and squirt this liquid gas combo at this nitinol wire, which happens to have the piezoelectrics attached to it. So that way, as it, you know, moves and bends, you know, it slowly plugs up one of the little holes. And then that one, then of course, is going to evaporate really quickly. And the other one isn't. And it's like, wait, wait, that doesn't work. No, no, you're thinking about it incorrectly. This one's the best part. As it moves away, it opens because that's heat. Nitinol changes with heat. As the heat opens it up, then it cools it off. And then the other one is hot. So it's like, no, I'm going to go over there now. <laughs> and I'm going to compress it that way. And then it plugs it up. And it's like, ah, I'm cold over here now. I'm going to go fucking be hot you know, over here, and I only need to do that, I only need to do it a little bit, because we only need to go nanometers, we're dealing with like 25 nanometers for your current technology can achieve in terms of size, and it's like, we have photolithography, if you don't know what that is, it's using lasers to effectively shave shit and patterns into stuff, and it's like, that's nice, that's neat, what can we use with that? Layers of this shit on top of each other, making sure that they will cold weld to each other with a vacuum. 
like design. All I need is a vacuum now. That's all I need. A vacuum means I can cold weld this in layers after I print it over and over and over and over and over and over and just stick them on top of each other, one after another, after another, after another, after a fucking another, after another, after another. Because <laughs> I'm trying to get like a fucking quarter of an inch, you know, like five mil, five millimeters, you know, something like that, you know, some, some decent, you know. Some that's gonna actually produce energy, and it's like, well, all this, all this, it's like heat sink fins. That's basically all I need. So it's like one side has heat sink fins. That's all I need. And it's like put the little capillary structures through it. I add like wind or air of any kind. It evaporates the heat, and by evaporates, we're not evaporating heat here. I just like telling them that because it annoys them, and they're like, oh yeah, no, you're evaporating heat. No, we're not evaporating. Nothing's evaporating. It's all stuck in there unless you broke something in there. Which means it's definitely evaporating, which is not good. <laughs> so don't do that. But otherwise, it's like, okay, so it's like, we're getting, we're removing the heat into convectional means. You know what I mean? And like, wait, 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 you know, I haven't done what I need to yet. You know what I mean? And it's like, alright, so I need to put this cold somewhere. And it's like, what, it's cold? It's, 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 yeah, you know, I mean, heat, cold, kind of same thing, depending on what your perspective is. All cold to relatively very hot, depending on what your preference is of what your version of, like, I don't want to be that hot or cold is. But to me, it's like, all right, we got to put this heat somewhere. This would make you feel better if I said that. <laughs> it's like, all right, all right, uh, reflective cooling. You know, stuff that we put on fucking uh, houses. We have this fucking radiative reflective cooling thing. We pump heat from the air inside of us, you know, like a heat pump, regular, regular fucking air conditioning. You pump it onto this, this, you know, reflective, it's not really reflective, but it's radiative heat, and it, like, shines out fucking IR, it goes off into, it's like, man, well, you know, it's not coming back, so whatever. We did it. We got rid of heat. We just need the right size. And I'm like, well, we haven't done the, the real thing that I wanted to do, which is like after it cools, it's got to condense. And it's like, that's where the extra gas comes in. Yes. And like that gas is really what causes a forceful pressure to squeeze it back into these tiny little areas that have little reservoirs that then move it over like a radiator structure. And then it goes into these little areas. Now, for the, for the knitting all little... Oh, I haven't gotten to the best part. That one's the best part. I like that part the most. That's its own Sterling engine. <laughs> That's right. If it's moving back and forth, I can put copper there. Copper coils are easy enough. And I can put fucking iron nitrate magnets in there. And it's like, all I need to do is overcome the force of the nitinol. Being heated up. It's just, that's all I gotta do. It's gonna be heated up. It's gonna move over to one place. It's cooling off on one place. And da, 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 Sterling engine. You got your Sterling engine. You got a fucking truckload. And truckload is putting it mildly. We are talking in the orders of hundreds of trillions or more. <laughs> and like, not a relatively big area either. <laughs> So it's only a little tiny iron now. Wow, well, okay. Well, you know. It's actually a lot more than you would have guessed, truthfully. Yeah, and it moves all the electricity with MOSFET design to go high amps, high current, whatever the fuck you want to do. You just got to set it up in a nanoscale the right way. Now, if you had just the one big old magnet you wouldn't be able to move any of this magnet scale with mass but it's like it has that amount of mass but it's not actually that amount of mass we just need to separate it with something that means no 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 your fields don't come here bye fuck you which is really just like not anti-magnetic no a reductional magnetic field that's all that is if you don't know what that is you can shape magnetic fields based upon other magnetic fields around it. And that means you can drastically shorten its distance outside of its area that you want it to do its work. 
And so it's like, oh, okay, we got the nitinol, we got the thing, we got the, all right, the, the thermo, thermoelectric materials, we got that, okay. We got thermo photovoltaic because we can put that, slap that sucker right on the surface. Still IR, it's still absorbing the heat, IR energy. Yeah, no, you thought I couldn't do that? I can do that, we can do that. That's the thing. We can still do that. There's no reason not to. Now, this came about from an engine concept design that I wanted to make that happens to use a double uh, style of turbines that are much bigger than the turbines that you can see for a, a turbo for a car. They're meant to capture a lot more energy. They have a rotation that is counter-rotating in the center to the central area that is rotating from the intro point. And then it's like, then this is cooled, of course, with its own liquid, because it's going to go to a radiator. Why not? Then it's like, oh, right, I can make the engine out of this, I can make the piston, I can then put the I mean, the piston, it's like, well, 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 you know, I want both top and bottom here, because I want the heat to be absorbed. Top and bottom are combustion chambers. So it's like, oh, well, you can't do that with a traditional crankshaft. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I hate it. So I bifurcated it. And I put the center area, which is like an accordion, if you don't know what that is. Like you, you, you push it in, and it goes forward, and you push it out, and it goes, and it retracts. So I'm like, oh, all right, I can put an electromagnetic generator. I can, I can make an electricity generator for its connecting fucking pin. And then it's like, oh, yeah, no, why don't I do that also with the crankshaft bearings? You know what I mean? And then why not with the, the, you know, the holder crankshaft bearings? And then it's like, oh, I've got this waste heat. And there's still oil cooling. So it's like, I, you know, I can cool this off with oil cooling. I got the piston head, which has its own photovoltaic. And then the rest. Of, and then I've got the, you know, the cylinder. And then I've got, like, I can, you know, cool that off on one side. But it's still going to have a little bit of heat extra. And so I have that side that's also going to be the waste heat generator. And I'm like, I can just put, like, heat sink fins on there, and then I'll be fine. And I've got the fucking, oh, wait, wait, no, we're not done. Free valve with hydraulic rams here, everyone. Because it's like, oh, yeah, no, I can program that with, like, sliding valves. So that way, I don't have to deal with any and all amounts of lift. At, 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 whatever, fuck you. No lift. Fuck you. I got duration now. I have total opening. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, it turns out I can two-stroke this bitch. Yeah, no, I can two-stroke this. If I have a, a forced induction, there's no reason why I can't two-stroke this because it's like, oh, right, because pressurized gas happens to come in at a particular velocity and overall volume over a certain set of time, I can program this to open the exhaust, exhaust most of the exhaust. It's pretty much one PSI or one, you know, basic atmosphere. That's all I want it to be. I have more than one atmosphere. I have double, triple the atmospheres here. And I can force that sucker right in there. Like that. Try at the very bottom dead center. Almost. Almost. I do need a little bit of distance. Just a smidge to do it almost immediately. Because the moment it comes up to open for that intake. I have the ability to leave the exhaust open just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just for a little while. To push out the remainder of that exhaust, close it off, fill it up for the rest of the intake cycle, and now I have completely filled it up with a very specific, because we can calculate it, amount of air and fuel. Because we can calculate what it should be at that RPM in that amount of distance of travel with this amount of forced air induction, meaning PSI, and temperature for it to be ready to go. So I need an air pressure sensor, I need an air flow sensor, which is, you know, CFM, and then I need, oh, right, what was that other one? Cross sectional diameter of the valve. <laughs> PSI is already done. We already got that. We know what the PSI is. Because, wait, I, you know what I figured out? I have the ability to make a step down or step up gear, as in transmission gear, re for a super turbo. A super tur a turbo, by the way, I can make far more efficient with a better design. If I don't use that type of design, I can make a much more efficient design 
that happens to be, what do you know, my heat waste generator and cooling on the outside jacket of the turbo. But wait, 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 I'm not, no, 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 because all this is really is taking a particular diameter and shoving it into a smaller diameter. You know, I only need to do that in any particular cone shape. And if I happen to make it so that way it's more efficient at bifurcating the air, and then with the centrifugal forces, and then the centripetal forces, I can have it stay in a pocketed area that's rotating as a vortex, causing itself to spin faster and faster as the pressure grows and grows and then explodes out. Now, if I design it right, I can be cooling it at the same time. I am also trying to heat it up because, like, I'm concentrating air and air has a certain amount of freaking, you know, heat already. And then I'm adding my heat. Oh, wait, no, I'm not adding as much heat as I used to be because I'm cooling it off. And I'm generating a little bit of energy from making it compress. Not enough to power the damn thing, but, you know, it's more efficient now. Now it's like, all right, all right, I've got that. No, okay, all right, all right, all right. It's, it's not that hard. It's like, okay, I can maintain at the lower RPM a very high, because I have a super turbo, I have a gear attached to my crankshaft that steps up the overall amount of gear that you want so it spins faster and then it goes to the next rpm and it's like oh right yeah i don't know i've stepped it down i'm still at the same rough rpm value then a third one and then now the turbo should be at that point where i really want it to take over for its exhaust gases its exhaust gases by the way that i'm not actually gaining as much as i want from my double fucking turbo that basically looks an awful lot like a fucking hourglass with a counter-rotating middle that is trying to absorb as much of the heat energy through it as I can with my waste heat generator. And then same with the second one, and then catalytic converter, which is also a waste heat generator with just spray-painted fucking materials that need to be a catalytic converter. And then the rest of the tube, waste heat generator. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> So I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, ah, this is good, this is good, this seems cool, seems cool, we're almost there, we're almost there, almost there, radiator, ba bam, <laughs> we have a radiator, why wouldn't I just use that for the radiator too, you know what I mean, I insulate these tubes, I've got all this heat, I might be cooling it off, but it's like, what man, man, it's going off into the air, you know, why not get the last bit of extra electricity from that sucker, with the radiator. Why the hell not? And I've got a crank cover. Or I've got like the headers. I've got the whole, you know, it's like all that. It's like, okay, it's, you know, I've got, that's all waste heat generators. And it's like, wait, 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 but what about that waste heat? And I'm like, no, 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 no. We still want air to air intercooling. That's nice. It's simple. Easy as pie, they say. And it is kind of, honestly speaking, it is. It is. And then that's a waste heat generator. Why wouldn't I do that? Because like, it's still hotter than the air that it's being used to cool it off. So it's like, all right, there we go. And it's like, oh, wait, 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 I'm not done yet. I have a filter that is going to slow down my air anyways. Over there at the intake. And I'm like, all right, so if I'm going to do that, I need this to be a ram air. I like ram air. So I like having a specific volume of air every single time. And it's like, wait, wait, wait we're not done yet. Yo, wait, wait, before everyone goes away, this is too complicated. It's a fluting design. It basically, as the pressure wave comes up, it spreads out with the central, smaller little flute inside of a little tube. It spreads out around that. It's still going to go into that tube, but if I angle the metal, or plastic, or whatever, you know, the way I need to, I can have that spin. I can have that sucker spin in that tube, staying as a vortex of compressed air as it wants to go into the valve for the next time, or really the cylinder, truthfully, but, you know. And then it's like, all right, all right, all right. It's sliding valves, and it's like, how do you get the air fuel mixtures properly ratioed? I'm like, I just need, like, a little nub, and I get a vortex every time. And if I have the same vortex angle, meaning counter-rotating or 
clockwise, you know, then you have them smash up against each other. And then what does that do? Air fuel mix. No difference. You got it done. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, no, 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 no. I have an AC unit. I still have that fucker. There's no reason why I can't suck that stupid little bitch right over there. And then put it right there. And it's like, dunk. This is a game reference. Anyways. Right, because they... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, because it's like a game to me. It's like, boom. I can just put, like, an AC unit in between where the intake manifold is. And it's really just these kind of, like, double flute kind of things. You know? And it's like, all right. So, that's where the AC unit is cooling the air. That's cool. That's making it more dense. That's making it even further denser but it's air restrictive but it's like i've got forced air induction and i have a further upgrade to my overall air density too at the valves now because of my double flute and so it's like all right so i have very consistent and i mean consistent because i can still ramp that sucker up to a higher psi value or try to at a higher RPM because I'm at a higher altitude. I can always program that in. There's no reason why I can't do that. Why not? So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's almost there. Almost. Almost. It's like, so I get the bottom and it's like, yeah, no, I just need an inline four or like, you know, V right distance between each other. I can still do the sliding valve on the side and one side there. And it's like, what, 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 and it's like, behold, the now basically best, as far as I can tell, way to do this, person, personally, for this version of how to do this, for fuel, the type of fuel we're using, the type of air, you know, which is earth atmosphere, and then, like, the design for overall power to weight performance, because, of course, I want that heat, and I'm like, well, well, you know, that's not good. There's knock. And I'm like, right, yeah, yeah, no. No. So, I don't want very high compression. That's going to limit the overall amount of efficiency I'm getting out of this. But you know what I have? I have this extremely highly pressurized air. It's pretty fucking cold. It's opening up, and then, like, I'm pretty much forcing it down in a vertical. It's going to skip off the little surface area of the piston head and then it's going to go back out and most of it goes straight down and it goes back out it does a little u-turn that scoops it out that's what you're looking for it cools off the cylinder you want that you definitely do you want that and it's like all right you know that works well enough for like a double action gas whatever regular 85 pump i don't know you know you just have to seal it the right way which just basically becomes valves you open up the valve when it's into and it's that way it squeezes most of your your uh you know your oil back through anything because you can still lubricate still be able to lubricate this sucker and it can still pass through little tiny tiny little holes you know where you need them because if you open up the intake it's like oh guess what that's also opening up because air is rushing in that's also opening up into the crank but like not not so much because it's like you actually want to do that before you open just before it's like actually just like there's a there's a definite timing to this it's a definite timing because it's like all right so we're putting a little bit of exhaust and like most of the exhaust is gone most just a little bit of exhaust just enough to put it into there because that's what you're looking for. You know, that's what you want. All right, we're not done. The, the rod has to go through. How does the rod go through? It's a hole, man. You can... What, what do you think piston rings are for? They still touch the sides. But, you know, they're not all the time. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, they're still a little there. They're, st they're still going up and down on the piston cylinder walls. You know? So it's like, all right, I can make piston rings for the inside of that and i still got a little hole to and that lubricates the rod I still lubricate the piston walls for the piston sleeve that's just valves boom close it off boom open it squirt it the moment it comes through they're both open squirts through goes through both ways goes back returns as fast as you can really 
But then it's like, well, you know what? It's not perfect. But we're getting there. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, you know, it's every engine eats oil, man. There's no way to not eat oil, as far as I'm aware. Nobody has a perfect sealed system. <laughs> so it's a, you know just a little bit of crease crank. King Crease Vin, you know, Vin for the, you know, whatever, you know, I mean, like, yeah, you, know, so you got it, right? And it's like, okay, wait, wait, we're not done yet. You know, it's not perfect yet. We got to angle this the perfect way for those stupid fucking rods. And that stupid upper part or bottom part, depending on what it is you want to talk about it here, for your piston head or piston bottom face. Now, that means I can flute this, I can channel this, I can make this much stronger because it's just a one directional movement now. There is no side to side, no diagonal, only vertical. There's no twisting, just vertical movement. So it's like, oh yeah, no, I can do that. I can easily make this just fluted. Yeah, no, I can channel the hell out of this. I can put like little dimples around this. You know, you know, like little golf ball that allows for, you know, even less weight on that. And it's like, but also the best part is it increases the speed and rate of burn, which you're going to want. Give me a second. Give me a second. It's like this is a multiple part construction. You got your cylinder walls, which is two sides on the bank. You got your, your heads, you got your bottoms, and then you got your cranks. Your cranks, by the way, is in three stupid little fucking things. Really? Yeah, I have to put one in the middle and two on the sides, which I have to combine that into one. There's parasitic drag loss there, and I hate it. I can technically get away with just two. <laughs> but, like, then we're playing with weird angles of stuff. I think it's doable, but it's like three would probably be easier. <laughs> but, you know... That's testing. I didn't really go too far with that part. Because I ended up doing just a single straight line, V f or uh, inline four. I did an inline four, and then I was like, all right, you know, I can make this up and down. And I was like, all right, but, but, but post piston. And then, like, I'm post piston on the outside, on the inside. I got the heat that I definitely want. I want that heat. You know what I mean? I got the sliding valves. They're hydraulically ram actuated, which means non-compressible fluid, which means I just need pressure for it, which means it can be very controlled, very tightly controlled. I've got very consistent air pressure, temperature, and overall flow. <laughs> so we're not done yet. We're not done. I still have to vacate the oil, get all that other stuff. But it's like, you know, now I got the bifurcated. Looks like a kind of dog wishbone, you know what I mean? You know, dog bone, not wishbone. Like, you know, it's like, it's it's almost there. Almost. And I'm like, all right, 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 right. But I don't want this to lose any energy at all. That shit sucks. So it's like, all right, so so we got all this photovoltaic, we got all this stuff. And it's, it's, it's nice, it's neat, it seems cool. And I'm like, right, right, but we're not there yet. There's way more performance out of this engine that I can make. And especially since I don't need high compression values. But it's like, wait, wait, wait I can make high compression values kind of work. Still 9 to 10, you know, to 1. And I'm like, but it's like, we're going to do something a little weird. We're going to be doing a compression and spark ignition system. We are doing propane that goes in a little bit, just a small amount. And propane is spark ignition. All right. Now, if we use that, just before anyone gets too out of shape, too out of shape, this one's the craziest part. That is a significantly advanced timing for this propane. And we're only going to use a tiny amount. We are the smallest amount that will still create burn for us. That's it. Because we're going to use that heat and pressure that I just created with that combustion to make an increase of heat and pressure at top dead center. Now, there are these things called diesel engines. I'm sure you've heard of them. Everybody's probably heard of them. 
But diesel is a real shitty fucking thing. It likes to gum up anything on the exhaust. It's really annoying. It's really annoying. If you don't get the air fuel ratios, and I found out injectors are really not hyper specifically exact with their fuel amount load. That, and I turned to look online, and it was like, oh, well, there's this ducted airflow diesel injected. It's gone nowhere so far, but apparently it works, and it gets rid of like 50 to 100% of all of the soot and non-burned fuel. I'm like, you know what the problem is with that ducted airflow? It's Ventruli. It's not active Ventruli. It's just pushing it with the air because it has very high PSI. And because it's so high PSI, it doesn't matter that it's like at 1,000 PSI or 900 or 500, whatever PSI we're at. We want to make sure we maintain it, though, at like roughly the 500 to 900 PSI at that top dead or just before top dead center. It's like, all right, all right, so we have hydraulic rants, we have draw, hydraulic pressure. We only need to make sure that air is hydraulically pressed with the other air that's already coming in from our intake and squeezed with this diesel injector and if it truly like system that is above the PSI value of top dead center. And now I've got an active and truly ducted airflow diesel injector that should very, very well air fuel mixture that shit up. I now have increased the top dead center pressure. We don't want much. We do not want much. Everyone, you need small amounts of diesel. Small, itty bitty amounts of diesel to get an incredibly highly efficient, highly controlled burn. But we're not done yet. We are only doing the exact right amount to leave one more burn left on the table. Now, it has traveled exactly one quarter of its rotation. One quarter, everyone, down. That is effectively still prime territory for another accelerational combustion burn. <laughs> Guess what that means? Diesel injection! Boom! <laughs> Go over there! By the way, you're now detonating at that point, which is what you're looking for, turns out, if you didn't know. Because you have electromagnetic resistances throughout this engine design. You want that oomph to make it work. <laughs> you need it. You need the oomph. You need that oomph. You want to know why you need that oomph? The oomph is the only way it turns. <laughs> The electric motors, or the electric generators, because vice versa, really, you know. Those are generators when the engine's running. Those are your starter motors to make this sucker go from the start. Because <laughs> otherwise it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all until you do that. But you have to also time it to be perfectly two-stroke. Using... The rotational inertia energy to make this shit work. Because that's what you're looking for. You have mass that is traveling at a speed and you want to use that to continue compression of the internal and external combustion areas of your single cylinder <sighs> opposed piston design. The only way it seems to keep going is if you can keep that up. Because now you're doing double burns, you need to time it correctly, and then you have to exhaust with your two-stroke, just as that inertia is just starting to get resisted an incredible amount. But it doesn't matter, because it's like right there, that is actually at that point where combustion has already occurred, and then the secondary combustion has already occurred. Most of the air has already left your exhaust areas on the outside. And then intake is currently going on already at that point. <sighs> and then, oh, what do you know? I now have this extra energy to add to my compression on the outside, which gives me a continued performance of the engine, which is what you're looking for. 
Now, and then I was like, oh, this is a nice engine. This is neat. This is cool. And then I got pissed. You want to know why I got pissed? I was like, this is a great amount of electricity, but it's not everything. I pretty much capture most of the uh, the heat energy into electricity, if I'm honest. I'm like at around 90, maybe, percent of the energy is pushed into electricity. But we're not finished because it's like there's those crankshafts need to connect to something. Each one of those can connect to, you know, something. You know, it's like they're still turning. You know, do we want them to? But it's like they're still something. Now, if you don't want it to be super hyper fancy, lots of electric motors and generators in there, I mean, it's just standard pins and you know bearings and stuff like that. You stick this into this, and it becomes a problem because it's like, oh my gosh, this is a very extremely fast, high revving engine that would get there very fast, <laughs> like very fast. We can easily go to the twenty or more RPMs. We're supported by the amount of pressure and the speed at which we can have these, you know, sliding valves work. Which can be pretty fast, actually, turned out. But, we're not done, because it's like, alright, right, 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 right. The crankshaft has this issue. Crankshafts always have these issues. There's these plates and clutches and all this stuff that means I have to deal with something I don't want to deal with which is this very touchy extremely highly oh my god I'm terrified of even putting a little bit of throttle on this engine because that would just not work because <laughs> I'm like oh you know I got both sides I've got all three sides going oh my god <laughs> You know what I mean? I've got... You know what I mean? It's just, just too much. It's too much. Too much engine for pretty much any application except for really, really tiny engines with a lot of power. And you can use that. But you know what I ended up figuring out? There's a way to make a hydraulically fluid, actuated, torque converter style crankshaft to... And we have them. Yeah. We have those. You just gotta stick it on to the fucking crankshaft. And that means I can not have to deal with my tires going rubber to air all day long. No matter how little I press that throttle. Which is one of the reasons why the Arduino everything else that I was programming in my mind was like, yeah, no, this is gonna have a lot of non-wide open throttle. <laughs> it's gonna be very delicate. Extremely, like, you know, you move this amount, it only moved like this amount. <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I can turn off multiple cylinders. I can move them around and base the heat where I want it to. I can, like, you know, put in this only amount of, like, fuel over here. This amount, you know, I can, I can really make this very efficient, very easy, sustain itself off of almost nothing, and then make the, the individual valves not open, which are now air springs. And they're hot. It was so hot. This was such a hot cylinder. Now it's cooling off with an air spring. You know what that air spring's doing? That's adding inertial energy storage to the system. This makes it feel like I get extra torque. Which then makes it way more nice to drive on eco mode. And burn basically a lot less fuel. It's still a lot more weight. Truthfully. <laughs> But it's a lot less fuel once you get up and going, which is what I was planning on making that engine for. I made it specifically because I like thermoelectric, fucking all these things. It's 40 per week and the exhaust alone. <laughs> I was like, I can do it. Ah! And then I eventually was like, oh, the, the realization that's nowhere near that amount. What am I looking at? Fucking 9% at best. Ah! No! Nine percent? That's not enough. And then my turbo design is like turbine is like it's almost redundant as fuck. This is not going well. I really need to figure out this 
this thermo waste heat generator thing, you know, Sterling engine, but it's kind of not because it's like nanometers we're dealing with, but it is definitely, no matter what anyone says, <sighs> you know, yeah, but it's more like a steam engine too, because it's like, it's using pressure and heat, you know, to move something, it's cooling off one side and another, you know, and it's just, so anyways, you know, it's transferring heat as fast and as efficiently as it can through the entire design as much as it can, but, you know, thermodynamic laws, right, you know, those old wonderful fucking pieces of a brilliantly beautiful math. <laughs> Damn bitches. <laughs> Damn motherfuckers. Anyways, uh, I wish I could change you. <laughs> I wish it would make it so much easier. <laughs> But I'm almost there. I'm like, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I should have gotten it. You know what I mean? I'm like, I got the concept. It's something's there. I just need to build this part. The thermal part. I just need to do that. Because it's like, I can get the fucking radiator to be its own design. I can get the thing. You know, I, I can make everything out of that. And I can cool everything off of that. And I can make as much electricity as I want to off of this. And it's only... Fucking shit, if I'm honest. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I, I built it, and I was like, oh my god, this is garbage. <laughs> really? Yeah, because I saw, like, what Toyota did with their, like, 40% fucking engine, and it's just the one single rod that goes through, and it's just got, like, this fucking, you know, like, you know, magnet attached to it on one side, and I was like, oh my god, that's so much simpler and way more brilliant. I remember thinking about that, like, back in, like, 2016... Or some shit. I can't believe they did it. <laughs> That's That was already there. So I was like, okay. Because I was like Googling all these little numbers and factoids for all this shit that I was trying to build. It was like, how much would they be? Roughly it would be about that much. And we just, da, 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 da. Around the 80, maybe 90%. We might get into 70s for sure. You know, 70s. And, and then I look at this and I'm like, I can make that way better. <laughs> Boom! And like, imagine like, doom! Yeah, like I picked up the engine and just flung it over to the side. Look at this one. Now we're working on this one, me. <sighs> this one's the one we got to deal with. And I'm like, this is the same design that's going to turn into my thermoelectric generator that I just talked to you about later. I basically made the same design. Two pistons on either side with my heads and exhaust and all that. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, so I got my two-stroke. Then I've got, like, a, the Sterling engine, and, then, you know, like, the, you know, it's a linear generator or whatever it's called, something like that, and that's Sterling, but then, like, you know, all engines are kind of heat engines, and so I kind of get it to mix up. <laughs> but, um, then it's like, okay, well, you know, that's neat, and then I put this design into it, you know, my thermoelectric generator, design into all of the pieces that I just had, but it's like, uh, 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 I, I'm, uh, this stupid freaking thing <sighs> gets annoyingly, annoyingly, and I mean this, hard to make work at any kind of engine speed. It's fucking annoying. I, I'm not kidding. Like, I have to, like, really delicately balance how much, like, copper coil we got here on one side or the other, you know what I mean? And then it's like, okay, I've got, like, this this turbine, you know, for Pelter or something like that, you know, hydro dam turbine. Because it's, like, it's using, like, a certain pressure. It's very efficient. And I'm like, well, there's got to be oil there. I have to put oil. Like, oil has to go through a freaking engine. Because you, I mean, not always, but, like, you kind of got to, you know what I mean? So it's like, alright, so it's like, okay, I'm going to divert most of it to slow the really fast, high-velocity, high-pressure oil through the system. And I'm like, okay, you know, like, that, that'll that work. And then it's like, oh, i got to return it to the piston rings. And then it's like, I want it to, to go down to the bottom and then get sumped back up, but I need to return a little. i got to get a little bit that gets gone off to this, this other radiator which of course you know that's to cool it so that way you can get that to cool it and it's like then i gotta cool the outside of the cylinder you know with your standard coolant and you gotta have that go into of course your exhaust and your turbo and by turbo i mean 
fans and your your turbo actually too because I'm water jacket cooling it effectively. <laughs> you know, and we got to do all that. I'm saying it should work. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. And I'm like, I can't get the inside to blow up. Is what my problem was like for the longest time. I was like, "Well, what, what the fuck? What, 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 where's my combustion on the inside diameter?" You know, it's still got that puck in the center center, but then there's like on outside of that, there's your combustion, and on the outside of those things, the other combustion. No reason why I can't be able to do that. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah no, I gotta redesign that stupid." And then I've gotta get, and then it's like, how much? And then I gotta cool it, and then it, it still works. Should still work. I, you know, I bounced around for a while. Just dealing with oil return problems <laughs> in my head because I was like, "This what? What is? What is this? What is this? Where does this come from? I need this on the bottom to get freaking pushed back up, and like this oil over here is not gonna. You know what I mean? We're we're, but I've got so much pressure here. I don't need. I mean, I don't need a pump. Look at this thing squirting pressure everywhere. And it's like I got return oil lines that wrap around the cylinder to, you know, squirt back in to, you know, basically do like an infinity symbol or some shit. You know what I mean? So I get like a little bit of energy from the, the turbine and I got a little bit that's diverted off and then it still gets cooled. And then, you know, for the most part, it's pumping itself. So it should work. And then I'm like, I'm, look at this oil that's just sitting there, you bastard. <laughs> doing nothing how am I supposed to seal you how am I supposed to s what is this I mean, you know what I mean it's like the other the other thing it's like the pressures involved and that's a that's a gravity fed system you know what I mean so it's, it's not that big of a deal you know it, it, to, to let it just sink down and there's a little bit of pressure that keeps it running that's all I need a little valve movement and the pressure and it works so I'm like I wonder if I can use that to my advantage here and I still got crankcase, you know, bubbly, you know, I just put like, like a little, you know, area for it to basically vent off any pressure, you know, up above, you know, so it's like, okay, and then it's frothing now, I fucking hate it, because <laughs> pressures and speeds and velocities, eh, <laughs> got frothing, and it's like, basically what I have here is a shock that I stuck fucking combustion pistons on either side and said that's a magnet now iron nitrate magnet in the center and i was like okay there's some there's some fucking like circles in there now and i'm like no i don't want circles i'm losing all my pressure it's just to slow it down i don't want it to, to fucking it, it, stop it to, ah. I don't want this. This is ah, I don't know. Nah, no. Let's say I'm gonna keep racking my brains on this. Cause I'm like, it works. It works perfectly. I don't need any crankshaft anymore. No crankshaft. It's wonderful. It's great. No more crankshafts. And it's still as efficient as it always was. In fact, it's more efficient. I have less moving parts. It's it's less weight. Ah, oh, fuck, less weight. Exactly. Now you know. <laughs> It's like that inertia and weight was really helpful for this engine, which I just threw out, and it's not, you know, we're not thinking about it anymore. <laughs> it was very helpful. It was, it was a great detonation engine. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was. It was a continuous detonation. Every single thing was a detonation because I can get to those very high heats, very high pressures, with the extra f expedient burn, you know, rate increasers, which are just dimply areas and, like, surfaced for it to rush uh, and burn faster. Which it's like, okay, so, and then it's like, yeah, and then you're double burning it. And it's like, yeah, no, that works really well because it increases the acceleration because I'm getting a double detonation. Boom! You know, and it's like, no, 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 I want to slow down. Fuck you, fuck you. And I'm also doing my own compression over here. Don't you know? Boom! No, fuck you. <laughs> I 
And then they basically just fire this puck, this poor puck, this poor fucking soul of like a fucking piston head, just going, I guess I'm just going back and forth now for however long. <laughs> they never want me. I'm always in the middle. Bounce, 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 bounce. Kind of like my life. Anyways. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, so this one, how do we make this do the thing I want it to do? Hydraulic fluid? No, hydraulic fluid will ruin things, unfortunately. <laughs> really, they don't really, they make lubricating hydraulic fluid. It could work. It's just like, eh, you know, it's, you know, it's not as good as you would expect for the design. And then it's like, all right, right, you got double things on both sides. Why doesn't that just work for you? And I'm like, well, you know, see, I would hope so. It's the size of the design. So it only works once I get to this size. Otherwise, it's basically... And you can two-stroke it all you want and all the things. And it still kind of bounces. But it's like a lot less distance. And it eh, doesn't really do a thing. And this thing's basically barely moving. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. So that's what that was. And I was tired after a certain point. I went to go fucking pee. And I was like, hey, there's got to be a way to fucking do this. <laughs> It's gotta be a way. There has to be a way to do that. And then, like, my big my big brain moment was like... So... We're getting rid of the bottoms. Because they're ridiculously stupid at this point in this design. They don't work. They just don't work. They don't. They don't work. The fucking bottom combustion chamber, center combustion chambers don't work. They don't. The pressures involved with the moving mass create this stupid squirting problem through the chamber, and then I have to push it back through everything. And then, oh, by the way, I still have to put air in... No, 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 no. Fuck that noise. So I was just like, both sides. Two stroke. As fast as I can. Talk about an oscillation. Talk about like a vibrator. Because it goes... <laughs> Real fast. That center would tear your clit off like that. You'd never be able to do anything anymore with that poor fucking useless flesh mound that's probably somewhere over in China. It's like, over there somewhere. Whatever. <laughs> because it's like, I can detonate on both sides. I can get a lot more pressure. I can get a lot more uh, speed of piston velocities. That's what I want. You know, this thing just needs to slow it down, which means I can add in an electric motor to your little turbine. And then it's like, oh, that slows down just enough of the, of the things. to And along with the electricity generation... To make this thing not die. That's all I gotta do is just don't die, bitch. That should be the material strength calculations here. This is basically what that turns into. Piston speed velocity. Energy transfer of kinetic energy from pressure to, you know, this is blah, blah, blah stuff. Basically to you layman people. But to me, it means a shit ton because it's just like, this is how far we could push this. Literally, that's it. And you really are going to run between like about 40% to about 60% for maximum engine life. <laughs> Which is, you know, we're all good. You know, that's like, yay, yay, we did it. Literally the cheapest, easiest, most fucking functional, fastest engine to produce ever with the most amount of power, bar none. Literally, bar none, there is no way to make more fucking energy recovery from an engine than this. <laughs> I mean that because I have my thermoelectric generator everywhere on this whole design, practically. <laughs> And it's like insulated intake area, so that way I don't have to fucking have heat, you know, sink into it. I don't have like any of this. You know, I've got all this stuff that basically means like, woo, super high efficiencies. Wee. <laughs> yeah. 
I like the sound of that. It's like engine cooling with the oil. The oil is heat. Yes, that heat is now cooled with radiator that makes electricity, with lines that make electricity because they have heat sinks. Fins on the outside, you know, so that, that way I can make electricity all the way, all the way, all the places. I want electricity. I want so much electricity. I want all the electricity. How much electricity do you want? I want hundred percent. If I could get the hundred percent, the thermodynamic law of conservation means I should get hundred. Can I do that? Not really. You know, if you design the best perfect system, sure. I mean, you can't. But like, you know, quantum variance bullshit means no. Is what they say because things aren't real. I have a caveat with that. This is going to be a mind bender. Get ready. Later. <sighs> That's later. That's literally later. You're going to want that later. Now we're going to go back to my fusion rocket engine. Shit. <sighs> When I started this whole thing out, because I'm building this engine, I'm doing that, 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 this is all for this bitch. This is all for this motherfucker. This is what this was. I started with an engine, then I turned the exhaust into plasma because it was already quite hot. And there should still be oxygen in there, and there should be some hydrogen, there should be carbon, you know, stuff that could maybe be, you know, used with the right, you know, rocket fuel. To mean I have now f really fast moving plasma that's high heat and then I add in air with the fuel and go bang bang detonation style out the bell end. <laughs> and I was like, that's really efficient. That's like 30% more efficient probably. I mean it. It was like, honestly, that was like not bad, you know. I've got this like, you know, basic thermoelectric generator stuff. It, would, it wasn't 40%. I mean, I was only getting a little... But it's like I can carry like enough electricity from this engine making electricity and the thermal, you know, to, to blast that motherfucker into becoming plasma and then making like the right fuel call and go whoosh up to the stars. Well, you know, like kind of hybrid scram ramjet because this thing's firing so fast and it's compressed with this once it goes fast enough. You know, and then it's like, oh, wait, I don't actually need necessarily, I can use a larger and then to a smaller, like a ram air. The faster you go, the more that compression goes. And I only need like a slight thing to enter into the arena. <laughs> You've activated my trap card kind of style of something, which means it increases compression. You know what I mean? That's what you're looking for. And then it's like, oh, right, but this thing still has exhaust. Sure, yeah, no, plasma, okay, so, but, you know, this is, this, this supercharger, you know, basic supercharger, I can put a supercharger on that sucker, there's no reason why, I mean, I don't need the air, I'm combusting this, I don't need that, I need that supercharger to make that air more compressed, like lickety split, baby, I want that to go boom, boom, fast, <laughs> real well, real fast, I want fucking space, Coming at me like it was never there. Get it? But I'm... Yeah, no, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, it's a bad joke. It's terrible. It's layered. It's like, oh, you know, space isn't real. It's never there. But then, like, it is. But whatever. I'm going to get into that later. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. You might see why it is. I might think this later. We'll get there. <laughs> Now it's like, oh, that's cool. We got like maybe 30%, you know, maybe. Should, it should work out roughly, you know, eh. You know, it's a little bit more efficient, maybe, eh, you know, eh. Still, it's really cool, you know. Yeah, I know, because I built it for like a fucking goddamn speed run with an engine. It was like, oh, what, 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 what? The world's fastest piston engine land speed record. Whee! Go for it, baby! Woo! That's what I built it for. I was like, I'm gonna go for it! I'm gonna do this! I am the man! And I'm like, yeah, no, I gotta do all that. Like, yeah, no, Jesus fucking shit, this is crazy. You know, there's actually a lot of pressure there. Like, almost enough to start creating some fusion if I were to do it right. What if I just made an extra longer tube? And then added some, like, electromagnets that were also helped with some particle accelerators and then some plasma jet accelerators and then like lasers 
And this, I should still have a decent amount here. It's not like the easiest thing to fuse. But there's some... I mean, I can still use that extra density, pressure, and heat, and velocity to slam it into a little area that gets me the heat and pressure to make easier stuff to fuse work. And so began the long, arduous path to this engine. Because I'm like, all right, you know what? That should work, actually. That should work. That should actually, you know what? Nothing there says if we didn't do it right, it wouldn't work. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we didn't do it right, it, you know you know what I'm trying to say. But, like, it should work if you do it right. You know, if you do it right, it sh something should happen. And it's like playing around with it. You get, like, another third stage. I've got enough heat now. For sure, and if I can contain it just enough, I've got a constant pressure because I can fire that stuff like a stream with the particle accelerators and all this other stuff, which then allows for me to basically direct and really channel the flow of plasma the right way. If I can have it sustain itself just long enough and cool it off with my now liquid hydrogen, and because why wouldn't I use that? Because that's my fuel, <laughs> and then like force it as close as I can with that little nice hourglass design. It's like over here, but it's actually a teardrop in there, which is a ram scramjet style design, and it's already compressing it, and then it's already heating it up on the way up to that compression, and then it's getting it to like go that way with particle accelerators and everything else, which creates a pressure, and then you got your electromagnetics, electromagnetics, and it's like, oh, right, 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 but what happened to that like piston engine? They're still doing the plasma, initial plasma creation and electricity that I want. But it's like, I actually need now electricity that's much more than that. <laughs> so it's like, all right, so where am I getting that? And I'm like, all right, and, and, and so uh, it's, this, this one's going to suck for everybody here, thermo generators. Unfortunately, I, I was like, you know what? This one is going to end up becoming a massive bullshit charade for a while. <laughs> so I kind of let it go. I was like, nah, we'll deal with that in a second. I was like, this part, I'm interested in. I know I can make this turn into something. Give me a second. <laughs> Before we get to that, this. That I can work on later. Figure out the real shit first. So it's like, real shit is, how much do I really need for velocity? How much do I really need for compression? How much can I really put into this? How the fuck do I get it to not break? Which then turned into, oh my god, hydrogen is a bit of an annoying bitch. I'm not kidding. I'm like, this stupid bastard does not want to fuse the way I want it to because of all this dirty ass shit that's there. So I'm like, but this is so freaking stupidly hot and dense and it's like, why won't you do it? Why won't you fucking do it, you bastard? <laughs> So I was like, I need to cool this off. So I, hydrogen jets of the things there. It cools it off slightly on the outside. That warms it up, creates an extra pressure towards the back end, towards that small little diameter hole that's getting fired full of lasers just before it gets to the hole. And particle accelerators and all this other stuff. Just so that way it's like a pre-ignition that's then getting forced into a little tiny hole, which then, of course, causes a further ignition. But it's not ignition. We don't know. You have to do it. And it's like, all right, so then it ignites. Ignites, quotation marks. It's fusing, for sure, at least a little. You know. And then, like, that fusion's going into creating more fusion to these other things. And then more fusion. And then it's like, boom. I now need neutron deflector material. Lots, lots of neutron. I need this shit. I'm like, fucking, what's that nickel? How much does that cost? Where is that? Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. I almost dropped my phone. Oh, oh shit. Did I drop my phone? I did drop my phone. But I didn't pause the recording. That's good. <laughs> Anyways, where's that nickel? I need that. I need a donut of nickel about this fucking ginormously thick. <laughs> where's it? Where, where do you got all this shit? <laughs> like, that's expensive. We don't have that. I'm like, I don't care. You need it for this. Otherwise, this thing will break. <laughs> This will be immediately like, neutrons everywhere. 
And I'm like, I need electromagnets. Stat. Where's my superconducting material? How much do you? Oh my God, please, jeez. I was able to get away with not even superconduct, just cooling the damn things. This was working before the. This is fine. Ah! <laughs> so I'm like, all right, all right, all right, we're, we're in there. We gotta get all this stuff put together, you know, hey, no, 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 don't go near to that, no, 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 and I'm like, you know, I actually have a large amount of ability to force this into a much tighter, much more contained, higher pressure, heat, velocity, everything chamber. All I have to do is put one single tiny little stupid teardrop. This has got to be able to handle a little bit of stuff for a little bit. Is it a teardrop? It kind of looks like a teardrop with like four little things sticking out of it, so that way it stays there, but you know, that's what that is. I can cool that. That's not hard. I just need a freaking, you know, I mean, we can send something that close to the sun. I can cool this bitch. <laughs> I can cool this motherfucker. <laughs> That's not that bad. Those things allow for me to put in cooling. And, and you know, with my liquid hydrogen. I just got to pump it around. And, all right, all right, all right. and, you know, that's only a small amount of fusion. I, it's not enough fusion. It's not enough fusion yet. I'm not there yet. It's a small, it's for sure, it's fusing, whatever. Maybe we have ignition, maybe we don't. I don't know. I don't care anymore. It's beneath me to th assume that that's where we'll stop. Because I am crazy, you know, to assume that I can make something even better with simply utilizing the exhaust. So I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So we kind of try and force this, and it's like, kind of have like a blade of, but it's now, no, no, I need like ceramic, and okay, I'll just, I got the, the, the neutron deflect, and then it's like, yeah, no, because they're going to blast off in a very particular cone pattern, so I really just need it right about here. This is the majority, about 99% of the neutrons are going to land right here, and I can bounce that sucker right back to the next little tiny donut hole to force that sucker to make me more fusion. <sighs> just go there. Suck it up, bitch. <sighs> And I'm like, I can still horn this in. Where's that shoe? Boom, 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 boom. Because we're talking like extremely fast, extremely fast fucking speeds of atoms now, you know, that are plasma. So fast. But not super fast. It's like you just have to calculate how much distance you need to be able to acquire for the actual electromagnetic fields that you can produce to create the necessary deflection. And it's like, okay, so this works. I can do that. That's simple. That's some calculations at some other point. <laughs> and it's like, all right, all right, all right. Mm, 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 mm. I need this hotter. I need it to pulse. I need a pulse, a regular scheduled pulse. And I need it big. And so it's like, all right, so I got these little four things. I can fire plasma. No, 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 no plasma. No, no, no. We're doing particle acceleration. I need particle acceleration, unfortunately. Unfortunately. And I need really powerful lasers. And it's like, no, no, you can't put them in that small. It's like, actually, we can get pretty close to that. Especially when we have that amount of heat. We just need to confine it right in the right areas. Because this just creates just a bit of a pulse. I just need a pulse. And if I do it the right way, dun, 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 dun. I create a spike wave, which then sends one off and another and another and another, and it's like, okay, so then it all comes together at the same time, if you can do it right, because it's like, wait, 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 wait is this all being fired at the same spot? No, 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 different spots. That's how you create a spike wave. And so it's like, this spike wave then collapses hard onto that little tiny itty bitty now very highly compressed very highly 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 just increased speed a lot much hotter as well i got particle accelerators i can still fire at that spot i still got lasers i can still fire at that spot i now have fusion for sure and it's just before the hole the hole is like 
definitely gonna squeeze that some more really hard to squeeze the shit out of you. You know, just no, yeah, fucking throttle that bitch. I'm like, okay, we're we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Ah, yeah, da 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 da. Uh oh. Boom. I may have created an inadvertent bomb. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. But it's like, oh, you know what? I oh, I know what I can do right there. Because it's like there's this thing on the outside. It's like it's pushing against nothing. It's Nothing's cooling it off. It's not doing anything to make less heat by adding something into it. And it's still got to be like, I'm not going anywhere but into you. That's right, I'm getting faster into you. <laughs> To the other tube. You see that see the tube. It's like initial, you know, fusion area. It's, like, it's not that fast, and then it goes faster. And it goes faster. And it goes faster. And it goes. <laughs> big problem. Big big problem. Big fusional problem. And I'm like, all right, you know what? The best part about this is we're traveling at speed here, and we have air. Yeah, you know, regular fucking air, man. You know, if you don't know what that shit is, breathe. You should breathe a little. <sighs> oh, yeah, that makes me oxidize. Hell, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, we're not done yet. Because it's like, that's still... That's cooling it. It's, it's slowing it down. For sure, it gets faster, but it should still maintain a relative constant velocity. You know, that regular shit. Right? But it's like, it's not, though. <laughs> this is the problem. I'm like, I need to add fuel. Turns out that shit makes it so much more willing to play ball <laughs> that it's worth it. It is. It's actually worth it. Like, it's like, this thing needs fuel to go, like, no, I'm not gonna bomb everyone. It's like, just fire in some anything, you know, I, hydrogen, I don't give a fuck, any fuel, any fuel does it, any fuel, it's still cold enough, it's still so much colder than the plasma that we're talking about here, so much, it's so much slower, it's very dense, still, in comparison to like, you know, the plasma is still going to be quite dense, it's still going to be very, very dense, you know what I mean, but it's like, not as dense as like, a bunch of air getting rammed in at like whatever velocity you're traveling at in an incredibly increased way with this massive heat massive amounts of pressure that's adding itself into this little chamber and it's like oh cool off bitch you know what i mean and it's like just fire it and then fire the jets fire the jets fire the jets <laughs> Do the thing, hey, okay, it's working, it's working, it's working, it's, it's, it's working, the computer models are working in my head, the computer models are working. That's a thing, it's doing that. It didn't blow up this time. Cool, 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 cool. I have like extremely hot, superheated, very extremely high velocity gas that is heading out the fucking nowhere, I guess. <laughs> Where is this going to go? Where's my bell? I need a bell. I need a fucking bell. <laughs> I need to cool this off. You know, and yeah. <laughs> this is so much pressure still. It's so much pressure. It's like, it's good. It's no longer plasma. We fired in electrodes. We added that because it's like, well, you know, I got it to work without that. But it's like, hey, hey, why? why? So, so, stay, stay, stay still. Electrode. You know, just like get that done. Because it's like, oh, that's that's easy enough. I can just fire fucking, you know, there's a, if we have particle accelerators, I can fire electrons as a particle into this shit. That's easy. You know, fuck you. No more plasma for you. Go, go be hot gas. Stop trying to ruin things with doing that. And it's like, there's neutrons just getting fired off still towards that middle. And it's like, I don't want to deal with that, so I didn't. No one's going to be near it, really. For long enough. It should be fine. <laughs> 
I literally was like, nah, fuck that. I suppose I could encase it in another donut, but it's like, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> You know, I'm just like, ah, well, whatever. If someone else that's smarter than me will probably just put, like, hydrogen around it and try and make heavy hydrogen, or extra heavy hydrogen, you know, on the way over into becoming fuel or some shit, you know, something like that. You know, some smart person that isn't me, probably. Certainly isn't me that would have thought about that. No, they're not. I'm not smart. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to get there. Because it's like, right, right, right. We now have a bell-in that we have to literally create that makes no sense right now at all. With, with the pressures and heats and everything. And it's like, right, right, right. This is going to be a rough one for ya. This one's going to be a real rough one. Yeah? Yeah. You ever heard of a dog cone? <laughs> this one's going to be roughly... A very rough, kind of roughy type of thing. Should be traveling now at the speed that you need. If you've got there, <laughs> that exploding. But you won't. You can, it, all, the, all the things seem nominal so far. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. All right. Throw in some part-injected dog cone. I call it bomb bomb juice. This is wonderful stuff. You should totally make this. It is a liquid explosive that is highly stable. Well, fairly, anyways. So what it is, is you take your standard hydrocarbon, any hydrocarbon, I tend to use octane. Octane's the best. Octane's the best one to do this with. Regular old octane. It's really nice hydrocarbon. Now, what you end up doing is you add fuel and oxidizer. And the way that uh, anyone would think, it's a basic caterpillar style design. <laughs> It's like, all right, I'm going to stick a nitrogen on one of the hydrogen or some shit, or what am I doing here? And it's like, ah, well, no, 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 see, I would love that. But we were thinking potassium, maybe sulfur, something like that, I don't know. You know, personally, I wasn't too able to, I'm not a big chemist here, unfortunately. I just know it's like, if I can stick the right one there, one of these should work. I can stick it on each one of the the hydrogens, you know, and like the carbons on the outside. It's like that one. I just need a different one. I can put oxygens and O threes are easy enough. But I don't need necessarily to put it right onto that because then I can just put like a little nitrogen there instead of like the, the 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 potassium, and then that can be a really weird little like you know connection that's gonna want to boom up. And it's like, all right, so I can put in, like, more of these hydro uh, oxygens. And so I'm like, you know, that would work. That would work. And it's, you know, it should be fairly stable from my estimations. <laughs> you know, for the most part, it's like, don't, don't overheat it. And certainly don't put it under a lot of pressure. And don't put it really around a shit ton of UV because then it'll just decide to disintegrate and be like, I'm just hydrocarbon. Uh, you know what I am now? I'm just oxygen and octane and some other shit. That, that, that means nothing. <laughs> it's like, don't put it near UV. Like, just don't. <laughs> and it should work. Hopefully. You know what I mean? It's bomb bomb juice. There's an easier way to make it. I make bomb juice. That one, that one's easy enough. That one, you just stick some stuff on the outside, you know, carbons and the hydrogens, you know, just a little bit. And then you have your fuel and oxygen. You don't need much. You just need a little. And then, like, you have a very relatively stable. And by relatively, I mean it's the same as any hydrocarbon, roughly, you know. So, and by roughly, I mean it, ethanol destabilizes faster than this. Like, there are other gases, I mean fuels, that, that don't last as long as this bomb juice i colloquially f refer to because it's like it doesn't technically you only need the smallest amount of air to make this work <laughs> and i mean this because it's like oh i can put this in a, a closed engine and direct inject it and ignite it and it'll still produce just enough to keep the the engine running 
and a little bit of extra horsepower, just a smidge, just like one to three horsepower, depending on how much you know you're willing to use and how efficient your engine is. And I was like, okay, 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 okay. That's neat, but that's not much, really. If you really think about it, I'm like, more air will work for you a lot better here. You need more air for that. This is where bomb bomb juice came in, because it's like, oh, I put this in there, it's a fucking beast, it's a monster, like a standard, like, oh, if I use regular air and fuel, I'm getting 250, 300 horsepower, you know, something like that, and it's like, this is getting you around the four to 500 mark, no air, <laughs> so it's an explosive, is what we're talking about, but it's a liquid explosive, if done correctly, and it's not caustic, to, to anyone, not really, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you don't fuck with something so much that it becomes caustic, that's basically what I say, when I say it's not really, you know, don't fucking, you know, <laughs> it's the equivalent to me of like a liquid style of C4, you know what I mean, that's what that is, which is like, wonderful, what's the problem with it, it's kind of difficult to, you know, manufacture just a little, the, the bomb juice, much easier. Fucking simple as fuck. That one's, like, fast. Making the bomb bomb juice, that one's a little more involved. You know, and it's the rocket fuel, so, you know, rocket rocket fuel, a little more involved. Should be easy enough. So, it's like, whatever. Uh, the only issue is that this, as it goes to its compression area, higher heat, very high velocity, Ventruli style effect until we get enough speed, ram air style effect cone around this bell end, it is extremely, extremely less heat. But it fires itself into these little areas of this, of this very laminaristic flow tube. That means I can now have this combustion basically create a dense, or less dense, sorry, less dense, uh, much less heat, a lot less hot, that's way less. Still a lot of thrust going on here <laughs> that is now pushing and compressing this gas onto the bell end, creating your thrust that you're looking for without burning the bell end <laughs> which is still made out of freaking you know ceramic and graphite you know that you have to have because otherwise it doesn't work and then I was like how do I cool this sucker well you know bomb bomb juice can cool off <laughs> I was like oh that's explosive let's not do that So let's not let's not use the, the explosive to cool off the the very hot gases. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so I mean it should work for the most part, but like then once you get into certain territories, it's it's not gonna work anymore. It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore at all. It turned out. It like to rip the cone off and then subsequently the rest of the back end. And then we had a laser death pointer plasma. <laughs> that, that was like, anything over there? No. Explosive? Yeah. I'm now a literal fusion bomb fucking... Just flying. <laughs> Just. <laughs> it it's like wonderful for tactical warfare. You know, it's like you can cover the entirety of one city in a fusion bomb amount without any of the deadly, deadly radioactive material. Not as much, anyways. It's still somewhat. You know. <laughs> But it should kill an entire city like that, and no problems. 
As it flies faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And it's like, what's over there? I don't know. Here's some, like, really, really dense radioactive material. <laughs> it's like, there's some, like, easily fused hydrogen some way, reason in this front of this. Then there's, like, this other more dense, you know, fissileable is what they, I think, call it or something. <laughs> Material, you know, around that. And then, like, the final, like, thing of, you know, with correctly placed, you know, area, because it's going to smash in the front, and then, like, a boom, and then boom, and then boom, and then another boom, with this other boom over here. We should reflect the boom back into the boom, creating a bigger boom. And it's like, guess what I created, everyone? Good news! It's a doomsday device. It is! How did you know? <laughs> How did you know? How'd you get that? Yeah, no, I created a Nova. That creates a massive amount of gamma ray. It should create a fuck ton of gamma ray. Because it basically creates a core. Just long enough. Just small enough of a core. That's there. That lasts just long enough. That fuses stuff. For you. That then rapidly expands like a Nova. And then it goes boom. And then lots of gamma rays come out. And neutrons. We should kill, like, everyone on the planet, theoretically, if you make it, like, something a little bit the size of a kitchen table. And it's like, my work here is not complete yet. I wanted to go interstellar. I have not gone interstellar. I have made it so the world may fear me in my ginormous nuclear wing cock. <laughs> And it shall be easy enough to make, roughly speaking. <laughs> you know, because I haven't really dealt with the electricity problem. So it's like, all right, I know. And it's like, um... What's this? What's this called? Nuclear fissile material, sir? Yeah, no, I mean, you. we can use that. Yeah, I'm a, you know, it don't work that well. Yeah, you know, see, this is the problem I've got going on here, man. I, like, I want to make more electricity. I don't have the electricity. I want to get, like, batteries. I don't got the right batteries. <laughs> I'm like, I'm yum, 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 yum. There's, like, a lot of heat here. Heat's great, but I want to keep that heat where it's at. You know what I mean? That heat helps me do this. This is easy. This is easy. You got this, man. I'm like, yeah, thank you for the support. Bash Brothers, baby. Yeah! <laughs> and so it's like, alright, alright, alright. More engines! Yeah, it turns out, that was kind of my play. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it's so easy to just do, like... I could put, like, a two, maybe four engines, and it should cover the electricity costs. Especially if we're talking about these engines right here. Of my, like, 90% variety that have, like, you know, just the two things on either side, and the fucking thing making electricity in the middle, and the whole thing is basically making electricity. And it's like, ah, oh, that should work out. It's cooling itself with air movement. It should be enough. <laughs> and it's like, that's a cheap-ass way to do it. I was hoping to, like, do, like, super cool stuff, but... Yeah, you know, <laughs> honestly. Right, yeah, it's like, and I put the exhaust into there, and it's like, what do you know? What do you know? You know, it's just bigger, more engines. But it's like, that. Nah, that's that's neat. It's not cool. No, it's not, unfortunately. It's not. <laughs> it's not. I was like, this is kind of lame. This was the easiest, cheapest solution, though. You know? <laughs> so. It was like, the easiest, cheapest way to do it. It's, it's literally what it was. It's like, I can just add more engines. Whoop de doo. I have bomb bomb juice now. I don't even need to give it air. You know? <laughs> so it's like I'm already starting as a plus on everything, you know? But it's like I want to do cooler stuff for this. So I'm like, yeah, no. So it's like, alright, alright, alright. 
well, you know, we need to cool that off a little bit more. We do. Yeah, we need to cool that off a little bit. In fact, if we're being honest, this is going to melt. <laughs> this is going to melt before it gets too close to too many things. It should melt. Which meant cooling is cool to do. But you know, I have engines here that need to be cooled too. And a little extra hydrogen added into the mix will definitely increase the overall bang bang, motherfucker. <laughs> Since I don't want to be too cute with it. That's all I gotta do. And it's like thermoelectric generation throughout most of this shit with my thermo generation material. And what do you know? It produces so much electricity, I actually have a problem. <laughs> Because, like, technically what I'm doing here is making this feasible to run as an actual jet engine, rocket engine hybrid that should work all the way up to in space because bomb bomb juice, rocket fuel, I don't need air. I just need fuel. And I'm nowhere near anyone that's going to be like, well, you're fucking irradiating us. I'm like, well, I'm not. You're all the way over there. And this is like just helium, move off, you know, besides like maybe some oxygen or 12 or, you know, various stuff. There's going to be a lot of stuff in this. Yeah. <laughs> various stuff here. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's going to cool off. No EMPs should be created. <laughs> so it should be fine once you're in, but in the upper atmosphere, if not further along and you know you're in the the real space area and now you have your your fusion rocket engine you just need a plane that that's going to seal itself and also you're going to have to hang on for a 1g acceleration continuous burn that you should be able to sustain for a long time actually <laughs> i mean that this thing can sustain 1g for a while <laughs> Like, actually, for a while. And I'm like, you know, all I need to do is add in scoops. Like, if I can get over to that motherfucker, what's that? Is that, like, the big gas giant Jupiter or something? It's got hydrogen. It's got hydrogen there. It's on the outside. It's, that's where hydrogen likes to live. It's the lightest material. I want that hydrogen. Why, why would I want that hydrogen? That's, a, that's my hydrogen now, Jupiter. Fuck you. That's my hydrogen. <laughs> What are you going to do, big old gas giant bully? Fuck you, and I'm going to steal your hydrogen. But you know what that one only means? I just have to go skirt through the atmosphere, just a little bit of the atmosphere. I got scoops. Scoops will work. <laughs> I suck that in, compress it, cool it. I got radiative cooling. I've got now a gas tank in my solar system. Woo! And finally back to, oh my god, yeah, but like I don't have any bomb, you know, and then this, and then like that's not really real fusion. I'm doing, like, I, it is fusion, but it's like, you know, and it's like, oh, what do you know? What is this? Well, dunk, 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 dunk. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, no, this, this one, particle acceleration, multiple spike wave pressure waves. It's like a multiple donut tokamak design that goes into the center like a beehive and then like you know it goes off towards further and further chambers of tokamak and blah 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 until you get to the final little tiny very fast moving relativistic speeds at this point that has fused quite substantially more because i just push all that heat into it because it's like oh, i can make metamaterials that work with this way perfectly if i can make a fucking Basic bitch ass, you know, waste heat thermo generator. This shouldn't be that hard to do with metamaterials, to make like a version that's this and like electromagnets with super conducting materials and and like particle accelerator areas and all the rest of it. Like it's just a multiple layer of this. So why the fuck would I do that? And it's like this continuously fusing makes me electricity, lots. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's like, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. It's fucking heavy. But we're getting there, you know? I mean, that should be calculated. 
You know, put it in stages or something. I don't know. It's it's fine. We're there. We got it. Do we? No. Unfortunately, it was like, oh, I can't get interstellar with this. This is stupid. I want to get there actually within my lifetime. This is fucking... Ugh. It's like jerking myself off with nothing to fucking like unload onto, you know? It's just like, ah, fucking whatever. <laughs> Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because, like, oh, yeah, no, great, I have gas up to that point. What after? And I'm like, yeah, no, I, I was thinking, like, electromagnetic field capture for scoops into, like, little areas that I can then, like, try and gather a little particle. But it's like, me cosmic ray bullshit. And it's like, yeah, there should be still some, and the faster you're traveling, there's still some hydrogen. And I, uh, I got annoyed. And I was like, I need to go back to the drawing board. What's that? A heat pump? What's this? What is a heat pump? Why is it 500% efficient? Let me look more into that. it all come together, I swear. I mean it. Sweet. Alright. I know this has been abnormally long, but just wait. So a heat pump takes... Energy, heat, 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 a radiation of uh, IR, IIT, whatever. I don't care. And it shifts it from one area to another, concentrating it in the middle. And then it's like, go over there more. <laughs> By the way, the concentration adds its own energy, its own heat. Go over there as well more. <laughs> Which makes it the more efficient design of some varieties for heat pumps, you know, depending on what we're talking about for pressures, heats, blah, blah, blah. You know, everybody knows what a heat pump is. I didn't, so I had to look into it. You know, and then I was like, you know, why is it that I can't make that sucker make more energy? Since I'm gathering more energy, is it just a bigger radiator? And I fucking kept thinking about it and kept thinking about it. And eventually, like this guy is on YouTube, we did Robert... Murray or rubber or something like this. I don't remember. Anyways, he's like, there's these low-pressure ammonia gas engines that produce like 75 watts or some shit. And that was kind of something I was thinking about. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, yeah, no, that, I could maybe do something out of that. And then I was like, oh, yeah. Before I'd ever thought about this thermoelectric generator, before any of this stuff ever happened, I was thinking about this to try and turn into a regular style of a piston engine i've tweeted at two bit da vinci at some point i was like he was like yeah i don't know why it's probably cost or actual amount of energy and i was like okay 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 that's probably right i was a little paranoid i was at a you know homeless shelter at the time you know the mission homeless shelter i was thinking about this because i had been thinking about it in my time at the mental health hospital and so I was like, yeah, there should be a way to continuously make this energy go into this. If I concentrate it, then it's going to expand producing work. And because it's air-cooled, it should work. And it's not nearly as hot as a gasoline, but it's not going to be that much energy is what I found out later. At first, I was, huzzah, it should work. This should do a thing. Maybe it extends the energy of the battery I'm using and maybe some solar panels to make it run for longer. And that didn't turn out to be true. <laughs> I was sad about it. I was honestly sad. I was like, there's energy here. Why? I can't use it? This is stupid. <laughs> I want this energy to be used. I'm getting, like, all this extra energy. I thought. Why can't I turn you into useful work, you bitch? <laughs> Thermodynamics, you lovely looking bastards, I swear. <laughs> amount of work put into making the energy more concentrated means you lose efficiencies if you have that design. And effectively, you're losing most of your, your energy in the piston design from the get-go. It just doesn't make much sense feasibly and i was basically trying to make a sterling engine style that runs off of the air around us by concentrating it and utilizing the energy of a battery to do it after a certain point you know i started using gas and turning a turbine and trying to make electricity off of that then i was like nope that's not gonna work <laughs> 
Because no, no, it will work. It's just like it's not actually getting more energy. You're actually losing a lot of energy the entire way through. Some helpful but very fuck you redditors help me on that one. <laughs> this would never work. No, no, no. Everything you said is wrong. I think it's almost verbatim. Like legitimately, actually shit wads. Don't go on science and shit on Reddit. They're garbage. I had one person actually tell me why my, my things were not correctly thought for like black holes, maybe having another universe or novel designs or particles that we don't understand yet being there. And uh, I'll get into further stuff that that's changed for my design. You know, I've, I've changed it a little bit. Quite a bit, actually. But we're going to move on. It's not a thing. It might be a thing, but it's we don't see it. Then I got into gravitational lensing. And I'm like, well, you know, gravity should be able to create like a, a gravitational lensing for the, the LIGO detector to be able to better map gravitational effects at a further distance. No, you're wrong! <laughs> Everything you said is wrong! <laughs> Comes out later, that's exactly what they're doing. Thanks. <laughs> but I didn't phrase it quite so well. It's like, you make a map out of that. If you manage to keep the sensitivity at a high enough rate, you should be able to make a map at a constantly moving thing, you know, out of gravity. And be able to use lensing to be able to help that out. And then be able to, like, you know, be able to get more accurate results. And you can create an algorithm and all this stuff and denoise it. Should be able to do it. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, there might be something that do. I don't know. Another Redditor that actually seemed nice. <laughs> but not as nice as you would think. And then my other design, go back to that heat pump. And I was like, yeah, so that's not working. But, I, you know, my idea was to utilize photovoltaics, this heat pump design, and then uh, geothermal to be able to create an ultra-dense heat or energy production facility for its, you know, relative size is what I was thinking going with. He's like, no, 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 all of that's wrong. You you know, the more you put into it, the less you're going to get out of it. <sighs> and it's like, you know, truthfully, that's apparently true. Except it's like the way I designed it then wasn't the way I design it now. I'll get into that later. It all coincides to this stupid engine. I swear to work with me.